go high level, an incredible all-in-one CRM, perfect for agency owners, consultants, and coaches just like you. High level has completely changed my life and my business. This is absolutely insane. It's like they took out of my head what I wanted as the dream product for my agency. I could not be happier. Uh, with this platform for so many reasons. I'm not even sure I'll remember them all. This was the platform. Once I reviewed it, once I seen the in action, something that all my clients really needed to, to have. They've been able to put together things I didn't even know I wanted and needed. I've had to spend so much money on clunky software solutions that, yeah, they did what they said they were going to do, but the integration didn't work and it made my life a nightmare. Infusionsoft, Entreport, Active Campaign, on and on. I had CallRail, I had ClickSend, I had Acuity, I had ClickFunnels. Zaps in the background to be able to tie them together, it's just got insane. The functionality and everything you can do with High Level is so much more. High Level is beyond the normal register of capabilities for all of the things that we need to do. The degree of service and value that you get from this is phenomenal. So we've been able to automate everything just through high level, So, and that's made a huge difference. Then the name is so appropriate. It takes it to a high level. It takes it to the next level. If you haven't signed up yet, what are you waiting for? Use it. It's going to help your business scale. Absolutely do so. It's priceless. Wow, it has been a long time coming. Welcome to the High Level Masterclass. Let's jump right in. Now, I don't know who you are. I don't know where you are. I don't know when you are. I don't know what you do. And I don't know exactly what brought you here. But you are here for a reason. One thing I do know for sure is that this course will change your life. Now, this course is for you if you are a small to medium sized business owner or if you want to start a software company. This course is for you if you want to start an agency or if you want to start a future proof business or if you want to start an AI business or you have or want to start your personal brand. If you want to start and build a community or if you're like me and you are looking for that one thing that will set you free because this is more than just a course. This is a system that will set you up for the future in more than just one way. Now, before we get started, you must know that the world is changing in real time. Now there are three key factors as to why the world is changing forever. The first one is artificial intelligence. This is a given. The second is automation. Automation has been here for a while, but when you pair artificial intelligence with automation, it creates a whole new animal, a whole new beast entirely. And lastly, the creator economy. This is important. Now these three factors are allowing people to create million dollar businesses in record time. Not only are they doing it quickly, but they're able to do it without needing a large team. People are creating million dollar businesses with just themselves. Gone are the days where you would need to pay money to get your business in front of thousands, if not millions of people. You can do this for free. Gone are the days where you would need a team of people to write and send a bunch of emails every day to thousands of prospects or leads. And gone are the days where you would need a skilled copywriter, photographer, graphic designer, strategist, etc. The technology is here to do it all for you. You have AI that can analyze data quickly. It learns and improves over time. It helps with customer support. It can help you create personalized marketing campaigns. It creates content. It generates ideas. And you have automation, which saves time. It reduces manual tasks. It schedules social media posts. You can automate email campaigns. Automation allows you to focus more on strategy or running the business. And then you have the creator economy. Anyone can create content and thus all of the attention is on social media. Everyone uses social media. And with social media, you can monetize through various platforms. It allows you to build your own audience and connect directly with your fans. Now, there is a great cost to ignoring these technologies. If you don't use AI, you're just missing opportunities. You'll have a slower response to your customers. You will have less personalized customer experiences, and you just overall cannot compete with businesses who are leveraging AI because your business will be in comparison ridiculously slow. Same with automation. You are wasting time 
on repetitive tasks that can be automated. Not only that, but you'll have higher operation costs. Because if you're hiring people, if you're paying people to do jobs that a robot can do, you're wasting money. And then you'll have an inconsistent online presence. If you are not automating emails, if you are not automating content, the lifeblood of your business, the traffic, is not going to be consistent. And if, again, if you are not automating your emails, you are not automating your marketing efforts, the lifeblood of your business, your business will be inconsistent. And if you're spending time doing all of these monotonous tasks, all of these repetitive tasks, it's taking away time from actually growing the business. It's taking away time from brainstorming ideas for growth, ideas for scaling the business. And then if you aren't taking advantage of the creator economy, you are just missing out on new revenue streams. Because depending on how your business operates, depending on how your business makes money, if you aren't taking advantage of all the social media platforms, not only are you missing out on completely different audiences, but you can make revenue from the platforms themselves, whether it's YouTube, TikTok, or even Facebook. You get money directly from using the platform. You're limiting your audience reach. You're having less engagement with your followers because all of your followers, all of your customers, all of your leads are using all of the platforms. And thus you will be falling behind in content trends. And all of this leads to missed chances to build a strong brand, whether it's a professional brand or a personal brand. Now we're going to be covering a number of tools in this course, but we're going to be focusing on one of them because this one is an all-in-one solution. And this all-in-one solution will help streamline your business. It'll automate repetitive tasks. It'll help you manage customer interactions. It'll schedule and post on social media and so much more. It'll also help you leverage AI. It'll help you use AI for data analysis. It'll improve customer support. It'll personalize your marketing efforts and it'll help you create content. It will also give you the tools to help you thrive in the creator economy. Whether you want to create and sell your own memberships, courses, or build a community, it'll help you build a loyal audience and monetize through the various platforms. And then it will just simplify your workflow. If all of your tools are in one place, it'll help you save time and reduce costs by automating tasks while you focus more on growing your business. It'll help you focus on the important things. Now this tool, if you don't already know, is called Go High Level. It is the perfect solution for any online business. I can't stress that enough. It provides the perfect framework to build your business. Similar to how WordPress is a framework for building websites or how Shopify is a framework for building an online store or selling products, there are infinite possibilities when it comes to what can actually be built using these platforms. Go High Level is very similar. However, it is a framework for running businesses, brands, and agencies. And it can be integrated with both Shopify and WordPress because the core features of Go High Level encompass capturing, nurturing, and closing leads. Whether it is done for you as a business or if you choose to do it for a client as an agency. Again, it is an all-in-one solution for online businesses and agencies, whether personal or professional. So let's go into what you can actually expect from this course. We're going to go through a full walkthrough and setup of the Go High Level platform and software. We're going to create your own white labeled software as a service using Go High Level. We're going to create your own software. We're going to create a Google workspace and a branded email. We're going to be buying and registering a domain name, We're going to build a website and a funnel, integrating a calendar for booking calls and meetings, registering a marketing phone number for SMS and calls that integrates within the platform. And then we're also going to be creating email and SMS campaigns. Not only that, but we're going to be connecting your social media accounts, building unique automations. I will show you how to prospect to find clients. I will show you how you can create a community. I will show you how you can create documents and contracts. I will show you how to create an affiliate program, whether you want to set up an affiliate program for yourself, for your products or services, or if you want to set up an affiliate program for someone else as a client. I will show you how to create AI chatbots and assistants and so much more. We are going to go over so much in this course. Now this course will give you all of the tools you need to create or add on to your own high performing agency or business. Doesn't matter what business you're in, this course will help you. It doesn't matter if you don't even have a business yet. I'm going to give you all of the knowledge you need to make you a go high level master. Not only that, but I'm going to point you in the right direction regarding the type of business you want to create if you don't have one already. I'm going to equip you with everything you need to stand out in the marketplace. 
And also, this course is going to evolve over time. As new features and developments are created, I will add them onto this course to ensure that you are ahead of the game in all aspects for your business. And that means more modules, more tutorials, more snapshots, everything. But before we get into this course, before we actually start to dive in, who the heck am I? Why should you listen to me? Well, nice to meet you. My name is Tyron Barney. Some of you, if you follow me on social media, you'll know me as Tyron the Tyrant. And a fun fact about my brand name, Tyrant, being a tyrant, it stems from my name, Tyron. If you add a T at the end, it's pronounced Tyrant. Just so you don't think I'm some sort of dictator, it's my brand. I help people conquer their lives in all realms. I help people become tyrants. Now, I've been in the tech space for over seven years and have started businesses in web development, blockchain, e-commerce, and now I have my own agency where I focus on marketing and AI. And not only that, but I have worked with and managed some of the top creators in various industries. I've learned from them. I've coached them on a professional level. I've helped build their million dollar plus brands and businesses. And using the knowledge I've gained over the years, I've begun creating my own brand online, teaching people how to use AI and capitalize on it. Because what most people do not realize is that the way we do business is changing forever in real time, like I just went over. I've carefully analyzed what works and what doesn't, both for me and my clients. So now I'm sharing everything, everything with you. And by the end of this course, you will have all of the knowledge you need to build a strong presence online. You will have your own software. You will have a business that can scale infinitely. You will have a complete system built and branded for you. You will have a strong community to bounce ideas off of and build with. And you will have a plethora of tools at your disposal to provide unlimited value to the world. And you will have a business system that is absolutely future-proof. You will become a tyrant of your own life. So let's get started. So to get started, first you need Go High Level. Now, if you use the link tyrantempire.com slash trial, you will get a free 30-day trial to Go High Level. It's normally 14 days. So if you use my link, you get 30 days. And the more time you have, the better to get everything built out, to learn everything, to then start implementing it and then capitalize on it. Because 14 days is plenty to start making money with this. But if you have 30 days, it's just more peace of mind. So use the link below and sign up and let's get started so you can follow along. Because in the next module, we will be navigating the entire Go High Level platform and covering all of the features. And buckle up because this is going to be an extremely value-packed course. There is going to be a ton of information we are going to cover. Now, I don't want you to feel overwhelmed because this is an understatement. We are going to cover everything and more. And I guarantee you, if you follow everything in this course, I can guarantee that your business and brand will be future proof. So sign up using the link below, get the trial started, and let's get to work. We have a ton of stuff to go over. So I will see you in the next module. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the High Level Masterclass. Now, this video is going to be one of the longest in the course, but it is also one of the most important. So, buckle up, let's jump right in. This is the Go High Level Overview. We are going to go over everything. Everything. So, follow along with me. I will be building out everything along with you for a side project of mine called Money Secrets. I'm doing it so this way you can see everything that I do and replicate each step of the process. So make sure you follow all of the instructions. As of now, I only have my domain name. That's all I've done so far. I had to secure it or else I would do that along with you. But again, it's a very, very good domain name. I had to snag it before someone else did. But other than that, I will be building everything from the ground up by your side. So if you didn't already, let's get you started with Go High Level for free. Use the link tyrantempire.com slash trial to get a free 30 day trial with go high level. If you already have a go high level account, I will show you how you can get an extended trial under me. Not only that, but I'm also giving you the snapshot of my white labeled high level software called rise rebel. And if you don't know, a snapshot is essentially a copy of the system. So the snapshot will include all of the automations, the funnels, the documents, the landing pages, the forms, and much more. So let's get the 30 day free trial. So 
let's navigate to tyrantempire.com slash trial. Now it'll bring you to this page here. Now feel free to take some time, pause this and just kind of read through it. This will give you a basic understanding of what to expect, but we are just going to do a full dive. I will show you everything. So just go ahead, click this button here, put in your information. So money secrets, my name is Tyron Barney, and then money secrets, AI at gmail.com. Then my phone number, just like that. Now it'll give you two options to start. You have the starter plan and the unlimited plan. If you want everything, including your own software, your own white labeled version of high level, we're gonna go with the SaaS Pro plan, which is not an option here. So just sign up for the unlimited plan, or if you want, you can go with just the starter plan, but we're gonna go with the Pro plan because you will need the Pro plan to follow along with everything we're doing. So I'm just going to input my card number here. So after you do all that, you will be directed to this screen here. So just click here to get started. Then it will bring you to the app. Then we'll just ask you some questions. Make sure you put in the information that's relevant to you and your business. All right, so now that we have all that done, so depending on if you already have a business or not, you can select what tools you're already using. If you're using MailChimp for your email marketing, or if you use ClickFunnels for some of the funnels that you have, or if you have a WordPress website, or if you use Kajabi for your communities or courses, or if you use Typeform for your forms, or Wix for your website, you have all of these options to import those, to let High Level know that you have these. And so once we actually get into the app, you can connect these to your High Level account. So I don't use any of these. I'm just gonna go next and then just set a password and then continue. Cool, and then we just have to verify our email address. Do not reply, use our one-time code, then just paste that in here and verify. Then also it'll send a code to our phone number that we used to sign up with and then verify. Then you will be prompted to set up your first sub account. So let's click, I'll do this later and I, I will go through all of this, do not worry. It'll be easier just to do it as I'm explaining everything. So let's click, I'll do this later. So now that we have created a Go High Level account, we have activated the free trial. What are we going to cover? Well, as I mentioned, we're gonna go through the entirety of the Go High Level platform, and I'm gonna show you everything. I'm gonna show you everything from the agency view, and then also everything from the sub account view. Both of these are very important. Now we'll show you the difference. Then I'm going to show you the various ways that you can get help and support from Go High Level directly. So let's go over the two sides of Go High Level. You have the agency side, and this is the administrative overview for your entire business and software. The agency view will house all of the sub accounts, all the software information, the phone integration, the email services, and Stripe account information for your business. This is also where you can configure your reselling add-ons, your pricing up charges, and your permissions for all the sub accounts underneath you. And then you have the sub account side. The sub accounts are what you create for an individual business, whether it's for your business or any of your clients' accounts. Now the sub accounts are actually what house your websites, funnels, contacts, automations, calendars, and everything underneath that and more. Now each sub account will be different for each business. And if you plan to use Go High Level for your agency, you will create a sub account for each one of your clients. So now let's go through Go High Level. I will show you everything and we'll go through all of the settings. All right, now that we have signed up, this is what is called the agency view, which if you remember is the administrative side of Go High Level. This is where you have administrative privileges for the entire software and all the sub accounts that use it. If you have any sub accounts, which we will go over, they can be accessed here. So if you're an agency and you start signing on clients, you will have all of your clients and their sub accounts in this menu here. But for now, let's just go over the agency view tabs. Now this is the Go High Level application dashboard. So once you get everything going, once you connect Stripe and start getting money in, this will populate with the values of your business. It'll show you your monthly revenue. It'll show you the revenue from your previous month, your monthly recurring revenue, which is the MRR. It'll show you the amount of customers you have in your Stripe account, the new customers this month, the revenue distribution, where the money is coming in if you have various products and services. And it will show you a chart showing the growth month to month. So before we get started, we want SaaS mode because we want to go through all that. So let's go ahead, upgrade now, go to monthly, unless you want to pay annually, but monthly is better, especially since we have a free trial. You want to be able to use it before you commit fully. I completely understand that. So let's just go upgrade now. 
And again, you don't have to pay until the trial is over. So now we have upgraded successfully to the pro plan. And it looks like they're trying to send me a free shirt. I'm going to skip that for now, but I'll probably snag that later. Cool. Now that we've upgraded, we now have the SAS configurator. We'll need to connect Stripe to really dive into this. I have an entire module dedicated to just this. But essentially, this is where you configure the different software plans for your software to then resell to other people. This is where you decide the different packages, the different features within the packages, the pricing for the packages, etc. which again, we'll cover later on. And then we have the prospecting tab. Now, it doesn't matter if you're an agency or if you're just a service based business. This will help you out a lot. I'm going to go into everything in depth later, but for this, I'll just kind of show you how this works. So you can add a prospect. So to prospect, let's just look up martial arts near me. And it already has my location. I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah. And so it's going to pull this information from Google. And now what's really cool is that it also gives you some data to help you if you want to sell your services that can be provided by Go High Level, or if you want to resell your white labeled Go High Level software. The Google business page is very important for businesses and High Level has various integrations that really utilize the Google business page. And so it will show you within this whether or not they've claimed their Google page or not. And then it will also show if they have a WordPress site because WordPress is really good for search engine optimization and many other things. And Go High Level will actually allow you to host a WordPress website. And then you can also, if you have the pro plan, it'll allow you to upsell. It will allow you to change the price of the WordPress hosting to then where you can make a profit by doing so. And then based off of this information, it'll give you a conversion rate percentage, basically saying how likely they would be to go with your services, to go with high level, which in this case is pretty likely. They haven't claimed their business page, nor do they have a WordPress website. So if we click into this, it'll give us all their information. So if we go to save prospect, it will create a marketing audit report. Now this will take some time to generate and this video is going to be long as is. So I'm not going to spend too much time here, but this will basically give an overview of the business, the reviews, and just a bunch of information that will allow you to print off or create a PDF document to then send to them. And this report will allow you to get your foot in the door to then provide your services. Again, we will go into this later, but this prospecting tool is invaluable, super important if you take advantage of it. Now the sub accounts tab is pretty self-explanatory. This is where you create access and manage all of the sub accounts within your Go High Level software. You can see that the one we created for our business is already created. And then the account snapshots, if you remember before, a snapshot is basically a system that you create within high level that you can then share or even sell to other people or businesses. And not only that, but you can also download other snapshots, which I have one included with this course that we will download in just a bit. So you have the snapshots that you create in my snapshots. Then if you import any snapshots, which we will, they will show up here. Then you can also create your own snapshots and share them and update them accordingly within this tab. And then you also have access to a bunch of templates for a number of different industries, a bookkeeper or accountant, car detailing, career coach, chiropractor, lawyer, gym, hair salon, marketing agency, insurance, plumber, real estate, steakhouse, travel agency, web designer. You have access to all of these. So, so you can use these as a basis and then you can build on top of it, which is extremely powerful. Then if we go into the reselling tab, you have access to a bunch of applications that you can integrate within high level to then resell as a part of your software. Or if you're an agency, you can resell to your clients. So you can have a conversation AI, you can resell Yext, you can have WhatsApp integration, you can resell the WordPress hosting, as I mentioned before, and then we'll go into what a dedicated IP is, but you can resell a dedicated IP address for email sending. And with the rebilling feature, you can choose how much you want to add on top of this service. We will go into this later. Then you also have access to a ton of marketplace applications. You can resell all of these, and it will show you the price, it'll show you the cost, and then it'll let you modify your price. So all of these can be a means to more income for you. And then in the marketplace tab, here you have access to go high level services. So if you want to set up your account, you have basic account setup, advanced account setup, and then priority support, you don't really need any of this. That is what this course is for. We're going through absolutely everything. So lucky you, it's absolutely free. You're getting $1,000 right there for free. Now what's really cool 
is you have access to a white labeled mobile app. So out of the box, you get what is called a gray label mobile app. We'll go through this in the mobile app section down here. We'll go through what the gray label is down here. But a white label is essentially having your own app in the marketplace that your clients or customers can download and use on their phones, which is about $500 a month, which honestly is not bad. You can imagine how professional that looks if you have your own software that's custom branded for you and your business, and then you also have a mobile app that's also custom branded for your business. It adds a whole new level of professionalism. Then you also have access to high levels of Liza application to help you and your clients close more leads. Then you also have access to HIPAA compliance if you deal with the medical industry. Now, if you go to the affiliate portal, this is where you view all of the affiliate information within high level. You have the dashboard, which shows you how much money you make from the affiliate program. You have your affiliate link here. You have your referral income and then just basic information regarding clicks and the amount of customers you have generated. So in the promoter reports, pretty self-explanatory, just gives you reports on the affiliate information on your affiliate campaigns. You have payment details, which include all of your personal information, your payment method, the tax forms, and everything to get you paid from the affiliate program. Payment history, self-explanatory invoice history also pretty self-explanatory and then the about tab just gives you an overview of all the fun stuff that's included from being a high level affiliate so now let's navigate to the template library the template library is an extremely valuable part of go high level you have access to hundreds of different templates for funnels for websites for emails for social media posts for your forms, as well as surveys. And all of these are included within high level for free. You don't have to pay for any of these. And so if we view one here, and what's really cool about this, if you decide you like this template, then you can use it. You can modify it. You can make it yours, which we will go into in a bit. But that's to say for all of this, you can choose any of these funnels, websites, emails, social planner, forms, surveys. You can choose any of these and customize them to fit your brand or business. It's extremely powerful. And then within the partner tab, this is where you can kind of network and find people to work with within the high level platform. So if you click on find a partner, you'll be brought to this page. So it just gives you a little overview of what they do, their experience, their skills, the niche that they serve. So if you need something done, these people are all certified within high level. They are professionals. And again, I'm gonna teach you everything that you need to know, but this is a cool resource if you ever want or need it. If there's something in particular that you don't really want to do yourself, you can click need something done and then just fill out this form to create a job posting. And then in the university tab, this is where you'll be able to access the courses provided by Go High Level. Now at the time of recording this, there's only one, which is the five day AI challenge, which is not bad, but we will cover everything that's within this course as well. It basically goes over creating and selling AI assistance. AI chatbots, which we are going to cover in this course in depth. So the next tab is SaaS education. Everything that this goes over, we are going to cover in depth. This basically just tells you why you should go with the SaaS mode and how to do so. Then you also have the SaaS fast track, which again, just goes over everything that we are going to cover here in this course. Another thing that's really cool about high level is that they have an ideas board, which will bring you here. So if you have an idea for high level that you want integrated, you can create an idea board here. They are really, really, really community oriented. The official high level Facebook group is an incredible resource. If you have any questions, if you need help, if you want to network, or if you just want to talk to other people that are high level experts, the admins are incredibly active. The high level community is incredible. So with that said, they're always looking to improve their product. So all of these are ideas from the community. So if we click on a category here, let's go through payments. Here we have all the ideas created from the community members explaining what they want. And you can see a status underneath it. So you can see this one is in progress from the team. This one is in the plan stage. This one's in progress. This one's in progress. So they're constantly every single day having new features come out. And most of them our community requests. And so you can create, if you have, again, if you have something that you want implemented and there's not already an idea board there, you can submit your own idea. And if you scroll down further, you can see the roadmap. 
It looks like we're going to have a tipping option here really soon. Be able to upsell domains. That's pretty cool. An AI booking bot. A bunch of different stuff. And as these things are implemented and put out, they will be added to this course. So yeah, just a ton of stuff here. It's incredible. So then if we go to the mobile app section, here is where you will access all the information for your app. If you have this checked, it'll automatically show the link for the customer or your client to download the mobile app that you have selected. So both of these, the lead connector and the high level app are what are called gray label applications. So they will have the lead connector branding or the high level branding, but within the app itself will be our software. So once we brand this, it'll be moneysecrets.ai or whatever you name yours. But like I mentioned before, if you want your own white label application, if you want your brand on the mobile app itself, it'll be about $1,500 a quarter, roughly $500 a month. And if you do go that route, you just click this and then you can customize it there. And you can also customize your white label app right here at the bottom. And then lastly, we have the app marketplace. This is an extremely powerful way to add more features to your software. We're not going to go too in depth here, but you can essentially white label a lot of these applications to then integrate into your software to further customize your software. So we will go through this later down the road because there are some features that are incredibly powerful that I personally use for my business that we will include in this course. But for now, if you're curious, you can go ahead, pause the video and just kind of look at what's available. It'll blow your mind. All right. So now, so this is the agency view. If you want to switch to the sub account view, which we will do in a bit, if you have any sub accounts created, it'll be right here. So now that we've gone through all the tabs, let's go through the settings within the agency view. So in the my profile settings, this is where you set up your personal profile. So profile image. So I'm just going to set the tyrant empire logo as my profile image. You have your email and this is just basically where you make sure all your information is correct. Then just update that. And then within the company, this is where you input the settings for your business. So if you have a company logo, I don't have one yet. If you do, you can add that in here. If you don't have a logo yet, like me, we will create that later down the road. So let's just go through and start putting in our information for our business. So the company phone, this can be if you have a business phone or if you want to use the marketing number, which we'll set up down the road, you can use that as well. So if you don't have one yet, that's fine. No worries. Website. Again, if you don't have one yet, do not worry. We will get to it. If you do have one, feel free to put that in here. Business niche, I'm just going to set as marketing agency. What do I? What do we use it for to operate my business? So the white label domain, the API domain, the privacy policy URL, and the terms and conditions URL, we will get to in a later module. Do not worry about those. As well as the custom JavaScript and the custom CSS. No need to worry about that just yet. And the theme, you can modify from light to dark. The dark is much easier on the eyes, so we'll leave it as it is. Just update company. Then the company address, you can set in this field. Don't worry about these just yet. And then all of these, you can just leave as is as well. So once you have that all set up and optimized, we can go into the team. Now, if you have any staff members that you'd like to have access to the agency view within your Go High Level account, you can add them here. So if you add an employee, you can input all their information. Then you can also set their permissions. You can give them certain access to the settings, give them certain access to the tabs, to different websites, to be able to view certain things. That's all accessible here. They can also change their access to just a certain sub account. If you want them to be a user or an admin, or if you want to give them access to the agency, then you can give them access to certain sub accounts all from here. And then from the billing tab, this will give you all the billing information for your agency. So since we're on the agency pro account, it'll let us know that we're on a trial plan. And then we have 29 days until our trial ends. You can skip the trial and pay now. It'll show you any of the add-ons you have, if you have any, as well as any of the reselling features that you have opted into, as well as how many you have sold. And then in the payments tab, it'll let you know what payment method you have on file all the tax ID information, as well as the billing information. Now this is an old address. I'm probably going to blur it out. So don't try and stalk me. You can't find me. Then you also have access to all of the payments, all of your payment history here. And now when you sign up to high level, it'll charge you $1 and then immediately cancel it just so it knows it's a real account. Then you also have your invoices there as well. And then the wallet and transactions tab will allow you to add to your balance. 
And your balance is used for any transactions regarding SMS messaging and emails typically. So if you don't wanna charge your card every single time, you can just add a balance here. And then it will show you what is charging you. And this may be kind of intimidating. If you have the agency pro plan and you have people using your software, you can charge them to use it. Whether they call using your software, whether they're sending messages, whether they're using any of these that cost fractions of a penny each time, you can set the price for that. So you actually make money from people using it, which we will cover later on. Within the detailed transactions, it just kind of tells you, that's pretty self-explanatory. It just tells you in more detail where the transactions are happening. So in the phone integration tab, this is where we will connect our phone system. And since you signed up to the agency pro plan, you have free credits. Or if you have a Twilio account, you can connect that here. And then within the sub account, this is where you can access the rebilling information and see the status of the sub accounts using your phone system. And since we haven't set up anything, you can see that we have some work to do. Then in the email services tab, you can disregard this because we will set up a dedicated sending domain later. So within, within the email services, we're going to be using the Lead Connector email system. It's high levels dedicated sending system for emails and phones. But if you go into location settings, similar to the phone integration, this is where we can see we can see what sub accounts are using our email system, as well as all the rebilling information. Again, we can make money from our clients using our email system, but you must be on the agency pro plan to do so. If you're not on the agency pro plan, you will have to pay for people using these services. So it costs more in the long run to not be signed up to the agency pro plan. Then you have access to all the risk assessment. It'll show you status. It'll show you the information, all the data for your delivery rate, your open rate, your click rate, all that information here. And then in advanced settings, you have your email verification. So if you have an automation set up to where people can automatically have a sub account created when they sign up, you would probably want to have this checked so you're not getting spammed, which we will cover down the road. Now the lead connector premium triggers and actions tab will allow you to enable or disable a sub account's ability to create premium triggers within the workflows. Now this probably doesn't make any sense to you right now. I will explain it later, but essentially if you do know what that is, it will allow sub accounts to include premium functions within their workflows, such as connecting to a Slack channel, using webhooks or interacting with Google sheets. It can be very powerful. Then the conversation AI, is just that it's a conversation ai that you can integrate into websites and more so here you can enable or disable sub accounts to use it and like most other things you can add rebilling because it costs fractions of a penny each time you use the ai and so you can set the price for your clients or customers to where you are making profit every time they use it even if it's just a fraction of a cent it adds up and again you must be on the agency pro plan or else you will be paying for this for your clients, which can get expensive. So now the workflow AI is an AI model that integrates with your workflows. So if you wanna send like automated birthday messages, automated follow-ups after a webinar, fitness goal tracking, whatever, you can enable that and disable that for your clients here. And you can see that it is a paid service charged at three cents for every GPT-4 execution. So it's about $3 per 100 executions. So you can disable that if you don't want it to be utilized. If you want to enable your sub account to have it or your client's sub accounts to have it, you can access that here. And don't forget, you can chart, you can change this price to four cents per execution. So you're making one cent for every execution, for an example. Then the reviews AI is very similar. It automatically re responds to any reviews across Facebook or Google. And this one is eight cents per response. Disable it if you don't want to pay for it or enable it and change the rebilling so you can make money from it. Simple as that. You can access that here. Now the content AI is an AI model you can use to create content, whether it's images or text. And yes, you can enable that and disable that here as well as change the rebilling information. So it's charged at nine cents per 1000 words and six cents per image. You can enable it if you want it or disable it if you don't. And yes, you can change the rebilling so you can make money off of it. Then you have all your affiliate information here as well as the affiliate tab we covered before. Then you can also put in your pixel ID there for Facebook. We'll cover later down the road. Custom menu links are extremely powerful for your software. We'll cover this later on as well, but essentially this is where you can integrate 
third-party applications into your software. So if you click Create New, you can select the icon for it, the name, the URL. Then you can also choose what sub-account you want or if you just want it in the agency, whatever. It's all right here. And then for Stripe, pretty straightforward. It's just where you connect your Stripe account. Stripe is a payment processor. This is how you get paid. Then you have your API keys, which API stands for Application Programming Interface. It's essentially how two programs, two applications communicate with, in, with one another. So if you want to connect to things like Zapier or Make or OpenAI, this is how you would do that. You use API keys. Compliance is where you access all your compliance information, which unless you're in the medical field, you don't really have to worry about this. Labs is where you get access to become a beta tester and test out, you know, new features. Then you have your audit logs. This is where you can view things that have been changed. So if you have staff, if you have a large staff, this is where you can track who did what and when they did it. So that sums up the agency view. So now that we've navigated the agency view, let's get into the sub account view. So if you remember, click on here and then just go to your sub account. You should only have one sub account right now. So just click into that. And now we are in the sub account view you can see our sub account is selected here and now we are at the launch pad the launch pad is essentially here to get us going it will allow us to get the link for our mobile app remember we configured those settings in the agency view so we can get the link for the gray labeled app or if we have the white labeled app we can get that here now remember if you're an agency all of the sub accounts you set up for your clients will have a view similar to this, depending on what they have selected when they set up their account. Remember, we didn't set up anything like WordPress or the MailChimp or any of that. So we only have the bare bones here. But if your clients, or even if you use things such as HubSpot or MailChimp or WordPress or Yext, all of those will be here as well. So you can quickly integrate them into your high level account. But for now, let's just cover the basics. You have your Google page for Google page conversations, as well as the reviews. You can connect that here. Then you can also connect your Facebook account immediately right here to link any leads that you have or to integrate any conversations that you may have, integrate your reviews, as well as sync your Facebook leads into the CRM. Now you can set up the chat widget to the launch pad as well as connecting the Stripe account or adding more team members. Don't worry about this for now. We will cover everything. So if you go to the dashboard within the sub account, this will give you data such as the amount of opportunities in the pipelines, the amount of value you have tied to the amount of opportunities. So if you have, for example, 10 leads in your pipeline and each lead is $1,000, you have 10 opportunities worth $1,000. So it should populate around $10,000 worth of opportunity here. And then you also have the conversion rate, the amount of leads that you've converted into clients, and it'll show you the total revenue that you've won over. Then you will have information about any of the funnels that you have based off of your pipeline then it will show you the stage distribution it'll show you where your leads are at various stages within the funnel or the pipeline it'll show you any of the tasks that you have to do all of your manual actions here your lead source report the google analytics report data the google analytics report chart information about the google business profile and then the facebook ads report as well as the google ads report all of this is accessible within the dashboard you can change the time frame for which you want to view the data. Then you can also change the dashboard. You can add different widgets. There are a ton of different widgets you can change, add, etc. You can completely customize this to fit you or your client's needs or wants. Then within the conversations tab, here is where you will manage your conversations across text, email, Facebook, Instagram, and your Google page. All of those conversations will be found here. You have the unread tab, the recents tab, the starred, and then all. Then you have manual actions, anything you need to approve, any templates that you have. Then you also have trigger links. But don't worry, we'll go into all of this in depth later. Then you have the calendars tab. This is where you set up and configure any calendars you have for yourself, your clients, or team members. And then the appointments tab will show you all the appointments you have across your calendars. Or if you just want to view one calendar, or if you have a calendar set just for a sales team, you can view all of that here. Or you can manually create an appointment. So now in the contacts tab, this is where we can view all of the contacts designated to the sub account. So all of their leads, all of their customers, all of their affiliates, all of their prospects, everybody. And from here, you can add a contact. You can change the pipeline that the contact is currently in. You can add a contact to an automation directly. You can send them a message via text. You can send them an email. You can add a tag. You can remove a tag. You can delete the contact. You can send a review request directly. You can export the contacts. 
You can import contacts, you can add them to a company, or you can merge the contacts. Now if we click on me, you can see all of my information that I have input. And then you can also create what are called custom fields, which we will go into depth on later. So all of these are called fields. Business name, street address, city, country, state, postal code, website. These are all fields. Now we can create what are called custom fields. If we want more information such as their social media links, their budget, etc. We can create all of that with custom fields, which we will cover in depth later. But just so you're aware, all of that information will show up in here. We can create our own folder. We can put it in additional info. Just you wait until we get into that. That is fun and extremely powerful. Then we can also access the tags. We can see what automation sequence they're in. We can add them to an automation sequence. We can see what pipeline they're in or if they've opted into do not disturb mode. Now in the bulk actions tab, this is where we can edit our contacts in bulk. Or if we delete any contacts and we want to restore their information, we can restore them here. Then we also have our task list, which we will go over later. And then the company list. If there's a company that we're working with, we can add them here. And then within the company list, we can add all of their employees that we want to have contacts with. And then smart lists, we will cover later as well. And then clicking this gear icon here will bring us to the custom field settings, which again, we will go over later. So now in the opportunities tab, this is where we will create pipelines. And I have a few pipelines for you available for free included in the snapshot that we will use. But if you want to create your own pipeline, this is where you'll do it. And then pipelines here is where you will view your pipeline. And then the payments tab. This is where you view all your invoices, your documents, your subscriptions, your products, your coupons, transactions, everything. But in the invoices tab, you'll be able to see how many invoices you have in draft, how many invoices are due, how many invoices you've received, how many are overdue, and then you'll see the list of them here. You can manage the settings with this gear icon, and then you can also create a new invoice here. And then under the reoccurring templates, you can create invoice templates. If there's a service that you regularly use, you can create a template for it so you're not having to recreate the same invoice over and over again. And that is within templates. And then the recurring templates are the same though they are made for reoccurring purchases. So if you have a service that you want to charge every month for, you'll create that in the reoccurring templates. If it's just a one-time payment, you'll create that in the invoice templates. Hopefully that makes sense. The documents and contracts tab, pretty self-explanatory, I would hope. It's where we create the documents and contracts for ours or our clients' businesses. And you also can create templates for reoccurring documents. We have a whole module dedicated to this. Then the orders, if we are in the e-commerce business and we're selling physical products, we can track all of our orders here. So if we need to ship anything out or if we need to create anything, it will be visible here. And then with the abandoned checkouts, it's essentially showing us any incomplete orders that were not processed and we can create a workflow based off of this to send out emails or SMS messages to try and get them to finish their order. And then the subscriptions tab, this is pretty self-explanatory as well. You keep track of customer subscriptions created via order forms. So if you have any reoccurring payments that you need to keep track of, it'll all be visible here. Payment links. So a payment link is what pops up when someone is about to check out. So here you can configure the product, that the payment link is for. You can require them to add their phone number to get their address. You can allow coupon codes. You can change You can change the call of action at the bottom here. You can do pay, you can do book, you can do donate. Then you can turn on or off the branding here. You can do powered by money secrets or powered by whatever your business name is. And you can also change the payment mode to test or live. Now we haven't configured our Stripe settings, so it doesn't really matter what you choose, but that is what that looks like. And then in the transactions tab, self-explanatory tracks all customer payments in this tab, all in one place. In the products tab, it is where you create and manage your products, whether physical or digital. It's all right here. So if you create a product, this is what it will look like. You can have it reoccurring. You can have it one-time fee. You can track inventory. And whenever you create a product, if you have your Stripe account connected, it'll automatically create a product within your Stripe account. So you don't have to worry about linking a product on both your software or the Stripe account. It's automatically done. And then the coupons tab, this one is also self-explanatory. You create coupons, create the coupon name, you make the code, you can generate a random one, you can change the coupon type if it's a percentage off or if it's just a fixed price. You can have the start date, you can have the end date, you can limit the amount of times it can be redeemed, you can limit this to certain products or offers, and then you can limit to one use per customer. Then you can also apply it to reoccurring or future payments if it's applicable. If not, then it'll be X percent off or X dollar amount off 
the first month, and then this much for the rest of your subscription if this is not checked. And then in the settings, this is where you can edit the receipts, the tax information, the notifications, and the shipping and delivery. So if you need to modify the shipping fees, the handling fees, all of that, you can add it per zone and you can select the countries for the zone, so on and so forth unlimited customability, unlimited customization. And then in the integrations, here is where you can connect more than just Stripe for your payment processors. You can have PayPal, and then you can also search for more. At the time of recording this, they have four different ones, but there are ways you can connect other ones as well. Now, if we go to the marketing tab, this is where we will connect all of our social media platforms to then be able to create, post, and schedule across all of them all through our software. So Facebook, Instagram, the Google My Business page, LinkedIn, X, and TikTok. You can create one post and then schedule it across all of these at once. It's extremely powerful. In the email section, you have access to the email campaigns. So if you have an email campaign that you want to create for a product or service, you can create that here. And then you can get access to the statistics based off of that email campaign. Then in the templates, it's where you create and manage your email templates. Then trigger links, we're not going to cover just yet, but it's basically a link that you can track the analytics of. So if you wanna see how many people are clicking a link to download something or view a document, you can track all that information here. And within the analyze tab, it'll let you view and track specific customer actions based on when the link is clicked. The affiliate manager is where you create and manage your affiliate program that you create for your business or your client's business. So you can see the total revenue generated, the conversion rate, total amount of customers that have been created from your affiliate programs. You have any conversion trends. You can see the total amount of affiliates you have, the total amount of customers that have canceled, the conversion trend. You can see your top affiliates. You can sort by revenue, commission, lead, or customer. You can see how much money you owe your affiliates, how much you've paid your affiliates, any pending commissions, the amount of pending payouts, and then any data for the commissions as well as the affiliates here. You can also see any of the recently joined affiliates here. Now you can also create affiliate campaigns. So you can have multiple affiliate campaigns. We're not gonna go too deep into this. We have a whole module dedicated to just this, but the affiliate tab and the payout tab, you won't be able to view unless you create a campaign. So if we go to the media, if you have any promotional material or promotional videos that you want to give to your affiliates to allow them to sell your product or service better on your behalf. This is where you add all that information. And then the settings for the affiliate tab, this is where you configure all the information for your affiliate programs. So you have the payout terms, the welcome email, the cookie life, and this, any setup fees. Then you also have more customizations here. Again, we're not gonna go too deep into this because we will later. In the automation tab, this is where a lot of the magic happens. This is where you create workflows automated workflows. We're going to go into this a lot, but just know that's what this tab is for. Then this is also where you can manage the content AI. You can see how many words have been generated, how many variations have been generated, and how many words a day are being generated. Because remember this, it costs money to use the content AI. So you want to be able to track how much you're using it. And you can see where it's being used as well, whether it's the social planner, the blog, the funnel, the website, the email, you can see where it's being used, who it's being used by and how much it is being used. So within the sites, this is where we create a number of things. We can create funnels, we can create websites, we can create blogs, you can see the total amount of blog posts we use, total amount of blog posts we've created, the total amount of blog post sites and the amount of visitors we get every single week. All that information will populate down here as well. Then if we have WordPress integrated, we can see the WordPress here. And this price, remember, is based off of the price that we have set in our agency account. So it's $15 a month, but our cost is around $10. So we're making about $5 per month on WordPress hosting. So remember, we are in the sub account. So this is everything that our clients will see. Then the client portal, this is where our affiliates, our community, and our members all get access to their courses, their affiliate dashboard, as well as the community hub. We will go into this later. And then the forms, forms is where you build a form, pretty self-explanatory. And then if you go into analyze, you can analyze the data from any forms that you build and the amount of submissions for that form. Essentially, the amount of times that form has been submitted. Basically the same as surveys. You have the builder, you have the analyzer, and then you can see the amount of submissions. Then in the chat widget, this is where you configure the chat widget 
to be posted on your funnels, your websites, or your blogs. You can enable a chat bubble. You can enable the message for the chat bubble. You can change the image for the avatar. And then if anyone's returning, to the website, you can enable the custom greeting for anyone who's already been to the website. You can change the chat type. You can have it be an SMS or email chat. So you get notifications on your phone from the app or your email. And you can have the form on here to have it generate a lead form. So whenever someone gives you their information, it'll create a contact within the contact tab based off of this. So this is another form of lead generation. It's extremely powerful. And then you can also have a live chat feature, which isn't really recommended unless you have a large team that have 24 seven coverage. So it's definitely better to just have this one checked because you're getting the lead and then it's automatically going to your phone. You don't have to worry about hiring a team. And then in the widget window, you can change all the information here. You can change the color, you can change the branding and then the acknowledgement settings. And then you can also get the code to put this on different websites such as WordPress. Because if you're an agency and you wanna resell these services, not everyone's gonna to wanna to use Go High Level or your software to host the website, and not everyone's going to have a WordPress site. So the ability, having the ability to just grab the code will allow you to integrate this on more than just those two platforms. It's very powerful. And now we have the media tab. So if you click on the media tab, it'll automatically bring you to the media tab within the settings. And this is just where you store all of your images and your videos for your business. And then same with the URL redirects. If you, it'll just bring you to the URL redirect tab within the settings. And we will go over this later, but it's essentially when someone types in a URL, it'll bring them to a different URL. There are a lot of use cases for this, which we will cover later. And now in the membership tab, you have access to courses, communities, and certificates. So the dashboard, pretty self-explanatory, shows you how many people have opted in, shows how many members have joined in the last 30 days, shows how many sales you have, as well as checkouts. So if you go to products, you can essentially create a new product from scratch, or you can import it from Kajabi, which is a very popular course and community platform. So the ability to just import directly is very powerful. It will save you a lot of time. And then offers. Once you create a course, you can create an offer. So an offer is basically turning that course into a product. You input the title, you add the products within there. So you can have multiple courses. You can make it free or paid. I don't have anything selected, so it's just defaulting to free. Then you can also have the price text override. I will cover this whole thing in depth. We have a whole module dedicated to courses and communities, but I hope this is getting you excited. Now we also have analytics. This will just give you a little bit more of a detailed overview of all the data pertaining to the courses, the members, and the communities. You can track the course progress, see where people are getting stuck, see where people are just falling off, etc. You can view the assessments. If you have any tests or quizzes within your courses, you can view the cumulative results here. And then you also have access to the member analytics, which will allow you to access and track profiles of all the learners, of all the students within your courses. And then if you're charging for your courses, you can view the revenue analytics here. And then of course, you have access to all of the settings within there. We're not gonna go into this, but just know that there's a designated mobile app now for your course that you can also white label. So now let's go to the communities tab. This is where you create a community, a community group. So you can change the group name, the group URL, the description for the group, the branding, the favicon, the cover image, and the logo. And then settings, you can add a custom domain as well as a subdomain, which we have not even set up for our own application or business yet, but just you wait. And then in the certificates tab, we can create different certificates based off of whatever we want. So if we want a certificate for someone who completes a certain course, we can create that. And you can use templates or you can create one completely from scratch. And now in the reputation tab, this is where you manage all of the reviews you have across Facebook and Google. And if you're sending out review requests, you can see how close you are to your invites goal. You can see how many reviews have been received. And then you can see the overall sentiment, good or bad. You can see the average rating. If you have Yext, you can see all the information from Yext here. You can see the invite trends, the review trends, the latest review requests, the latest review requests sent out, and the latest reviews that you have received. If you go to the requests, you can see all of the requests that you, that you have sent out, whether you've done it manually or if you've had it done via automation. And then the reviews self-explanatory. You can see a list of all the reviews that you've had. 
whether it's on Facebook or Google. So now in the widgets tab, you can create your own review widget. So if you create a new one, so by creating a widget, this will allow people to see some of the reviews that you've had, as well as the ability to write a review for you. We're not gonna go too into this as usual, but you can change the layout, change the content within it. You can change the branding and just the overall settings. And then you can also embed this to a website. It's very powerful. If you have Yext integrated, you can see all of the online listings that you or your client's business are listed on. And since we haven't activated Yext, it's saying contact Money Secrets AI at Gmail to get Yext. So it's basically saying to contact the agency, the agency account, remember, to get this. And yes, we can upcharge on this. We can we can provide this as a service and upsell and have a rebilling charge on it. So we can make money from just this service. We can make money from this service. And so now in the reporting tab, if we are doing paid ads, whether for ourselves or our clients, all of that information is going to be viewable here. Now this is sample data, but it's just to give us an idea, just to give us an idea of what it looks like. So if we're running ads on Google, you can see the amount of impressions, the amount of clicks, the amount of conversions, how much we're spending, the cost per click, the cost per conversion, the conversion rate. Then we can see all of the campaigns we have and their designated data there. And that's viewable for Google ads as well as Facebook ads. You can see the attribution report, all the call reporting. If we have a sales team using our phone system for calls, you can see the call duration. You can see the average call duration, the total call duration, whether it's incoming calls or outgoing calls. See the top call sources, where they're coming from, the total amount of calls, how many deals we've won from those calls and the average duration of those calls. And then we also have the logs here to view all the calls, whether incoming or outgoing. Then agent reporting. If we have a team of salesmen or a team of agents, any staff member really, we can select which one we want to view and then we can view all of the information regarding them. We can see their sales data, we can see their conversion rate, the amount of messages they've sent out, the amount of emails they've sent out, we can see their call metrics, we can see their efficiency, etc. You can see everything from here. You can also see the leaderboard, see who's making you the most money. And then the appointment report, I would hope this is self-explanatory as well, showing the amount of appointments that you've had booked, how many have been confirmed, how many people showed up, how many people have no-showed, and how many people have canceled. You can see all the data for the channel, all the data for the source, as well as all the data for the outcomes. Then you have all that data down here as well. So now in the app marketplace tab, similar to the agency view, you can give the sub accounts access to all of these so they can integrate them into their business, or you can completely remove this for sub accounts so they can't see this, which is what I would recommend because all of these you can add as an upcharge and a lot of these you can white label as well, which we will go into later. But you can see all the apps as well as any apps that you have installed. And then lastly, in the mobile app, remember in the agency view when we set whether we want the gray labeled app or the white labeled app? Well, this is where they will be able to download that. We're using the Go High Level gray labeled app right now. So if they want to download our app, they can copy it and download it. And it has this unique identifier on it. So it will automatically populate that app with our business data, with our agency's data, with our software's data. So yeah, the branding may be go high level or lead connector, depending on which one you go with, but the data inside the app is ours. It is unique to our business and our software or our agency. So you or your client would just download this. They would just copy this, put it in their browser. It'll bring them to the app store. They'll download it. And then they just log in all the data will be populated based off of their account. And you can also have it automatically invite users to download the app when a new user is added, which depending on how you're going about this, you can all, if you're having, if you have an onboarding process, which we will talk about, that can be part of the onboarding process is getting them to download the app and getting logged in so they are ready to go. So there's no hiccups or no speed bumps in the process which is what I would recommend if you are an agency. So that is all of the tabs within the sub account view. Now let's go through the settings. Similar to the agency view, we have the business profile. Now go ahead and fill this out. 
If you don't have a logo, do not worry about it yet. But just make sure you put in your business name that will show up right here. You have your legal business name. If you have an employee identification number, make sure it's the same legal business name that you registered with your EIN, that you have your correct business email. We will set up a branded email address, so don't worry too much about this. If you want people to call you, make sure you have your business phone number set correctly here. Again, don't worry about branded domain or the website if you don't have one yet. Make sure you set your niche. And then with the business information, put in your business type, your industry, your ID type. If you don't have a business registration number, if you have an EIN, you can put that in here. If you don't, you can just click my business is not registered. And then business regions of operations. I'm US based, so I'm gonna go USA and Canada. Then update information, call and voicemail settings. We can worry about this later on. Make sure all this information is correct for your physical business address. Outbound communication language, we'll just do English, then we'll save. Authorized representative, if you have a rep for your business, I'll just do me, Ty Barney, do Ty at riserevel.com. Job position, I'm the CEO, and then we'll just update that. It's not super important. Now this, I leave this as is for now. We will change some of these settings down the road. I don't want you to get overwhelmed with all of the settings. Leave this as is as well. Then the missed call text back, just leave as is as well. Don't worry about these last three sections here. We will change some of these settings down the road and I don't want you to get overwhelmed with all of this stuff that may not make sense right now. So just skip it for now. And then company billing. So since we are in the sub account view and we are in the sub account, this will be billing information for the sub account. So if we don't own this sub account, if this sub account isn't for our business, so if you're an agency and you are signing up another, if you are signing up a client underneath your agency with your software, make sure you put their payment information here. But since this is our sub account, because we need a sub account for our agency account, for our websites and everything, this will be our payment information. So we can do this once we connect Stripe. Don't worry about this just yet. And then my staff, if we have any team members that we want to add to our sub account, or any virtual assistants or anyone, we can add them as an employee here. You can add all their information, their signature, their permissions, you can add their permissions, what they can and can't access, you can give them roles if they have administrator or just user permissions, you can change their call and voicemail settings, you can update their availability on a weekly basis, and then also integrate their calendar. Don't worry about this too much just yet. Then we have the opportunities and pipeline settings, don't really have to change anything here and we don't have any pipelines created yet so we don't need to worry about this so then the calendar settings this is where you will create and configure your own calendar by creating a new calendar here but you can also create calendar groups service menus rooms and then also equipments it may not make a lot of sense to you now but it will once we dive into it then you also have preferences we'll just set that to monday monday is usually the first day of the week around the world then you can toggle services on and off then you can change the time format whether you use the standard format or the 24-hour format and then for the widget also going to set that to Monday to keep things simple. Then we're going to save. Then in the availability, availability is coming soon, but this can all be configured for each particular calendar as well as the Google Calendar, which we will set up. And then you have your connection preferences. If you have an ad account that you want to connect, we will connect Stripe in a later module. We have our service ads account for Google. Then we can also enable Google organic booking. Now the conversation AI, if you can remember, is the AI model we use to train on our data or even the customer's data to help with customer service and many other things. So if you're not on the agency pro plan, I'd recommend turning this off for your clients so you don't have to pay for their usage of this. But here, you can change the settings. You can add the supported channels. So if you want your conversation AI to respond to Instagram messages, Facebook messages, text messages, your Google business page, the chat widget on your website for text messages, or the live chat on your website. You can add whatever you want here. And you can also set up a trial for the bot to see how it works so you're not paying for something that you may or may not want but it is pretty amazing. So try it out, see if you love it, and then go from there. And then here you can configure the autopilot mode, then the pricing for the conversation AI, if you can remember within the agency view, it had a default of a $20 upcharge. Normally, 
the cost is $59. But since we have a $20 upcharge on it, it's showing within the sub account that it's $79. So this is what your clients will see if you are running an agency and plan to have more sub accounts underneath you. So again, you can change this in the agency settings. So in the bot trial tab, this is where you test the bot. Make sure that it's making the correct responses and has the correct information. You wanna make sure that it's relaying the correct information to your clients and leads. Then the bot training is where you train the bot on specific data. And what's really cool is you can scrape data from a website and now it can be an exact URL. It can be all the URLs within a certain path, or it can be all the URLs within a certain domain. And all of the data that you train it on via links will be accessible here. And or you can add frequently asked questions. So if you or one of your clients have, a, have questions that they are frequently asked, whether it's on the phone, in their DMs, on the website, etc., you can add them here. So the bot, the AI assistant is trained on this data. Ideally anything that's not immediately accessible on the websites that you train it on. And then with the configure intents, you can edit the prompt for the bot itself, as well as the prompt for the appointment booking. And if you do want your bot to book appointments for you, you can select the calendar that you want it to add the appointments to. Or if you don't want it to book the appointment itself, you can have it just send the booking link to the calendar. You have options. So now in email services, we will configure all of this later. But similar to the email settings within the agency view, this is where you set up the email system for the sub account in particular. Now, if you go to phone numbers, this is where we will set up the phone system for our sub account. It will have its own dedicated marketing number for sending out SMS messages, as well as making calls within the web app or the mobile app. And then you can also have it set to forward calls to a number. So if someone calls the marketing number, you can have it call your personal number or any number that you set. That way you can use your personal phone without giving out your personal phone number. It's a really cool feature. And then reputation management. Now the reputation management settings. So within the reputation management settings, here's where you'll turn on the reviews AI if you want that for you or your clients. And you can configure the auto responses. You can have it send to five stars, four stars are above, three stars are above, or just all of them. You can, you can customize it and you can set the time before responding to make it a little more human. And then for every response, you can add a footer that's at the end of every single response that the AI creates. And then once you connect your Facebook and your Google page, you will have the review links here, or you can set up a custom link. Then we have a workflow that we will cover later down the road that will utilize either email or SMS review requests. Now, personally, SMS is much more effective, but essentially this is where we customize the message whenever we send a review request to a customer. We will cover this down the road, but I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. And then here we can customize the review widget. And then custom fields. We have a whole module dedicated to this, but these are extremely powerful. So we will be using these as well as the custom values later down the road. Don't worry about these yet. So you can also manage scoring. So you can score your contacts based off of their engagement with all of your stuff. So if, they, if they're opening your emails, if they're booking appointments, or if they're doing surveys, or if they're paying you, like buying products and stuff, you can give them points and you can do stuff and you can see who is most engaged with your company, which is really cool. We will go into this later. Just know that this is a feature. Now domains, we will go into on the next module. So don't worry about this. Media, we've already covered. It's where you store all your images and your videos for your business. URL redirects, we touched on. And then we have integrations. We will be integrating a number of things, such as our Google account, our Facebook and Instagram account, our Stripe, our TikTok, our LinkedIn. And depending on your business, you may want Shopify, QuickBooks, and even Slack. So keep this in mind. For now, we're not gonna touch anything just yet. And if you have Facebook, TikTok, or in LinkedIn connected and integrated, you can modify the form fields if you know what those are. If you don't, don't worry about it just yet. That's for later on, as with a lot of stuff that we're touching on. Then we have conversation providers. Don't worry about this just yet. And we also have tags. These will be very important for a lot of automations we do and just organizing your customers and contacts. We will definitely be using these a lot. And then again, we have labs, which are all beta features. So if you want to use any beta features, feel free to check these out here. And similar to the agency view, you have the audit logs. You can see what's being done where and who did it. So people are updating contacts, 
people are creating new things, if people are modifying automations, you can see all that here. So if someone breaks something within your team, you know who to beat up. And then companies, you can create and associate companies with contacts. So like I mentioned before, if you're doing business, if you're working with a certain company and they have a bunch of contacts, you can associate those contacts within the company. So they're all organized. I know that was a ton of information to go over, but I just want to expose you to all this because everything that we just went over, you can use for your business. Or if you're an agency, you can use everything we just covered as a product or service to provide for other businesses. And again, that was a lot we just went through. So you need to feel some degree of overwhelm because you need to let that sit and marinate in your brain to digest it. But do not worry, we are going to cover every single thing in depth. So by the end of this course, you were equipped with everything you need to know to be an absolute conqueror when it comes to high level and online business. Because every single feature in here is going to set you apart incredibly far from every other business out there. It doesn't matter if it's just you in the business or if you have 100 employees. All of these features, all of these products, all of these services that you can use will help you create something 100% unique and extremely powerful. So lastly, let's quickly go over the Go High Level help and support because with how much stuff there is, you are going to have questions and that is good. So first off, if you run into any problems, make sure you watch this entire course. Don't be skipping around and skipping stuff. You will miss something. This course is packed with information. If you skip five minutes and we cover something in that five minutes, that five minutes is gonna cover a bunch of stuff that we're going to use down the road in later modules. And if you skip that, you're just going to miss a bunch of stuff that you need. So make sure you watch this entire course. I have spent a ton of time to make sure that I go in depth on everything. So you don't wanna miss anything. This is the most powerful course for Go High Level. I don't care what anyone says. We're going over everything. I'm giving you everything, so don't skip around. The next thing is Go High Level's 24 seven chat support. If for whatever reason you still can't find an answer, be sure to consult with Go High Level's 24 seven chat support. It's free, it's quick, and it's easy. And you also have access to Go High Level's support portal, which I will show you. Go High Level has a very large and helpful library of written guides, articles, and video tutorials. You can search for your problem and find a solution in a matter of seconds. There's also a Go High Level GPT that is trained on all of Go High Level's support library documents. It is an ideal companion for troubleshooting and coming up with ideas. And then the Go High Level Facebook group is also a very valuable resource. Because not only are the admins and developers very active every single day within this group, but you can also talk with fellow users and many of the core team members. I've had Sean Clark, the CEO of Go High Level, actually help me directly with something that I had a question with. The CEO of the company helped me with one of my issues. No, I don't know of any other company like that. So definitely join the Facebook group if you are serious. There's no question, there's no problem that can be answered and solved. And then lastly, as a review, make sure you use my link to sign up to Go High Level so you get the 30 day free trial instead of a 14 day free trial. I'm giving you this entire course absolutely free. So if you wanna get back, make sure you use my link. It's a win-win. Also, make sure you get to know the platform. Go through all of the settings again and familiarize yourself with everything. Watch this module again if you need to. Yes, that was a very long video. Again, it is jam-packed with everything for a reason. You need to feel overwhelmed, but don't let that discourage you. We're gonna cover everything you need to know in this course. So take some time, relax, reflect on everything we just went through, and then dive into the next module because that is when we actually start diving in. Things are getting exciting, so I hope you're excited. I will see you in the next one. Welcome back to the High Level Masterclass. I hope you're rested up, refreshed, and ready to get going again. Because in this module, we're going to cover getting the domain, white labeling the high level software, setting up the DNS records, and getting the Google Workspace set up. So let's jump right in. So what we're going to cover in this module is buying your domain, setting up your Google Workspace, connecting Go High Level to Cloudflare, and setting up your white labeled software. And just a warning, before we continue, make sure you have set up your 30 day free trial as well as upgrading to the SaaS plan. You need the agency pro plan to white label the software. It is very important if you wanna follow along to this tutorial. If you haven't activated your 30 day trial, 
do so now at tyrantempire.com slash trial. So now let's come up with your domain name. If you don't have a name idea for your business or your agency, now is the time to brainstorm. Ideally, you want something original and easy to remember. I'm gonna give you a few hacks on how you can do this because you can use AI, namely ChatGPT, or I would personally recommend the GoDaddy Arrow, which is an AI domain search. Now, I would recommend going with a .com or .ai top-level domains. .com, .ai, .io, and .co are really good TLDs, which are top-level domains. They show originality and professionalism. Don't get anything that's .org or .net or .xyz. Those just seem very inauthentic, kinda scammy, and .org and .net are very 2008. So personally, I would opt in for .com or .ai. .ai is huge right now, so I would highly recommend going with that. And you wanna avoid complex and unappealing domain names. Like this example here has a hyphen and it's .net. It just looks, it's just too much. Keep it simple, keep it original, and keep it professional. The shorter, the better. So I'm going to show you GoDaddy Arrow. We're not gonna buy the domain here but I just wanna show you how this is revolutionary for coming up with and finding original domain ideas. So you just go here at godaddy.com slash arrow, A-I-R-O, then you just tell it what you want. So we're going to do a business website focused on helping people make money with AI. Then it will let you know that it's looking. So here are a few ideas. You have AIcashflowmasters.com, AILearningAccelerator.com, or AIEarningsAccelerator.com, AI Earnings Engine, AI Earnings Hub, AI Income Genie, AI Money Pros, AI Profit Pathway. So you can just keep playing with this, and then you can modify the prompt down here. So we're going to do just making money with AI. See what kind of results we get for that. So you have AIRevenueBoost.com. I like that. Cashflow AI Pro. That just rolls off the tongue. AIBusinessWealth.org. Typically, again, I'd stay away from the .orgs, but if you really like it, go for it. Yeah, Cashflow AI Pro. If that's still available by the time you're watching this, I really like that. Cashflow AI Pro. That's not bad. So when you find one that you like, go to Namecheap.com. This is where we're actually going to buy the domain. AI Cashflow Pro. And here you can see that it's available and it's $10 a year. Dirt cheap. Whereas GoDaddy is one cent for the first year, but only for a three year term. Other than that, it's 22 bucks a year. So Namecheap is definitely cheaper. It lives up to its name. So once you find a domain that you like, go ahead and buy it. This is one of the few things you have to actually pay for in this course. I got moneysecrets.ai for $7. If you can't afford a $7 domain, if you can't afford a $10 domain, if you can't even afford a $3 domain, then you probably shouldn't be trying to start a business. So find a job first and then come back. Takes money to make money, and this is dirt cheap. All right, so now that you've found your domain and you've purchased your domain off of Namecheap, now it's time to set up your Google Workspace. This will be important for having a designated Google Drive, having access to the Google Docs, having access to the Google Meet, having a branded email address, as well as having a branded workspace and all of the bonuses that come along with that. So, and if you don't know what a branded email address is, so it's going to be whatever you want at your domain name. It's very professional and it's much better than at Gmail or, or at Yahoo. People will trust you and your brand a lot more if you have a designated branded email address. So let's navigate to workspace.google.com and create a workspace. And then we're going to add our domain to this workspace. So here we are at workspace.google.com and I'm just going to click get started. So business name, money, secrets moneysecrets.ai there we go and then just fill out this information here just like that and then we want a with your company.com address we don't want a gmail.com address then it's going to ask if we have a domain for our business and we should if you followed the previous step so yes i have one i can use then just put your domain in here moneysecrets.ai is mine so that looks good to me so now let's create our branded email. So my name is Ty, so I'm just gonna do Ty at moneysecretsai.com and just put the password, and then do the captcha, just like that. All right, and for some reason, it doesn't let you choose a different plan, but we get, we get this plan for free for 14 days. So just go ahead, add your information there, then we'll downgrade as soon as we get this done. All right, and if you did everything correctly, brought to this little welcome screen here. We're going to actually go to Cloudflare now, 
we're going to sign up and then we're going to use the free plan. And so now we're going to sign up using the email we have just created, which is Ty at moneysecrets.ai. Then we're going to sign up. I guess we can save that. And then we're going to enter our domain into Cloudflare. So, so we're going to do moneysecrets.ai and then continue. And then it's going to ask if we want to upgrade. I do not. So we're just going to go continue. So now it's going to populate all the existing DNS records. I'm just going to hit continue. Okay, so this is good. So now we just need to change our name servers. So if you scroll down, you will see your assigned Cloudflare name servers. We're going to take these and then put them into Namecheap. So let's make sure we copy these. So I'm going to copy this one here, and then we're going to go to Namecheap. Then I'm going to paste that one here. And then for name server two, just go back, copy this one, and then paste that one here. Then save it. And then it looks like it updated. And it says it can take up to 48 hours to take effect. Normally, it doesn't take anywhere near that long, usually about an hour. So if we go back into Cloudflare, you will see here that it will periodically check for name server updates. And this will take anywhere from 30 minutes to about 90 minutes. So in the meantime, we'll just continue and we will just wait. You can see that it is pending. You will see that it is pending here as well. So we will wait and we should get an email as soon as it's done. In the meantime, let's go back to the admin console in our Google workspace and let's protect our domain. So we just click that and then we just sign in to our Cloudflare. And then you'll see that we just need to authorize and then it's just going to verify. All right, so we have now successfully verified our domain through our Google workspace. That took about 30 minutes because I still had to wait for the name servers to update. And then it took about five minutes for this to process, but we're now ready to go. It prompted me then to sign into Ty at moneysecrets.ai. So it'll prompt you to sign into the domain, to the branded domain you just set up with your new email address. And then it gave me the option to continue in a different Google profile connected to that branded domain. So that is what I'm doing now. So I'm going to sign in Ty at moneysecrets.ai. All right. And then step two, create new users. I don't plan on having anyone else on this account as of right now. So I'm just going to continue. So then we're going to just move on to activating the Gmail for moneysecrets.ai. So we're going to activate. I'm ready to activate. Then we're just going to sign in to our Cloudflare. And for me, since this is a different Chrome profile, I'm going to have to sign in all over again. So we will do that. Log in. So now it is letting us know that it is going to change some of the DNS records. It's going to create a bunch of MX records, which we need for this to work. So we're just going to authorize this. And then to confirm it, we just type this in, then authorize. And then we're just going to wait for it to activate. All right. And that took about five minutes to do that. And then I'm not going to worry about adding any new users. I don't plan on adding anyone else to this workspace. However, if you have team members that you want to add to your workspace, you can add them by just clicking this button here. And the setup is super easy. You just fill in their first name, their last name, their username, which will double as their branded email address at your domain, and then also their secondary email if they have a personal one that they want to connect. And then you just add. Very simple. And now that we have all of that set up, let's go to billing and then subscriptions. And here we have our business plus subscription. So we're going to click on this and then go to upgrade or downgrade. And then I'm going to downgrade to the, to the business starter. It's $6 a month and has everything I need, which includes 30 gigabytes of pooled storage for all my users. So I'm just going to hit downgrade here and then next. Then it's just going to give me some confirmation details there and then just check out and then place order. And don't worry, we still get the two week free trial with this. So now that that's all done, let's move on. So again, to access your Google workspace, just go to admin.google.com and it'll bring you to the administrative console here. If you ever want to change anything regarding your Google workspace, you can change the company logo, you can add more users, you can change the billing, you can add more domains, you can change the alerts. There's a ton you can do here. We're not going to go into depth on everything, just the absolute necessities. If you're not familiar with the entire Google workspace, if you click these dots here, it'll bring up the little menu. So you can access your Gmail, the Google Drive, which is the cloud storage, the Google Docs, the Sheets, the Slides, the Calendar, the Chat, and Meet. These are what you're going to be using the most. So if we go into the Drive, this is the cloud storage for your entire business. 
And depending on if you've added more users or not, they will have access to this as well. So I recommend you use this for all of your documents, images, videos, and all that other stuff pertaining to your business. Just keep it organized. And it's nice because you can access all of this on your phone. You can access this on other other things such as a tablet or a laptop you can take it with you. So if you want to be mobile with your business and you want to stay organized, definitely utilize this. It's only $6 a month. We will be utilizing this in future modules. Let's navigate back to our high level software and I'm in the agency view. If you don't know how to get to your agency view from a sub account, just click this drop down menu here and then you can click switch to agency view and this will bring you to the agency view. So if we go into the settings, I'm actually going to change this. I'm going to update that real quick. And then I'm also going to change the email that I have associated with the agency account, which is ty at moneysecrets.ai. So I recommend you do that now, just so you don't forget later on. So I'm going to switch that to English and then just update. And then we just have to re-verify our email address. If we go to the Gmail that we used to sign up initially with the account, we are going to get the one-time pin here. Now again, this is not going to be sent to the email that we had just created. This is going to be sent to the one that we used to sign up with high level. So we're just going to go here and then just paste that in and then it's going to update. So now for, for the future, everything will be sent to what we had just updated, which is the one we created. Go into the settings there and we're also going to change the business email for now. Now that we've done that, let's navigate to the team tab. And what we're going to do is we have our, we have our profile here. What we need to do is add our profile to the sub account that's connected to our agency. So we're just going to go money secrets and then save. Now that that is done, let's go into the sub account for our business or agency then go down to settings and then go down to my profile. Let's make sure all of this is correct. So now that everything looks good, it is time to add our domain to high level. So go down here again, make sure you're in the sub account view. Go to the settings and then go down to domains. Click in there and add domain. And then we're just going to add the domain that we now own. So for me, it's moneysecrets.ai. Then it'll automatically populate. I also want to add www.moneysecrets.ai. So we're just going to keep that checked because we do want that. And then we're going to continue. And it's super simple to set everything up. It's just going to automatically recognize that our domain provider is Cloudflare. That's correct. So let's authorize the domain. It's going to ask if we want to authorize these DNS records from Lead Connector, which is high levels wizard, let's call it. So these look good. So let's authorize. And then that's just going to take a few seconds. And then once that's done, you will get a confirmation that looks like this. Now we don't have a website or a funnel yet, so we can't really link it to anything, which is fine. So we'll just hit cancel. And now we have our two domains linked to our high level account. This is good. All right, now we are ready to white label our Go High Level software. So within the domain settings, in the agency view, go to add an app C name and, an, and a link C name. It's going to look like this, app.yourdomain.com and link.yourdomain.com. I will show you how to do that in just a sec. Now, after we have created those DNS records, we add the app domain to the white label domain field within your company settings. Then we add the link domain to the API domain field within your company settings. And then we're going to confirm that everything works by logging into our app via domain we have just set. So let's do that real quick. So let's navigate to the agency view and then go into settings, and then company, and then we're gonna go down here. So the white label domain is going to be app.moneysecrets Dot AI. And then we're just going to add this domain. Then the wizard is going to pop up again and we just hit continue. And then it's going to do its magical business. And then it's going to confirm that our domain provider is Cloudflare, which it is. So we're going to authorize. And then it's going to automatically create those DNS records for us, which is a CNAME type. It's going to be app. And then the content is going to be white .ludicrous cloud. So we're going to authorize this. It's going to take a few seconds. Cool. Now, once that's done, it'll just populate right here. So now with the API domain, if you can remember, is link dot your domain. So from in my case, it'll be money secrets dot AI. And then the same thing, it's just add domain, continue. And then the wizard's going to work its magic. And of course, we are going to authorize this and wait a few seconds. Sweet. Now that those are populated, let's go ahead and update. All right. 
Now you'll know that it's done correctly when you can't click on it. Took me a couple tries to get this one to work, but I got it to work. Took like three tries for some reason, but we are all good to go now. So let's continue. So now let's test our software. Let's go to a new tab and then let's type in that domain app.moneysecrets.ai. Obviously you'd type in your domain, but you want to use the subdomain app. So let's go ahead and click and it looks like it's working. And so now we need to sign in. So I'm going to do Ty at moneysecrets.ai and then the password, and then sign in. I'm going to save that. And then it's going to ask to verify our security code. It's going to have us verify. So we're just going to send the security code to my email, pull that up. And then we have the security code here, 238286, 238286, and then confirm. And just like that, we have our own software, but we still have the Go High Level logo here. So let's change that real quick. If you don't have your logo yet, do not worry. We have a module dedicated to the many ways where you can create your own logo. If you do have a logo, just go into the agency view, settings, company, and then just upload the company logo here. All right, and just like that, we have our own branded high level software, but this logo looks terrible. It's way too small. So I will show you how to fix that because you're most likely experiencing it too. So how we're going to fix this issue is by using custom CSS, which stands for Cascade Style Scripts. You don't, that's not very important to know, but now you know. So I actually have some CSS that we can use here. I will, I will link this below. So if you just paste this code here, then you update right here and then just refresh, you'll see that it is much bigger and looks much better. I also changed it to light mode because it just makes it look a little bit cleaner for my logo, but you can do whatever you want. We also have a module to completely customize your software. I mean, down to the very last detail. So if you're worried about your software looking like a bunch of others, do not worry because we have a module for that. I just signed out again, just so we can see the logo in action and it looks much better. So if we sign in, redo the security stuff and there she goes, she looks absolutely beautiful. If you're still following along, congratulations. You now have your very own software. So let's conclude this video with our review. So we covered a ton in this video and to review, you now have your own software. You also have your own professional email and branded workspace and a domain. So pat yourself on the back, feel good because you are ahead of so many business owners out there because very few people, very few businesses out there have everything that we just covered in just this one module. So I'm serious. Feel good about this. Now, before you continue, make sure you have everything connected and everything is working before you move on to the next module. Make sure that your Google workspace is set up. Make sure you have access to your branded email. Make sure that the white label domain works and that you can sign into your application. And then once you have all that done, keep the momentum going. Don't get complacent. There is still so much to learn. We haven't even started as far as I'm concerned. We have just set the foundation. Now it's time to build. And again, I hope you guys are feeling good about this. We have so much to cover. So keep the momentum going. The faster you can get through this course, the faster you can start getting some money in. The faster you can start getting your business out there. We have 14 days on the Google Workspace trial and 30 days on the Go High Level trial. We have plenty of time to get everything done. But the quicker you do it, the more time you have for the fun stuff. So I will see you guys in the next module. Welcome back everybody. I hope you're all feeling really good. I hope you're all excited because now we're starting to get into it. In this module, we're going to cover the funnels, the websites. We're going to create a logo really quick if you don't have one. And then we're also going to make sure that you have the snapshot downloaded, which is going to contain everything from, from the funnels, the automations, the custom fields and custom values, and a few other fun things. So, Without further ado, let's jump right in. For this module, we aren't going to perfect and finalize your website and funnel just yet. And when I mean perfect, I mean we're not going to really revise the copy. We're not going to add all the images. We will get to that later. For now, we're just going to navigate the website and funnel templates and the builder, as well as go through the snapshot. So download the snapshot to get access to my business content. It's like I said, we're going to get all the funnels, the automations, the custom values, and more. That's at tyrantempire.com slash core 
dash snapshot. And I will show you exactly how to download that because I need to download it for my high level account. And then we're going to go over domains, slugs and SEO, because we want to make sure that we connect the domains to the designated web pages and funnels, as well as add the correct slugs to the URLs and the correct SEO metadata for each page. Then, like I said, we're also going to focus on getting a logo created and or added to our website slash funnel if you already have one. I will provide some resources for you to create or get one created. We do have a module dedicated completely for logo creation, which I will cover in just a moment. And just a warning, do not spend too much time or energy on creating the logo. It's easy to overthink and waste time on it. Simple equals best, plain and simple. So before we continue, let me show you how to download the snapshot. So we just navigate to the browser here, and then we're just going to do tyrantempire.com slash core dash snapshot. Then we just hit enter. And now it's going to ask us if we want to import the snapshot to this account. Obviously we do. So we're going to hit yes, import now. Then it's going to take a couple seconds and import. And just like that, it has successfully imported. Cool. And you'll know that it imported correctly. If you go to the account snapshots, go to imported snapshots, and you should see the GHL mastery core snapshot. So this is good. So now how the heck do we get this snapshot into our sub account? Well, go to sub accounts, and then go to the sub account we want to import. I only have one account as should you at this point, I'm assuming just click these three dots in the corner, and then go to manage client. So now this menu will give us a lot of options in terms of managing this sub account. If we want to add on any other stuff, if we want to mess with the rebilling or the reselling, the apps, the advanced settings, all of that is in here. But for now, we're just going to go to this little actions button, hit the drop down menu there, and then load snapshot. And so now we just pick a snapshot that we want. And all these vertical ones, these are all the these are all that are included with a go high level agency account. So we're not going to mess with any of these. Go to the imported one, because this is the one we imported and click it. And it is the GHL mastery core snapshot. And then we're going to proceed. So now it's going to ask us what all we want to import from this snapshot. Now everything should be good to go. This entire snapshot is what I use to run my agency. So we do want all of these things. So just make sure it's all selected and then just go to proceed. And it'll it'll tell us that there's some conflicts. Usually it's no biggie. Usually it's 100% fine. So just go ahead and proceed. And then it's copying the data and it will let us know when everything is done, which it's done. That was quick. All right. So let's just navigate to our sub account. All right. So now that the snapshot is all loaded and ready to go, let's go back to our agenda. All right, before we start diving into the snapshot, we need to create a logo if you don't already have one. If you do have a logo and you've already successfully imported it into your Go High Level software, you can disregard this and skip ahead just to save you some time. If you don't have a logo, let's get one created. Now, if you want the full comprehensive tutorial on the different methods of creating a logo, feel free to skip to bonus module one, which is the logo and brand guide. That will go over the many different ways how you can create a logo, whether it's free or paid, depending on how, how much you want to invest in your logo. But in this module, I'm going to show you how to quickly create a text style logo using Canva. This is exactly what I've done for Money Secrets. It's very basic, very easy, and it's free. And like I said before, simple equals best. So let's jump into that. So let's go to canva.com. And then I don't have a I don't have an account created on this, so I'm just going to create one with my Google profile. And then you can, we can just do small business, and then it's just gonna ask us some stuff. I'm just gonna skip it because this is not very relevant to me. Let's skip that, skip that. All right, now there are some things we must know before we dive in, and that is the dimensions for the logo we have to make sure that it will be compatible for our software. So let's go back to the agency view, go to settings, and then company. So if you need a logo like this, 
the proposed size is 350 by 180 and then no bigger than two and a half megabytes. Easy. So let's go back and then let's go to create a design. Down here, there's a custom size button. We'll use that. And then we're gonna do 350 by 180. And then just click create new design. Now this canvas is 350 pixels by 180 pixels, which is perfect. So you can do a number of things. You can get all crazy with it. I prefer to be simple, as I mentioned like five times. Simple equals best. If you want a crazy logo, watch the logo and brand guide module. But in this, we're gonna be very simple. So if you go to this text tab, you can add a bunch of different fonts. There's a lot of fancy text here. So you can go through this, see which one fits the vibe that you want for your agency. I really like, where is it? This Brimston Co. So I am going to use this. I'm going to scale it up so it fits. And then this is a group text. So it's, it's all grouped together. So I'm just gonna select it, ungroup it. And then let's do money like that. And then let's do secrets let's make sure that everything is everything fits this is a little too big so let's scale this down like this let's do 33 if you know me you know i like my threes my sixes and my nines just like this boom i'm just getting all the pieces together and then we'll worry about getting it all fitted together. So we're going to copy this one like this. And then we'll do dot AI like that. And then let's just make sure we get it all fitted. So it looks nice in uniform. Just like this then get it centered. like that. Once we have the layout and the text all hammered in, all dialed in, then we can go up here to the, the font and we can actually change the font. So no, that's terrible. So you can just go through this and then obviously some fonts will be bigger than the others. So we'll have to readjust the size and whatnot, but that's easy. All right. I do really like this font. So we'll just kind of scale that down a little bit more like so, and then just scale it up just so it fits like that. And then we will make sure that this goes in there, move this over a little bit, move that back over a little bit so it fits. Scale her up. Then that looks pretty decent. Now, depending on the color scheme that you want, for this brand, for Money Secrets, I like, I think of black and gold. Or or just gold, like some sort of gold. So, I'm going to go here, go to this little text color, click this, and then just find a nice gold color. It's more bronzy. So something like this, something that just tells you exactly what it is, is very effective. So I, I like this. So I'm going to export it. Now, now here's the thing. This background can be an issue. There are a couple ways you can fix it. First and foremost, you can just remove it by downloading it and then going tr with a transparent background. But you do need Canva Pro to be able to do that. And if it's a new account, you can have a 30 day free trial. So that's an easy way around that. Or if you are like me, I just exported it with a white background and then just changed the theme to light. So the white is completely blended in. It's a very lazy way to do it. If you do do it this way, you have to make sure that your website background is also white. It's more of a pain in the ass down the road. So I would recommend you just do the trial, export just the text so it's just a PNG with a transparent background. So you do not have to worry about that. So for me, I'm just going to do it as is. I already have my logo right there. It looks fine. So for now, I'm going to keep it. If you're satisfied with your logo, like I said, just go to share, 
and then download here and then just click the download button and once you have your logo just go to the agency view go to settings go to company and then upload your logo here if your logo is too small make sure you use the custom css right here that i've also attached down below that you can use and you can also adjust these values here if you want it a little bigger or smaller and once you have all that uploaded just hit update company if you don't see any immediate change to the logo size just refresh the page all right now that we have the logo all out of the way and done let's jump into websites versus funnels all of you should know what a website is but do you know what a funnel is i'm sure you've heard that term thrown around all over the place but what is a funnel well let's look at what a website is first because a website has generalized information it acts as a brochure for the brand or business. The content on the website isn't targeted. It's not targeted towards a particular niche, more or less, generally speaking. There is lots of information on the website. Again, it acts as a brochure. It's to inform the traffic. It aims to educate about the brand. Websites generally take a while to create. If you have a lot of information on the website, it takes a while to put all that information on the website. And not only that, but it houses all your content. If you have a website, you have a ton of images, you have videos, you have all the content there that, again, is aimed to educate the traffic. And because of this, you ideally only want one website. You don't want just a ton of websites generally. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but it doesn't really make sense to have a bunch of websites. You can have a bunch of pages on the website, but there's not really any reason to have multiple websites for one brand or business. Now, a funnel, what makes a funnel different from a website? Well, a funnel has specific information. It's very targeted. It's designed for a call to action. A website has generalized information for any kind of traffic. A funnel has specific information designed for one kind of traffic, one demographic, one market. A website acts as a brochure where a funnel is designed for someone to take a particular action. It's designed for the call to action. A website is not targeted, whereas a funnel is very targeted. Like I said, it's designed for a person to take a specific action. It has very limited information. You don't want people going to a funnel and then getting distracted by all the shiny objects on there, whether it's a video, images, all this other stuff that can draw their attention away from taking that action from taking the call to action. A website aims to educate about the brand, whereas a funnel aims to capture leads. If someone goes to a funnel, they're incentivized to take that call to action and become a lead. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like. A website takes a while to create, whereas a funnel can be created rather quickly because you're not having all this information on there. It's straight, cut and dry, straight to the point. Here's some information to draw the traffic in, again, the very targeted traffic, take this action, become a lead. That's what a funnel is designed for. They can be created very quickly because there's limited or no content on the website. I'll show you a few examples. And because of this, you can have dozens of different funnels. With a website, you generally only want one website because it has all the information you need on the website. It's a digital brochure, a funnel is designed for a particular offer, for a particular niche, for a particular market to take a specific call to action to become a lead. So if you have a ton of different offers, you can have a ton of different funnels. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, it will very soon. So make sure you have the snapshot downloaded. So now let's jump into the website and funnel creator. So we're going to need to go into the sub account, obviously, and now we go down to sites. And so here you will see that we now have some folders in the funnels tab. In the core snapshot, I've included three funnels. We have the affiliate funnels, the booking funnels, and the software as a service funnels. For this module, we're going to focus on the booking funnels. So if we click into that, you will see that there's one funnel called book a call. You will see when it was, when it was downloaded, and then you'll also see that it has five steps in this funnel. So let's click into this. So here is the funnel overview. You can see the funnel steps. You can see a little preview of the funnel. And then you can also create variations of the funnel to A-B split test. It's a very powerful feature. We'll get into that later. 
Now you'll also see that there that we're in the overview tab, but you can also go over to the products tab. We're not going to go into that in this module, but this is where you add products to the funnel. And then you can also go to the publishing where this is where you edit the slug, which we'll cover in just a second. If you go back to overview, we can just kind of go through all the different steps. There's the booking opt-in, there's the schedule call, there's the call confirmation, and then we have the terms and privacy. So those are all the funnel steps that we have. Now you can also go to the stats. So you can go to the stats and then you can see all of the information pertaining to the funnel. It will give you an overview of all the data for each stage of the funnel. So it'll give you all the page views. Then you can also see all the unique, all the unique viewers. You can see all the opt-ins, the opt-in rate. And then once you add products, you can see the orders, the order rate, the quantity, the amount, the average cart value, all this information, as well as the earnings. And then also in the sales tab, you can see all the sales that you've acquired through this funnel. Then you can have security aspects to it. And then you also have the settings. So we'll add a domain in a minute. I want to give you an overview of everything in the website and funnel builder, but we're actually going to create a new funnel. So just go up here, new funnel, and let's go to from template just so we can browse some of the templates because if you don't want to make your own high level makes it extremely easy to pick a template as a guideline and then you can just add your information onto it which is very effective so you can see all the funnels here and then you can also choose from a category so depending on your niche you can use a template that's based on that niche, or it doesn't really matter because you can change the copy, you, you can change the whole entire theme of the funnel, media and all, to make it tailored to your business. You can use an auto body and painting funnel, even though your business is not related to auto body and painting because you can change everything about it. So if you wanna browse the funnel, if you wanna inspect it, just click that little icon there and then it'll open it up. So now you can just kinda of see the layout and the important thing you want to pay attention to is the layout of the funnel. Because like I said, you can change everything about it. You can change the copy, you can change the background image, you can change the colors, but the layout is something that you want to keep in mind. So this layout's not bad. You can have your logo here. You have some copy, you have the hook, you have the call to action right there. And then you also have a bit more information with another call to action and a bit more information. So depending on how you want to go about this, you can have testimonials here and whatnot. So feel free, if you don't want to create your own or use any of the ones included, feel free to choose from here. There are thousands of different funnels. So definitely have fun with it. But for this tutorial, I'm going to create one from scratch and we are going to create a booking funnel so people can book a call. It's going to be very simple and very effective. So let's go book a call, whoa, book a call call and then create. All right. And for this funnel, we're going to have a few steps. So the first step, we want an opt-in page. We want them to be able to opt in via a form. We want them to opt in as a call to action. So for the path, let's just do opt in. And then what's really cool is if you use click funnels, you can import the funnel directly from a click funnels 1.0 funnel, a very cool feature, but we're just gonna create it from scratch. So create funnel step, then we're just going to create from blank. All right, so this is the funnel builder, completely blank. It's a blank canvas. So the funnel that we're going to create is modeled after Max Persson's SMMA funnel. It's highly effective, very simple, but as funnels should be. So first off, this background is way too bright. So I'm just gonna make it black, nice and clean. And then we're going to add an element if you click this little plus button here, you can add elements. So you have sections, you have rows, you have elements, you have global sections, and then you have section templates. So for sections, we're just going to add a full width section here. And then this is where we are going to create the header. So we're just going to have something simple like a logo. So we just need one column. And then we're going to add an element. And this is going to be an image. Now for the image, we're gonna jump the gun a little bit, but we're going to use what is called a custom value. Now, do not freak out. We're gonna cover this in not the next module, but the one after. I'm foreshadowing here, so don't freak out. This is a custom value. Location.logo underscore URL, and then two brackets. 
This is going to be the location of our logo. And I will explain to you why we're using this in two modules. Don't freak out. So pretend our logo is here. It's saying broken image because we don't have a logo or an image attached to this custom value, but don't worry. So we're going to add another element a section that's also full width, and we're going to put that below this. So now we're going to add an element on top of that. It's going to be a row, just one column. I'm going to put that in the section that we just created. Now in this section, I'm going to add an element, and this is going to be the headline insert. So where the heck is the text? Well, since we use the black background, the text by default is black. So we have to go to typography, change the text color to white first and foremost. And then we also can mess with the fonts. Monster is typically what I use. So we'll just keep that. And then for the content, we'll also go monster it. Cool. So now we can read it. And then I'm going to add a sub headline on top of this, just like that. And then we're going to add a sub headline below this, just like that. So we'll go further into copywriting later on, but for this, let's just keep it simple and go with attention business owners to grab their attention. And remember with funnels, you want to be very targeted. I'm going to go typical agencies don't work anymore. Now this is terrible copy. It's nothing special. I'm just pulling it out of the air just for the sake of this example. What I'm intending to show you is just how the website and funnel builder works because all the funnels are already included for you in the snapshot, but it's important for you to see how all of this kind of ties together. I don't feel like it'd be very informative for me to just include everything and not show you how to build it because this is a masterclass. I got to show you everything. So just something simple and dumb like this will serve us well for this example. A nice little attention grabbing headline, but there's a problem. This spacing is absolutely terrible. So what I'm going to do is just click here, make sure I select the sub headline and then scroll down and make the padding a bit larger. So you can click here, you can add, it's much easier to just select a number like 40, I think 20 will do as well. Yeah, 20 is good. And then we'll click on this and then we'll go 20, we'll leave this at zero and then we'll click and then we'll select this subheadline, and then we'll go 20 on this as well. So when we select out of it, it looks much better. It has more breathing room. So the next thing we're going to do is add a call to action. And for this, we need a button. So we're going to open this menu up, make sure we're in elements. And then for the form, go to button. And we're just going to slap that bad boy in right there. And we're going to play with the padding again, just to make sure that we have some breathing room. That is ridiculous. And so for this, we're going to mess with the margin. We want to modify outside of the element, which is the button. We don't want to make the button bigger. So we're going to click this and that, and that looks decent. Again, this is just a rough example. And then for the text, we'll just go book a call just like that and then with the button as well you can go into themes and just kind of mess with the actual aesthetic of the button if you want like a rounded button you can do that so we'll go with that that doesn't look too bad but you can also change the color so i like i do like this blue but we'll go yeah we'll just keep this blue that looks good and we also want this to stand out a little bit more so let's make this text font a little larger so if we just select this, go to font size, you can input the number for the pixel size of the font that you want, or you can just use the up and down keys to make it bigger. So I want it to fit that little box there, just like that. So I want this, I want this word don't to stand out and everything is bold right now. So I'm going to actually make this not bold and then keep this selected. So I'm gonna make this not bold and then we can change the color here. So I'm gonna make this blue to match the button. And what's cool is you can change the color for everything. So you can change the color for the bold text. If you want that to be red for whatever reason, I do not. Or you can change the italic, the underline text, the link text, and the icons. But this looks good to me. But let's also increase the size of this. Let's go to about 20, 
Let's go to 30 for this and that. So very simple. I still feel like this is too close. So let's change this to 40. So we'll add another section. It's also full width. And we'll just put a spacer here. And then we will add one more section, also full width right here for the footer. So for here, let's do one column, add element. We'll do a divider. And for the color, I don't want there to be anything. So we'll just do transparent because normally it's a line, it's black, so you can't see it anyways. But if I do end up changing the background color, I don't wanna have to worry about that. So we have a divider just so there's some space. And then for this footer, going to add a, we're going to add a row, just one column, then add an element. This is going to be a paragraph. So we want this to be centered, which it is. We're going to do privacy policy space, do one of these separating brackets and then terms just like that. So what we can do is turn these into links by just attaching the URL for our privacy policy and our terms and conditions. But I'm not going to worry about that because it's already built for you. Then also we can do copyright 2024 and we can have another custom value. Do not freak out. We'll cover this, but this is going to be account website, just like that. Then put a period and then just do something like all rights reserved and boom. I actually don't like this button and this button is not wide enough for me. So let's do about 40 on each side. It's like that and then make it a little a little slimmer, just like that. Boom, cool. So this is a very simple but very effective funnel. You have the call out, like, hey, business owners, it's niched, it's very targeted. You have, you're addressing a problem. Typical agencies don't work anymore. Opens up a little bit of a curiosity loop, like, oh, agencies don't work anymore, why? This copy is kind of terrible, but it's addressing somewhat of a solution to the problem, more or less. And then you have the call to action there. So call out, problem, solution, call to action. We'll go into this in depth in future modules. Don't worry about it too much. It's all created for you. But then with the call to action, what do we want this button to do? So we want it to open up a form for them to give us their information. So the button by default will always open a pop-up, which is what we want. So if we go here to this button, this is the pop-up settings. So if we click this, it'll open a pop-up to then which we can modify. We're going to do just one column for this as well, and then add an element. And then we're going to add a form. And we have a few forms to pick from that are included in the snapshot. So we'll go with the opt-in form. And you can't see anything, so we, we're going to click the pop-up settings here, go to background color, and then just make this visible, just like that. And now we have a pop-up. So we have a call to action, that opens the pop-up with a form that captures the prospect's information. And then this will turn them into a lead. It will create a contact in our CRM to then which we can do whatever we want. But for this funnel, we want to book a call. So within this, within this form, we have some, some actions. So when they submit this form by pushing this button, what do we want this action to do? And it's going to, by default, within this form, use the action from the form. What does that mean? Well, when we create this form, we have it set to go to the next step in the funnel. So as soon as they input their information, it's going to go to the next step, which we don't have a next step yet, but in the funnel that you are provided within the snapshot, it will link to the calendar to then which they can book the call. And we're going to cover the calendar in the next module. So this looks good to me. Everything is in place. So we're going to save it. And then it's going to automatically bring up the SEO metadata. This is where we modify the metadata for the SEO. So what the heck does that mean? Let me show you. So when you Google something, I've just Googled Facebook for an example. So this is all the metadata. You have the favicon, you have the title, and then you have the description. This is the description. You have the title, then you have the description. So we have the preview here. So what do we want the title to say when it shows up in the search or if it shows up in the tab, because it will also show up there. So let's do money secrets. We'll just do something like book a call. Very simple. And then typical agencies don't work anymore. Something dumb like we do. Very dumb, very cheesy, very corny. 
perfect for an example. Now keywords, keywords help the search engine realize what your website has to offer the person who's searching, but you can do stuff like agency or whatever kind of niche your business is in agency or lawn mowing, do Salt Lake City, Utah, something along the lines of that. The keywords will help you rank in search queries that contain these keywords. So I just put in agency, lawn mowing, Salt Lake City, Utah, just very stupid keywords because this just depends on what your business focuses on or where it's located. We're not going to dive too deep into SEO in this module. So I'm just going to keep it stupid and basic. Then author, you can do your name or your business name. So we can do money secrets, then social image. The social image is what will populate with the SEO. You know, when you share a link on Facebook or like in a comment or something, and then it pops up with a preview like this, and then there's usually an image attached to it. That's what this is going to be. So whenever someone shares your link or this shows up somewhere on the internet, this image will be attached to it. So you want it to be something that's relevant to the website. So a logo is perfect. So I'm going to use the custom value that is going to have the logo attached to it in the coming modules. If it doesn't make sense now, it will trust me. And then lastly, links and tags. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about meta tags. Google no longer uses tags to help your website rank. So they're borderline useless as far as I'm concerned. So I don't really mess with these. I don't worry about meta tags, but it wouldn't hurt to just include them. And you can use chat GPT to help you create them. And then lastly, we're just going to cover all the things that we didn't utilize in this. You have the layers tab, which is just an overview of the entire website. So we have the page and then we have the designated sections within it. Then we have the section and then everything within that section, which is the row and then everything within that row, which is the column and then everything in that column, which is the image. And that goes for each section. So it's a nice overview of the entire structure of your funnel slash website. And you also have your pop up and everything within that. So very simple. If you need to navigate, it's kind of a handy thing to use. And then you have the pages. If you have multiple steps in your funnel or your website, you can navigate through them here, or you can also navigate them through here as well. Then you also have tracking code. We're not going to get into this, but this is good for Google Analytics as well as Facebook pixels. Then you also have custom CSS. We touched on this a little bit before with adjusting our logo size within our software. But if you want to modify anything within this page, you can use custom CSS to do so. Later on, I'll show you how to create cool animated gradients and, and some other fancy stuff using this feature, but not just yet. Typography we covered. You can change the global format of the headline font, the content font and all the colors. So you don't have to go in individually and change every single thing. It's very handy. Then you have the background. You can use a background image or just the background color. As I have demonstrated, you have the pop up settings. We covered SEO metadata also covered. If you have any custom code, you can preview it by toggling this on, which we do not. Then you also have a cookie consent banner, which you can also enable. And then this will toggle the two column mode on or off. And I already covered this. This will open the little pages tab there. If you have multiple pages for your website, or if you have multiple steps in your funnel, you can navigate through them right there. Very handy. And then this will allow you to toggle between mobile view for a phone to make sure that your website is responsive on multiple different device sizes. It's very important. Then you can just toggle back to desktop mode just like that. And then you have different versions. So if you change your funnel, and you end up not liking it, you can go back to a previous version from which you've saved before, which is a very good feature. So keep that in mind. If you mess with your website and end up despising it and you've already saved it, you can roll back to a previous version. Then you have the save button here, which we're going to save this. And then you also have the view button here, which will open the website as if we are a visitor coming to see it. So we'll know how it looks to someone who visits our page. It's a great way to test. So you can see that we click on the call to action. And then we have the form and we can see that everything works. All right. And that is the basic overview of our funnel builder.
So that was to give you a complete overview of everything within the website and funnel builder, because depending on your business, you may want a different website from what is provided in the snapshot. So not only can you use templates to do so, to use and to make your own essentially, but now you have been walked through the entire process of building your funnel or building your website. You are now equipped with the knowledge to build whatever you want. But there's a problem. We do not have a domain attached to our website. So let's fix that. So let's go over domains, slugs, and SEO. So domains, you should already know, but they are a series of words or numbers used instead of IP addresses because IP addresses are too complicated to remember. If you don't know, an IP address is a series of numbers. It's like 19.26.45.64.85. An IP address is given to any unique address on the internet. So instead of remembering the IP address, we use domains. Because when you type a domain into the URL bar, a request is sent to the DNS provider, such as Cloudflare. And then the provider responds with an IP address and grants the user access to the website. This isn't very important to know. This is the technicalities of it. But I feel like some of you might find that interesting because I did. And so domains are typically composed of three parts. You have the top level domain, which we've covered before, .com, .org, .io, .ai, .net, etc. Then you have the second level domain. This is the name of the actual website, such as Google, Amazon, Money Secrets, or Tyrant Empire. Then you have the subdomain. This is the prefix to your website, whether it's www. blog. store. app. They can have different designs or interfaces and are used to organize content for different functions, such as a blog or store. So this way, it's almost like creating a separate website in a sense, because you can have different designs for a store or a blog as opposed to just the regular website. Now, this is important because if you have your main website and you want to create a funnel that's separate, you can use that by using a subdomain, similar to how we have the app dot your domain name app dot money secrets and then we're going to have a website that's just money secrets ai and then if i want a series of funnels i can do book dot money secrets ai or store dot money secrets ai so i can use different subdomains and each subdomain will be a different website essentially you can design them completely different from the website itself i hope that makes sense now slugs or a URL slug is a descriptive text that appears at the end of a URL after the top level domain. So after .com. So example, www.tyrantempire.com slash this is the slug. The slash this is the slug is the slug. Slugs are used to identify a web page on the domain and help users and search engines to understand the content of the page. That's pretty self-explanatory. Because when we downloaded the snapshot, it was www.tyrantempire.com slash the slug and the slug was core snapshot it's telling you what that page consists of what is in that domain and it also helps search engines so when you have a website when you have multiple pages when someone clicks onto a page it'll change that slug to let the user know and to let the browser know where they are in that website it's relatively simple so now seo we touched on this a little bit but seo stands for search engine optimization it is the process of improving a website's position in search engine results pages. And as I mentioned, this isn't an SEO course, so we're not going to go too in depth about SEO. However, we will be optimizing the metadata, the metadata for our website within the website and funnel builder, as I have shown you. Do not be worried if you don't understand yet. We have covered an absolute ton and we're just getting started. So now that we have our website, Again, do not worry about the copy. Don't worry about actually getting it finalized. We're not worried about that just yet. The last step in this module is to just get the domain connected to the website. So whether you're going to be using the funnels that are provided, or if you're going to use a website template or even a funnel template, let's connect the domain to it. To set the domain, we need to go to settings and then domains. Then go to the domain you want to set. Click these three dots go to edit, and then it's going to ask what the default page to this domain is. So you'll see all of the pages and all of the steps of the funnels, which can be a bit overwhelming. So try and keep them as organized as possible, especially if you import a template, because when you import a website template, it's going to have all the pages associated with it. So for this, I'm going to do the book a call slash booking opt-in. 
I'm also going to set the 404 page to this as well. And then we're going to save that. So now that we have our domain connected to our funnel or website, let's make sure that we have all the slugs correct within our funnel or website. So you can see the slug in the URL here. So for the booking opt-in page, it's moneysecrets.ai slash opt-in. For the schedule call, it's moneysecrets.ai slash schedule. For the call confirmation, moneysecrets.ai slash confirmation. For the terms, moneysecrets.ai slash terms. And privacy, moneysecrets.ai slash privacy. If you are using this funnel, just follow this convention. Just follow this naming structure here for the slugs. And then to change it, just go over to the publishing tab and then just change the step URL there. If you're using a website, just make sure that the step URL matches up with the content within that website. So if you have an about page on your website, make sure the slug is about. If it's a contact us page, make sure that it's something simple like contact or contact dash us. Or if it's a page about your services, make sure that it's slash services. Don't overcomplicate things. Just keep it simple. The templates will also come with slugs dedicated to the page content to keep it simple for you. Now let's see if everything is working correctly. So open a new tab, then just type in your domain and boom, there we go. Everything is working. So now we are going to create a website and I'm going to create a website using a template this time. So instead of starting from blank, we're going to start from a template and I want something relatively simple. I don't want anything crazy. So something like this template will be perfect for what I'm going for, for my website, probably a little too complex. So I'm going to delete a lot of these elements, but this layout will be perfect. So I'm just going to hit continue and then it's going to create a website based off of this template. So as I mentioned in this module, we're not going to worry about the copy or the images or any, anything of that sort just yet. We're just going to connect it to our domain and then make sure all the slugs and metadata are correct. So for the logo, I'm just going to change it again to the location dot logo underscore URL, the custom value. But other than that, let's update the metadata for everything. As I have shown you previously, change the title, the description within the content, add some keywords that are relevant to your business, your services, your products, everything. Add an author, add the social image, keep it under 300 links and make sure the language matches up with the language that you use in your website. And make sure you do this with all of the pages that you will be using and make sure to delete any pages that you're not. You want to keep it simple and clean. If you have a bunch of pages all over, it gets really messy really quick. And also renaming the pages is important because this template looks like it has been cloned hundreds of times. Home clone, 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 clone. It's a lot of clones, so I'm going to change that when we do the slugs. So again, do this for all the pages, and then we will worry about the copy and everything within the website once we get everything finalized. So now that that is all done, let's add our domain to this website. So let's go to settings, go down to domains, and then go to our root domain, which is the one we bought, then go to edit, and then go to the home page of the template or the funnel that we are using for our home page. Should look something like this. We're also going to set the 404 error page to our home page as well, just in case. So now let's test it out. Let's go to moneysecrets.ai and there we go. It works. So essentially what we are doing is we're telling Cloudflare and Go High Level when someone types in this domain, what do we want to show them? So we're telling them to show them this page, which is the home page of the template we used. And don't worry, we are going to change the names of everything right now. Go ahead and save it and then test it out. All right, so now let's modify the names of the pages and the slugs. So go back to sites. And then if you use the template, it'll just use the name of that template. So this one is called investment advisor. So we are going to change that because that is not what I want it to be called. So we're going to do money secrets. AI website. Simple. All right. Everything looks good. Let's add the fab icon real quick. So we just save it and then go to media, open the media library, upload file, then just select your logo. Now we right click on it, get the link, go back, go back to the sites, over to the websites, 
or funnel, whatever you're editing, click on the dots, edit, go over to settings, and then for the fav icon URL, just paste in that URL there, and then save it. And if you don't know, the fav icon is this right here. ChatGPT has one, our software has one, it's just that little logo that's shown for your website in the tab and also in search results. So now that we have that, let's delete the pages that we're not going to use and then edit the names of the pages that we are going to use. So I'm going to delete this one. Then I'm also going to delete this one. So I'm basically going to delete all of them aside from the home page and this link in bio page. I'll probably keep the multi-purpose page as well for this tutorial because then the main purpose of this website that I'm building is to host blog posts because with Money Secrets AI, I'm going to be doing a lot of blogs. That is the goal for my website. Your goal may be different. If you're selling e-commerce products, digital products, if you're selling products, we will cover that in a future module, adding products, adding services, adding invoices, all that, don't worry. But for now, we're just focusing on getting the website structured. So now let's just get all of these. So now let's just make sure all the slugs are correct. Let's click the three dots, go to settings, and then just clean this up a little bit. Make sure it's the home page. That looks good. And then the link in bio. We'll just do link in bio, just like that. Update. Then multi-purpose. I don't, I don't know exactly what I'm going to use this page for, but I do know that I'm going to need it for something later on. So I'm just going to leave it as multi-purpose for now, and then we will change it accordingly down the road. All right, so that looks good. So now that we have our website, we have our domains connected to our website, we have the slugs optimized, everything, we are ready to continue. So as a review, make sure that you have followed all of the steps and have configured all of your domains, your slugs, and the SEO metadata for every single page of your website and or funnel. If you feel overwhelmed, this is good. There is a ton of knowledge packed into this course. If you are overwhelmed, it means that you're absorbing the information. Just relax, give it time. Everything will make sense very soon. Do not lose hope if you are feeling overwhelmed. There are still a ton of modules to go through. And with every single module, things will just start to click. If you've made it this far, you are already in the top 5% businesses. I'm not joking. So keep the momentum and let's keep going. Next, we are going to integrate the calendar. I will see you in the next module. Welcome back to the high level masterclass. In this module, we are going to cover calendar integration. Now that means creating a calendar and integrating it with the Google calendar. And then we're going to set up Google meet or zoom. It's compatible with either or personally, I like Google Meet, but it has Zoom functionality too if you want to go that route. So with the calendar integration, we need to integrate your Google Calendar into High Level in order to get the scheduling function to work. So if you don't have one already, we're going to create your Google Calendar. And by create, I mean to block out any times on the calendar where you will be unavailable for meetings, appointments, jobs, calls, etc. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we're just going to navigate to the Google Calendar. So you can just search on Google for calendar. It'll be the first result, or you can just click these dots and then just go down to calendar. Now that we're in our Google Calendar, there are some things we need to change first, depending on your preferences. But for me, my week starts on Monday, not Sunday. So I'm going to change that by just going to this, this little cog, go to settings. Then if you scroll down, you will see start week on Monday, just like that. And then depending on where you plan on doing business, whether it's local or if you're going to be servicing customers overseas, you know, internationally, you, it would be a good idea to do the world clock. So for me, since I'm located in mountain time, I will have, we'll have the mountain time and then we'll have Pacific time. So Los Angeles, so we'll have Los Angeles, then we'll have central time, which is typically Chicago, ba -ba boom at Chicago and then also New York for Eastern time. That way I just have all the time zones there. So that way if I'm on a call or something, I don't really have to do the math in my head. I can just look at it. So it's kind of, it's pretty helpful. You don't have to do it. It's not required, but it is a good idea. So now that we have that, boom, we have Monday starting the week and then we have our world clock here. So now 
what we need to do is just block out the times where we will be unavailable to be scheduled. Now, depending on your business, when people schedule, it could be for doing a job or a service. It could be a sales call or any type of virtual meeting. So we want to block out the times where we will be unavailable to be scheduled. So for me, so we'll do this one sleep and then we'll just drag. So I'll do 12 to three my sleep. And then I usually go to bed on the weekends at seven when I'm on my grind, which it never stops. Then this will also be sleep. So I'm going to modify this seven to 3 a.m. is when I usually wake up. So we'll do that. And then we'll make this repeat every weekday, just like that, boom. And so now actually we'll have this repeat Monday through Thursday because I don't wake up at three on Saturday. We'll do that, save, we'll do all events and boom. So I wake up 3 a.m. on Monday, go to sleep at 7 a.m., wake up at 3 a.m. on Tuesday, and then wake up 3 a.m., and then go to bed. Then on the weekends, I'll typically stay up a bit later. We'll say 10. We'll do 10 to 7, and then we'll do repeat custom. We'll do Friday, Saturday, just like that. Let's actually rename that. Make sure you name it sleep, just like so. All events, bam, just like that. And then for Sundays, I'm just going to block off the entire day. We'll do out of office, then we'll do repeat weekly on Sunday. Boom. And then let's just make sure that it is all good. Cool. So yeah, that is my typical sleep schedule on a good week. So then for weekdays, 3 a.m. to 7 is my deep work and morning routine. This is when I'll usually do client work, do my writing, do my recording. And then let's make sure I do every weekday, bam, just like that. So we'll leave seven to about nine open, but nine to 11 is usually when I will do my gym. Change this, repeat every weekday at that time, blam. And then, so we'll do 11 to 12 is lunch. Then again, I'll do this weekly, or every weekday, we'll do this every weekday, bam. And then we'll leave 12 to, then five to seven is dinner and evening routine. Then we'll do this every weekday. And then for Fridays after dinner, I'll just do out of office. I don't wanna take calls after dinner because my brain is all foggy from my full belly. So we'll do this weekly on Friday, bam. And then we'll just block out that same time out of office for Saturdays, bam. Then Saturdays are very lax for me. I don't usually go to the gym or really schedule a lunch. I just eat whenever. It's a very easy day for me, so I'll just keep it open and then just schedule my day around that. But you want to schedule your day according to you, obviously. And then what we can do is in the settings for the event is we can change the event color. So gym, let's do like a, let's do like a pink that all events bam then sleep we'll do a purple because that's a very sleepy color bam all events and then sleep on the weekends is a different event so we have to modify this one bam save all events just like that and then deep work we'll color like a what is this lavender that's a good one boom all events blam and then lunch, we'll do yellow because that's a very food color. It's a very hungry color, in my opinion. So we'll do yellow, bam, all events, boom. And then we'll just leave dinner and evening routine the same. And then we'll just make sure that it's consistent across the board, which it is perfect. All right, so take some time, get your calendar done, make it according to your schedule, and then we'll move on. All right, after you have that done, let's go back to high level. Now, I mentioned this before, but I went over it quick. So if you haven't already added your profile to your sub account, you need to do that first. So go into settings in the agency view. Remember, make sure you're in the agency view. Then go to team, click on you, go to this little pencil, then scroll down, go to user roles, and make sure you have access to your sub account. Make sure you are added to your sub account. This is important or else you won't show up in the calendar. Beautiful. So now navigate to the sub account. And then what we're going to do is integrate the calendar into high level. We're going to do that by connecting our Google account. 
So go to the settings, go down to integrations, and then right here, sign in with Google, and it's gonna have a little pop-up. Make sure your profile is accessible, and then click on it. And then we're going to continue, allow, and then we wait. And then you're going to get this little message here saying that we don't have any connected businesses under this account, which is correct because we don't have a Google business page or a Google business account set up. So it's fine, just close it. And beautiful, we have this integrated successfully. So what we need to do now is navigate to my staff and then go to your name, go to this pencil, and then go down to user availability. Open this up and then what we are going to do is set our availability to completely open on high level. Since we are controlling the time slots in our Google Calendar, we don't need to do anything here. We just need to make it completely open. So all days of the week and then that we're going to select 12 a.m. to 12 a.m. for all of the days. So now go down to user calendar configuration then just navigate to the primary calendar here. Click on edit and then make sure that your calendar is available here and then just select it and then save. Perfect. So now let's save this. Then it says user updated successfully. Let's just double check to make sure. So user availability, 12 a.m. to 12 a.m., seven days a week. Perfect. And then just double check the configuration. Excellent. Cool. Yeah, all good. So now if you navigate to the calendar tab within your high level software, you will see the exact calendar that we created within the Google calendar. So this is good. So now what we need to do is just create a calendar group for this calendar. So go to settings and then go down to calendars and then go over to groups and then add a new calendar group. You can name this group whatever you want. So I'm just going to name mine money secrets AI. And then for the description, we can just do book a call with the money secrets team just like that and leave it as Neo. That's the newest one, pretty similar to Calendly. So definitely would recommend leaving it at Neo. And then the URL, it doesn't really matter too much. So let's do money secrets. And now we have a group. So now we're going to create a calendar for the group we just created. So go ahead, create a calendar. And there are a number of different calendars you can create. So if you're a service based business, use the service calendar. If you're using the calendar for physical events or physical meetings, the simple calendar will be best. The round robin is best for video calls, whether it's on Zoom or if it's on Google Meet. Then class booking allows multiple people to book a call with one person. So if you're a teacher and you want a bunch of your students to book a call with you, you can use the class booking. And then the collective booking is like a group call. Like if you have a sales team meetup or a group interview, then you'll want to use the collective booking. But for what I'm using mine for is typically one-on-one -on -one calls. So I'm gonna go with round robin. So I'm gonna name mine one on one. Then I'm gonna add myself to it. Then one on one for the URL. Meeting duration, we'll do about, we'll do 60 minutes. And then booking availability, again, we're just going to set it completely, completely open, 24-7. Then let's go into advanced settings, book a call with the money secrets team. So calendar logo is optional. It depends on if you plan on having the logo on the website or if you want it directly on the calendar widget itself. I'm putting mine on the calendar widget just so I can send the direct link to this calendar to anybody and not have them just go through my funnel to book a call. So I want my calendar to have the branding as opposed to the web page that will also hold my calendar. Then the group, we're going to add it to the group we just created. And then the meeting invite title. So we have another custom value here, which we are going to cover in the next module. But this is essentially going to populate with the person's name who schedules the call. And so the title of the event, when they book the event, will be Elon Musk or John Doe, whoever books the meeting. And so that way, when we look at our calendar, we know the name of the prospect or the name of the lead that we are having a meeting with or servicing or doing whatever request that the calendar is there for. Then for the title as well, you can also add on to this. So if you're doing a service or consultation 
or if you just want to be generic, you can also add a hyphen and then you can add consultation with money secrets or something along the lines. That way when the lead books a call and this shows up on their calendar, so they see, oh, there's my name. It's a consultation with money secrets. Okay, that, that makes sense. I forgot. It's just so they know. Because if they just see their name as the as the event, there's a chance they won't remember exactly what that is. So this is a good thing to implement for quality of life. So we'll just do that. Then make sure you add yourself to the calendar. And then for this, this is the meeting location. So where is the meeting taking place? You can have it on Zoom. You can have it on Google Meet. You can have it over the phone. Or it can be at a physical address. But for this, we're going to do Google Meet. And since we integrated our Google Calendar, it's going to be very simple. And then here you can change the event color. So for my calendar, I don't really have anything that's kind of red. So we'll just do red for the events. Then we'll save that. And then availability. Again, we want to make sure that it is 24 seven because the availability is going to be pulled from our Google Calendar. So 12 a.m. to 12 a.m to 12 a.m. You scroll up so you can see the a.m. It's going to set all of them. All right. OK, so now that is all set. All the days are checked. Good to go. It's important to know that these times are for the group calendar. And so when you onboard any team members, put them through the same process we did with the Google Calendar, having them block out the times where they're available or not available. And that way, every single time you onboard someone, and you add them to this calendar, you don't have to go through this every single time. You don't have to worry about lining up the times on the Google end and the go high level end. So just completely open this and it will save you a lot of headache in the future. I promise. Then down here, we're going to configure the event settings. So interval is the amount of time in between booking slots. So I'm going to keep this at 60 minutes so we can have a call every single hour. And so we're gonna have to match the meeting duration up with the buffer time to equal 60. So we'll do 15 minutes in between calls with a 45 minute call duration. Then minimum scheduling notice means how soon can they book a meeting? So I want at least one day's notice. So they can't book that same day. That way I have time to prepare. You can make this longer. You can make this longer or shorter depending on your business and what your calendar actually is going to schedule. And then the date range, how far out can they book a call? Again, this just depends on your business. If you're doing sales calls, generally you want to stay relatively shorter, like seven to 10 days, because you don't want people to reconsider booking a call. Just depends on what you're using the calendar for. So I'm going to do a week, a week in advance. And then maximum bookings per day, it doesn't really matter because if we set maximum bookings per slot, which is one, we can't double book ourselves. So we'll just leave this blank. And if you want to double book yourself for, for whatever reason, you can do that here. And then the post buffer time, if you need to do paperwork or something after a meeting, this just gives you a little bit more time so people can't schedule that soon after a meeting. But I'm going to keep mine blank and then we're going to save. All right. And then forms and payment. So select form. You can either go with the default, which contains the first name, the last name, the email, the phone, and any notes, or you can use the calendar form that I've included in the snapshot for you. So we're going to go with that. And if you want to allow the attendee to bring any guests, you can have them include the name and email of the guest or the amount of guests. And then you can also create a custom form to guests, but we're not going to do any of that. And then confirmation page by default. So this is what shows up after they book an appointment. So you can use the default one, or if you're going to use the funnel that I've included from Max Person, we can use the redirect URL. And what that is, we have the booking opt-in page with the form. And then after that, we have the schedule page, which will have the calendar on it. And then after they book a meeting, they will be then brought to this call confirmation page, or at least that's what we want. So we're going to take this URL, copy that, and then just bring that and paste it here, just like that, perfect. And then if we have a Facebook pixel, which we will get into later down the road, we don't need that yet, that would go here. 
Then if you want the calendar meetings to automatically be confirmed, you can leave this checked. If you want to go in and manually confirm them yourself, you can do that as well, but that's just more work for you. And then for payment, that's pretty self-explanatory. You can choose to accept payments, but we cannot do that because we do not have our Stripe connected. So that is an option though, if that's what you want, especially if you're gonna do consulting, you can have people pay you up front and then they can book a call afterwards. Very nice. So we are going to save that. All right, and the notifications and additional options. So when someone books an event, you can select the type of notification, which we only have the email. So then we can select who should receive this notification. We can have the contact, which is the person who books the event. And then we have the assigned user, which is the person who's assigned to the calendar or assigned to the contact. And then we can also send additional emails by inputting them here. So if we have a business email or a sales email or something, we can add that here just so every single time someone books an event, a notification email is going to that email address as well. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to do that. And then you can allow Google to send invitation and update emails to attendees. We can do this in, we have this done via one of our automations, so we're not going to worry about that. Then you can assign contacts to their respective calendar team members each time an appointment is booked. So we definitely want that. We want the person, we want this to show up on our sales members individual calendar as well as the group calendar or whatever kind of calendar you're creating. I'm using sales calls as an example, but I hope you get the point. You can skip assigning the contact if the contact has already assigned a user. So this, this is really good for sales members because you don't want them fighting over, if you don't want them fighting over prospects or sales, this is a good thing to have, but it really just depends on you and what you're using this for. And then you also have the option to allow rescheduling and canceling within this email. So I'm going to disable this. because All of this is going to be done through one of the workflows that we will cover later on. So that looks good. We're going to save. And here are the customizations for the calendar. So you can have a cover image for the calendar. Again, this goes on the calendar widget itself, not, not the website it's hosted on, but the actual widget, the calendar widget style. Neo is best. It's very, very modern looking. Just looks a lot better. Then you can also set the colors. So if you've jumped ahead to the logo and brand guide module, you will have the brand colors for your business. So you can input those here to make it custom tailored to your brand. Or if you just know the hex code of your primary brand color, you can just throw that in here, which mine is E4C 790. Bam. It's for Tyrant Empire at least, but it'll do. And then the button text displayed under the calendar for them to submit the booking. You can have it, you can just leave it at schedule meeting or tailor it to whatever you're using the calendar for. You can have the title of your calendar in the calendar, the calendar description in the calendar which the calendar title is one-on-one. -on -one. I should probably change this to make a little bit more sense. Do one-on-one -on -one meeting, but it doesn't really matter. This is just an example. And then we have the calendar description, which is basically saying book a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the Money Secrets team. And then the calendar details shows the duration of the meeting, the time and date, any other details about the event. And then if you have any custom code, you can throw that here. And then you can also have staff selection. So you can have all your team members pop up and allow the lead to book the meeting with a specific person, which is very handy. That's a great feature. And this all looks good to me, so I am going to save. Now that our calendar is looking nice and schnazzy, it is time to add it to our funnel. So navigate to the websites, navigate to the sites tab. Let's go to the booking funnels, then the book a call funnel. Then go to the schedule call stage, then let's edit. So it's saying 404 right now, but this is actually the calendar widget. Now it's saying 404 because we haven't selected the calendar for it to show. So if we go to calendar right here, we have one-on-one -on -one, or whatever you named yours. And now you can see the color scheme that I went with. My logo needs to be bigger. I haven't created a bigger file size of my logo. So disregard that eyesore. But other than that, everything looks perfect. I need to change the name of this to make it a little bit more informative, but you can see here, we have our logo, we have our name, we have the title, we have the call, we have the booking information, which is the time and the date. 
that we have selected, and then the description. All of this looks perfect. So we can save this. So we're going to save it, and then we're going to view it. So this is what it looks like when someone is actually viewing the calendar itself. They can also go down here, select their specific time zone. So if we go to Monday, so if we go to next Monday, and I'm trying and I try to book a time, I only have eight in the morning available. This is because of the schedule that I set within our Google Calendar, remember? So I have 8 a.m. available, and then I have all of the stuff that I have to do in the morning. And then I have lunch and the gym. So then my next available time is one, two, three, and four. And then at five and six, I have dinner. So what I'm trying to say is all those times are not available. This is exactly what we want. And then if we go to Saturday, which is the day that I don't really have anything going on, I have plenty of times available. So this is perfect. This is exactly what we want. The next thing I want to show you, however, is the calendar form. So when someone tries to book on our calendar, let's say for eight in the morning, we select it. The next stage in the calendar is to fill out this information. This is a form that we create. Now we have modules dedicated to just forms and surveys. So I'm not going to go too in the weeds on this, but this is important because it's relevant to our calendar. So, so these are fields. Okay. First name, last name, email, phone. And then we also have what are called custom fields. Now these you can create for whatever you want. It just really depends on your business and industry. So you can ask the lead what their budget is for a project. That's a really good way to use it. Or you can ask them about their business. Like what is their annual or monthly revenue? If you're in the fitness industry, you can ask them what their fitness goals are. If you're in the restaurant business, you can ask them if they have any allergies or the options are limitless when it comes to custom fields. They're extremely powerful. So I just want to give you that little teaser because that's what we have to look forward to in the coming modules. We can get really in depth and customize anything with this. So I'm not gonna fill this out, I don't need to. So let's actually go to the form where this is and I will give you a quick rundown of what that looks like. So if you navigate to the sites tab and then go over to forms, you can go to the builder here. So you'll have a few forms included with this snapshot. So we're going to go with the calendar forms and then calendar form basic. So this should look familiar. Everything within high level is very similar when it comes to building. It's all drag and drop. It's, it's chef kiss. It's beautiful. It's so intuitive, very simple, but it can be very complex. So if this looks scary to you, don't, don't freak out. It'll get easier. I promise it'll all make sense. But essentially you can quick add any elements here by just clicking the plus. And then these are all the elements that you can add. So you have full, full name, first name, last name, date of birth, phone, email, you have a button, you can collect payment directly address, city, all of these can be just dragged and dropped onto the form, just like this. And then the customer or the lead or the prospect will fill this out. And then all of this information will be populated within their contact. So I'll show you real quick. So all of these right here, general info, additional info, these are, these are custom values. These are all values that are populated via a form and forms can be put all over the place. So I'm not going to go too in the weeds on that, but I just want to show you. And if you go over to this tab, you have what are called custom fields. Now these are where you create your very own bits of information that you can tie directly to the contact. So target yearly revenue and, tar and current yearly revenue. These are custom fields. You see, these are right here. And so you can create more based off of whatever you want and have these tied directly back to the customer. And some more foreshadowing, just getting ahead of myself because I love this kind of stuff. You can have automations tied directly to these custom fields and create some really cool and really complex workflows based off of these. I'm gonna leave it at that, but feel free to come in here and tweak this form to however you want. Don't be don't be too scared of the custom fields right now. You can mess with the custom fields right now if you want, but I assure, I assure you we're going to cover those in depth later. So I will leave you 
I will leave you with that. And then the last thing we want to check is the automation that actually controls this, this whole booking sequence. So let's go to calendar meeting automations here and then book a call page. And then we're gonna go to the appointment confirmation follow-up. We're kind of jumping around here, but we have a ton of automations to cover in future modules. This is just to confirm that everything works with our calendar. So we're going to do a mock booking sequence real quick. So we're gonna make sure that when we book with our calendar, we're going to get the event in our Google calendar, our high level calendar, and then also any internal notifications within the app and our email. So really the only thing we need to do is set the trigger in the calendar of the one that we created. So mine is still the terrible name of one-on-one. -on -one. It's fine, so save that. Then also go to internal notification email and then just make sure that your values match up to mine. Make sure that the from is location.name, which is going to be your high level account, the name of it, that's what this stands for, is high level name. So the name of your high level. And then your high level email is going to be the from. Then it's gonna send a copy of this email to ty at moneysecrets.ai. This is only going to send to me. We haven't set up the email system or the SMS system. So you can ignore all these other things for now. It's we're only worrying about the internal notification email, which will be sent to you or any of your team members linked to the calendar that is being booked on. And so you, when you look at the message here, it's going to say new appointment, and then it's going to, this custom value is going to be dynamic. So this is going to populate with the date and time of the event that is scheduled, as will the name, name of the contact, the email of the contact, the phone number of the contact, the company name of the contact, as well as the contact's website. And if, and if we add any more custom fields, we can then link those custom fields to the custom values to have those populate as well. So we get all of that information that we ask for in our internal notification. So we know what to expect for our meeting. It's just more ammo. These are extremely powerful. You can tell I'm excited to get into that because I keep bringing it up, but we need to we need to tinker with these to make sure that everything works with our calendar booking sequence. So just make sure you're getting a copy of this to your email and then save it and then make sure you publish and then save the entire workflow. So now I'm going to open an instance of my Gmail and the calendar. So when I book this, we can see it update in real time. Let's go get this out of the way. So I'm gonna book it for Friday. That's the earliest I can do because I have that one day buffer period where people can't schedule. So the earliest is a day after. So the earliest is Friday. So we'll do 8 a.m. We'll select it. We'll do Elon Musk, Elon Musk, one, two, three, four at Gmail. Hopefully no one owns that email address or else they're getting spammed. And then we'll just put in a fake phone number. So one, eight, oh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then business name, let's do Tesla and www.tesla.com. Then we are going to schedule invalid phone number. So it's saying invalid phone number because high level isn't stupid. So I need to do something like this, similar to my personal phone number, but it's not, so don't try to call me. All right, and then we're going to schedule. All right, and it it worked. So we got to the confirmation page. The custom value from here did not populate because we didn't fill in the opt-in form. So this should say, thanks, Elon. Can't wait to meet you, but it doesn't. It's just because we didn't fill out the opt-in form at the, at the top of the funnel. Not a big deal, but look at this. Boom, we got our internal notification. It says, new strategy session. New appointment for Friday, May 24th at 8 in the morning by Elon Musk, Elon Musk1234, the phone number, business name, website. So we have everything we need to prepare for the meeting. That is exactly what we want. And that is as basic as it gets in terms of workflows. That's not even the entire workflow. So now let's make sure that it actually shows up in our calendar. Up oh, and would you look at that? Mr. Elon Musk. Friday at 8 a.m. Beautiful. And we can click on this 
And then we have the Google Meet link right there and everything we need, the phone number, his, his email, all the information right there as well. So lastly, let's just, let's make sure that it's populating in our calendar on high level as well. And what do you know? There it is. Beautiful. So everything works. We are in fantastic shape. So let's continue. So let's also see real quick if we have the contact created. And there we go. We now have Elon Musk added to our, our contact book. And you can see here, we have the automation triggering, sending him a text message of the reminder, but since we don't have our SMS phone system set up, it's not delivering properly. But here we can confirm that it's actually following the workflow. The workflow is triggering everything. Everything's working. Everything that's set up at least. And we can also see a list of the activities as well. So this is absolutely perfect. We are in really good shape. And the last thing we need to check is the opportunities, the pipeline. So did he get added to the pipeline? The sales pipeline is the one that we have linked to that funnel and calendar. And would you look at that? Elon Musk is scheduled. He is in the scheduled tab. This is exactly what we want. Everything is working. So that is everything for this module. So let's review everything that we've covered. Make sure that your calendar is successfully created and integrated into your account before continuing. Before you continue on to the next module, make sure that your calendar is created, the time slots are populated, and that you have successfully integrated your Google Calendar into your high-level account. And then ensure that the booking function is working correctly and is showing up on your Google Calendar and your GHL Calendar. And also make sure you test it to make sure that everything is populating. Make sure you're getting the email notification, make sure that they're showing up in the pipeline, and make sure that a contact is being created for them as well. Now, this was our first small interaction with automations, and we will be going further into the automation section next. So I just want to tell you, again, you are doing a phenomenal job. This stuff is not easy. If it was, everyone would be doing it. But if you are here learning this skill and you master it, if you follow through this entire course and you master everything, you will be an invaluable asset for any business because any business can use high level. And as things are progressing, as all these AI features are being implemented into high level, AI alone is something that every business needs. Not every business could use. Not every business may want. Every business will need some degree of AI to survive. Things are going to get incredibly wild very soon. They may already be getting wild, depending on when you're watching this. So having this skill to build out a system for yourself, for your business, or as an agency to build it for other businesses is going to be invaluable. So I want to congratulate you. I want you to see the big picture because you are doing phenomenal. Keep the momentum going. Don't let your foot off the gas because we are going to go further. Things are going to get juicier and your brain is going to get even wrinklier from all the knowledge that you're going to absorb. So take a break, drink some water, relax, reflect on everything we've covered, but only if everything works. If nothing's working, then you made an error somewhere and you need to go back and rewatch. So once again, phenomenal job. I will see you in the next module. Welcome back everybody. In this module, we are going to cover custom fields and custom values. So what exactly are we going to cover? Well, we're gonna go over the basics of what custom fields are where they are found and what they do, as well as the custom value basics, what they are, where they are found and what they do. So what the heck is a custom field? Well, simply put, custom fields are a variable that can be assigned to a contact or an opportunity within go high level. Now, what the heck does that mean, right? Well, similar to how standard fields within Go High Level contain data such as name, phone number, email address, etc., a custom field will hold data based on whatever you want. It's a custom field. So this will allow you to create extremely customized forms, automations, and pipelines. Not to mention, give you more information instantly when you view a contact or a pipeline. Now, there are two types of custom fields now, 
as of recently. There are contact custom fields, which we used in the last module with the calendar integrations. And a contact custom field is typically only associated with the customer or client. It allows customization of data to add to a contact within Go High Level. It's generally more permanent data, permanent data. Its purpose is to provide more information about your customers. And custom fields can range from whatever you want, but typically I've used them for social media info, website info, home info, age, lead source, etc. There are unlimited use cases for them. Now, opportunity fields are relatively new, and they are only associated with the opportunity, the pipeline. And it essentially allows customization of data to optimize the sales process. And it's generally less permanent data, permanent data. And it not only provides greater flexibility and precision in tracking potential sales or tasks, but it can also range from project deadlines, product specifications, client preferences, customer's budget. There are so many implications for custom fields now that custom opportunity fields are a thing. It's a lot to wrap your head around, I know, but I assure you, you will understand it. Now in this module, since it is an introduction to custom fields, we are only going to cover contact custom fields at the moment. They're arguably more important and they're a bit easier to wrap your head around. Now custom fields can be populated by yourself or your team, or they can be populated by the lead slash client by using a form or a survey. If you did the last module, which you should have, we walked through the calendar form where potential leads will fill out the form to schedule their appointment. When they put in their information on that form, all that information that is populated in the custom field will be attached to their contact. So let's go over custom fields in a little bit more depth. So if you go down to settings and then go down to custom fields, here is where you can view all of the custom fields that are in your account. And there are quite a few of them. But for the sake of simplicity, let's go create our own. So custom fields are best explained using the forms because this is usually when these will be populated. Unless you prefer inputting the data yourself over the phone with a customer or client or face to face as you fill it out. But typically you want them to fill out a form so it auto populates. It's much easier, saves you a ton of time. So let's go to the form builder. Let's click there. And then let's just create a new form, start it from scratch. So here we have a basic form. Now, so let's think of a hypothetical for this example. Let's say we want to create a form for potential buyers of a house. So in this form, we need to do a few things. Obviously, we want the basics, capture their name, their last name, their email, and their phone number. But let's also capture a few things like their budget, whether or not they own a home currently, if they have any pets, and if so, what kind of pets do they have? And we'll leave it at that just so I don't lose track and forget. So first things first, what is their budget? So we add a form element and then let's go to custom fields. And now let's create a custom field by adding and we have a plethora of different types of custom fields we can create. So let me, let me break this down for you. We got a single line, very self-explanatory. It's just a text field. You input a single line of data. Then you have multi-line, still a text input, but you can input a lot of data, like a paragraph. Or you have text box list. You can have a series of questions or different queries that are all text inputs. So instead of using a bunch of single lines, you can have one text box list with as many boxes as you need. And then there's values. So values are similar to text inputs, but they only allow number values. So if you're looking for a numerical value, phone is self-explanatory. It's It only accepts phone numbers and it's really good at recognizing fake phone numbers. So it's very smart. That's a bonus. And now we also have monetary. Now monetary is for money, if you don't know it only allows a money value. So we could use this if we want to ask for their budget, but personally, I'm going to use the drop down single for when we ask for their budget 
for this house because a drop down single will allow them to select from a drop down menu, whereas the drop down multiple will allow them to select from a drop down menu, but it will let them select multiple values. So they can select option one and two. The radio select is similar to the checkbox, but it only allows one selection. So it's a good way for exclusive choices. And it's also really good for conditional logic, which I will show you in a bit. But this is what we are going to use for when we ask if they have any pets. Now the checkbox is pretty self-explanatory. It's either on or it's off. It's basically a true or false statement. It's really good for if they want to opt into a newsletter or something along those lines. It's like a yes or no or a true or false piece of logic. Now the date picker, pretty self-explanatory. You click on it and then it brings up the calendar to where they can input a date. And then when they click it, it automatically populates. Now the two others are file upload. It's also self-explanatory. You, you click on it and then you can upload a file. The lead or prospect or customer, they click on it, they can upload a file. Really useful if they need to give you a document or an image or a video or any type of file, really. And then a signature is just that. It allows them to attach a signature. But to be honest, I don't really ever utilize the signature as a custom field. There are use cases for it, but there is a default signature field that's much better than what most people will use this for. And so for the question we are going to ask, what is their budget? We are going to go with drop down single. We could do monetary, but I like to make it a little more streamlined. And I'll tell you what I mean in a sec. So in the field name, we're going to do what is your budget for this house. I had a little autofill there because I made a mistake about 30 seconds ago, but I cut it out so you won't see it. But what is your budget for this house? That is the name of this custom field. And we're gonna keep it as a contact. There is a way we could do this for an opportunity. So it's, so it's pipeline based. That probably doesn't make any sense to you right now, which is why I'm going to keep it simple. We're just going to stay with contact. And then the group, we're going to put in general info. They're essentially folders where you house the custom fields. And this will make a lot more sense when I show you. But to keep it simple, we'll just keep it in general info. Now, for the options, let's do what are the prices of houses? Because here in Salt Lake, they're kind of ridiculous. So let's do let's do less than one hundred thousand. Let's add another option. We'll do a hundred thousand we'll do a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand and then we'll do two hundred thousand to let's say five hundred thousand it's quite the jump but this is an example and we'll do five hundred thousand to let's say a milli one million doll hairs all right so the way i'm doing it like this is just so we can keep everything organized because if we have people inputting their, because we, we could do it either way if we wanted to use the monetary custom field, but we're going to do it like this just because it, it looks a little bit better. It's much easier for them to just click the drop down menu, click something and then be on with it. Another really cool thing about going with something like this is that for each, for each option that they choose, we can have a designated workflow based off of their response here. So we could essentially qualify them, disqualify them, or overqualify them based off of their budget. If we're using this house example. And for each one of these, if we use that as an example, we can automatically put them into a different workflow or assign them a certain team member or a certain team based off of their response, all from this. So doing it, doing it like this is very, is an easy way to go about that. You can do it the other route, but this is much easier for me. So I recommend you do it this way too, if you do something like this. So let's go ahead and save this. So now that just popped up in general info. And so now we can just drag this in here. So if we preview and we click on it, we now have options. Perfect. Let's continue. Now, what else did I say we we're going to do? Now let's ask them 
if they currently own a home. So for this one, we are going to use radio select because this will allow them to only select one option. Let's go, are you a homeowner? And then this is going to go into general info and then yes, then add an option, it says no. And then we're going to save it. So if we drag that on here and then we preview it, are you a homeowner? Yes. Oh wait, no, I mean no. Wait, yes, no. Can't. I cannot select both of them. So it's a yes or no. They can only choose one thing. Very handy. And so now we are going to create another custom field, but with this one, we're going to use another drop down menu. But for this, we're going to ask what kind of home do you own? And then we're going to add this to general info as well. So for the first option, let's just do a let's do single family. Let's do a mansion. Then we'll have apartment and then town home. And that looks good. So we will save that. And now we'll drag this on here. But wait a second. There is a problem. What if they say they're not a homeowner? So say we make this required, but they're not a homeowner. This will still be here. So we need some conditional logic. So if you go here, add conditional logic, and then show and hide fields. So if are you a homeowner is equal to yes, then show what kind of home do you own? Sample is that. And then we save it. And then we're, we'll jump, we'll, we'll dive more into conditional logic in future modules because this can get pretty crazy. But that just, I hope that kind of teases some of the power in this because it's insane. You're essentially programming without code. So I'll leave it at that. So now if we preview it, we don't see that drop down menu. So if we go, yes, boom, what kind of home do you own? And it is required. If we go, no, it disappears. Yes, no, yes, no, marvelous. So now we can do another thing that's pretty similar with the pets. So we're gonna do radio select, and then do you have any pets? And then contact general info, and then yes and no, we will save that. So we'll make this one a little bit more complex. So we'll add this, do you have any pets? And then we'll also have a drop down multiple. And if you remember what a drop down multiple it is, it allows them to select multiple things from this menu. Whereas drop down single is just that. It allows them to select just one. So drop down multiple, Next, what kind of pets? And then contact, group, general info. So, what kind of pets do we want? We have dog, cat, and let's keep it relatively simple, horse. So then we save that. So now we drag this in here. And as you may have guessed, we are going to use some conditional logic to show and hide fields. So if do you have any pets is equal to yes, then show what kind of pets. Bam. So it's very similar to the one we did before. So when we preview this, what is our budget for this house? Let's do that one. Are you a homeowner? Yes. What kind of home do you own? I own an apartment. Do you have any pets? Yes. What kind of pets? And then I have a horse and a cat and a dog. So I'm not going to build this out too, too extensively, but I hope this is making a lot of sense to you because all of this can be visible from the contact. And like I mentioned before, you can organize your leads and your clients and your customers automatically via workflows based off of whatever information you have in here across any kind of business. It doesn't matter. So now let's cover what custom values are. 
Well, custom values are placeholders that you create that store and manage specific information. They allow you to organize and retrieve personalized or standardized data in an efficient manner. Essentially, custom values can auto-populate fields, customize messages, and streamline workflows. Custom values allow you to instantly update a value in one place and not have to worry about updating in every instance it is being used. That is just a few of the millions of ways you can utilize custom values. So now if we navigate to the settings and then go down to custom values, you will see the custom values that we have. So one of the really good use cases that we'll cover in the next module is with links. So in the next module, we'll, we will be using the video call link within our calendar integration workflow. So I'm not gonna cover that in this one. So we're going to use quite a few custom values in the next modules. So I'm not gonna actually show you how they're used. We've already covered a few of them in previous modules, but we are going to use them in the next module by creating a custom value for our video call link and linking the schedule page. So now let's review. Custom fields are used to apply custom information to a contact or an opportunity pipeline. You can populate the data within a custom field yourself or have a lead slash customer do it themselves via a form or a survey. Custom values are dynamic data sets that you can use in your website, funnel, automations, email, and more. And again, we will cover that in depth in the next module as well as future modules. This was just an introduction. So do not let this stress you out too much. All of the must have values and fields have been included in your snapshot if you want to use the funnel that I have provided. So hopefully that makes sense. There are a ton of use cases for both custom values and custom fields, which you will see very soon. So congratulations on making it through. It's kind of a bit to wrap your head around at first. Once you start diving in yourself, start playing with it, tons of ideas and implications are going to start coming to mind and you're going to feel incredible. So I will see you guys in the next module. Welcome back to the high level masterclass. So what are we going to cover in this module? Well, we're going to go through the entirety of the automation tab, a complete overview, and then I'm going to walk you through setting up and testing the email and SMS automations for our calendar. I'm going to walk you through every single step of the calendar booking automations that I have included in the core snapshot. So first, what exactly is automation? If you don't know, Automation allows users to automate repetitive tasks, streamline communication, and create personalized marketing campaigns. You can automate tasks such as sending emails, sending SMS messages, sending Facebook and Instagram messages, editing notes, moving people through the sales pipeline, creating contacts, and so much more. There are seemingly endless possibilities when it comes to automation. So now with that said, let's navigate the automation section. All right, so navigate to the automation section, and then we're going to focus on the calendar meeting automations, and then go into the book a call page. So these workflows are very, are very simple. They're very straightforward. In the previous modules, we have already tinkered with this one a bit. We tested this workflow when we booked an appointment through our calendar in our funnel to make sure we were getting the internal notifications on our emails, and that everything was triggering correctly. Made sure that the contact was being created in the correct pipeline and all of that. So what are these other automations? Well, we have the new lead follow-up for anyone who's not scheduled. So if anyone opts in to our form here, if they give us their information, but they do not end up booking a call, this is the workflow they will stay in until they book a call. So let's dive into this. Automations work initially by being triggered, and there are different ways you can trigger an automation. In this particular instance, this automation is triggered whenever a form is submitted. So if we click into this trigger, we can choose what triggers this. So we have form submitted, and then we can change the name of this trigger, which is just lead form submitted. So we're going to choose which form we want to trigger this automation. So we're going to do opt-in form for the booking page. So whenever this form is submitted, this workflow will be triggered. So we're going to save this. And so when this form is submitted, what's going to happen next? Well, 
the next stage is a create or update opportunity. So it's going to create a contact and put them in a pipeline. Remember the opportunities tab. And since we're moving them to the sales pipeline, we are going to name it move to sales pipeline. And then we are creating or updating this opportunity in pipeline sales pipeline. We're putting them in the sales pipeline. Now there are multiple pipelines here. I'm going to delete most of them in the snapshot. So you won't see most of these, but if you have multiple pipelines, you can choose whatever pipeline you want to add them in. And then in this pipeline, what stage do we want to put them in? Do we want to add them as a lead? Do we want to put them in the scheduled no show or follow up stage? So that's what this is asking. In what stage do we add them to? So we're going to add them as a lead. And then what should we name the opportunity? And so we're going to use a custom value with the contacts name. So the name of the opportunity is going to be Elon Musk for the example that we did in a previous module. The name of the opportunity is the name of the lead. And then we also have the opportunity source. So this is basically telling us where this lead came from, which in this instance, we can put whatever we want here, but to stay organized, we have booking page. So we know where this lead came from. Now the lead value is shown here. And this value is to give you an idea of the value of the lead. Now, the reason you want a value is so you can see the opportunity of monetary acquisition, the amount of money you can make. And so when you have a bunch of leads in different stages of the pipeline, you can see how much money is in each stage. So whether you have a sales team or if you have different departments for your business, you can see the potential revenue in each stage of the pipeline. And similarly, this value, if we go to the dashboard, will populate here. Now there's no value to the one opportunity we have, which is the Elon Musk example, or else we would be able to see how much revenue we have in the opportunity value, as well as the funnel, we'd be able to see as a quick overview where the money is at, where the potential money is at. And this also populates in the lead source report. So we have a custom value here. Now we can use a number of different things for this value. We can hard code a certain value. So if the service that we're offering is $500 for this particular pipeline, let's say this is a tattoo pipeline and we charge about $500 on average for a tattoo, we can input $500 as this custom value, or we can link something to have a dynamic piece of data there that populates depending on the customer or lead. So now that we have a contact created and they're added to the pipeline, what happens next? Well, simultaneously, we have a first email being sent out. And where is this email coming from? Well, it's coming from the location.name. What does that mean? Well, it means Location means that it's coming from the high level sub account that this workflow is under. So in this instance, it's going to be coming from moneysecrets.ai. And then the from email is whatever we set in the business settings. It's going to be location.email. So for this instance, it's going to be tie at moneysecrets.ai. Then the subject of the email is going to be thanks for opting in. Now we don't have any templates selected, but you can create an email template, which we'll cover later down the road to use as an outline for this copy. You can decorate it, add logos, make it fancy looking. But in this instance, it's just gonna be plain text. And then we have the message in the email. So this says, hi, contact first name. So, hi, Elon. Thank you for opting in to book a call with us. If you haven't already, book your call here. If you have already booked your call, you, can, you will receive confirmation details shortly. Looking forward to speaking with you. Best regards, user.name. So the user of the sub account who's sending this email. So it's going to say tie, location.name, money secrets, user.email, tie at moneysecrets.ai. So these custom values can all be added by just clicking this little tag here. And then you have a ton of different values. So you can add the contacts information right here. You can add the user information, which will be you or your teammate or your team member who is using it. You have 
information about any appointments that are scheduled, any calendar information, message information, account information. You can add time information, attribution. You can request payment, and then you can add custom values. So we can add any of our custom values here directly as well. So custom values are very important because they save you a bunch of time to where you don't have to manually type all of the contacts information. It's automatically populated based off of what is tied to their contact within high level. Very powerful. So utilize custom values as much as you can. It'll save you so much time and it's all personalized. So not only is it easier for you, but it's more personalized for the contact. So after we send this email, what happens next? Well, we wait five minutes. We insert a time delay called wait, and then the action name wait five minutes because we have a time delay and we say wait five minutes. And now after five minutes, what happens? Well, we're going to send them a SMS message saying, hey, contact first name. Hey, Elon, this is user dot first name. This is Ty from location dot name money secrets. I saw that you just opted in for our free strategy call. If you have any questions or need assistance, feel free to respond to me here anytime. So we're sending them a text message five minutes after the email because they're not always going to immediately check their email. And similar to emails, we can use templates, which we are not using in this case because we don't really need to. And then after we send them a text message, we wait one hour. If they haven't booked a call, if they click off the page after they give us the form, after they submit the form, one hour later, again, another time delay for one hour, we send them another email. We name it email number two from location.name, from email, location.email, subject, let's schedule your call. Hey, contact first name. Hey, Elon, we notice you haven't booked your call yet. Our high level course offers valuable insights and support to help you succeed. I'm using the course as an example in this sequence because it's appropriate because we're doing a course. Don't miss out on personalized guidance tailored to your needs, an opportunity to ask questions and get answers, learning how, on our, learning how our course can benefit you, yada, yada, yada. Book your call now. And then we're going to input the link here. So we are reminding them, hey, you never booked a call. You gave us a form. You submitted a form, but you never booked your call. So we need to get them back to the calendar page, to the schedule page, so they can finish booking their call. So that's what we're going to link here. How we're going to do that, we are going to first create a custom value that contains our link. And then we are going to create what is called a trigger link that holds that custom value. That probably sounds ridiculous and scary, but I, I assure you it'll make sense when I show you. So let's go to... So let's go to custom values, go to settings, then custom values, and then look, find the schedule page custom value. And let's edit it, and then edit custom value. So, so this custom value does not have a value and that's a problem. So we need to add a value to it. We need to edit. And then for the value, we're going to go to our funnel sites, funnels, book a call funnel, and then we want the schedule call step. And then we're going to copy the URL for this step. And then we're going to paste this as the value and update. This way, every time we use this custom value, it's going to populate with this URL. So if we're using this URL in a hundred different places across our high level account in in different automations and different messages on our website, but we end up changing it instead of us having to go and find every instance where it's being used in a hundred different spots. If we just use a custom value that contains this and we change it, all we have to do is just update the custom value to whatever we change it to down the road. So it saves us a lot of headache. So not only is it very good for personalization and customization for the customer and prospects and the leads, but it also is very intuitive because it saves us a lot of time and potential headache. So definitely think about that as you start creating your own automations and workflows. Try to use as many custom values as you can. 
Start thinking like that. It'll, it'll, it'll save you so much time. So now that we have this created, now we need to create what is called a trigger link. And yes, we haven't talked about trigger links yet. Don't be scared. They're not, they're not that complicated. So let's go back, go to the marketing tab, then go over to trigger links and then links. So now we need to create a trigger link. So we're going to call this schedule page link. So now we are going to go back to the custom values and then copy the schedule page value. And then we are going to paste that here. Now you're probably thinking, why the heck don't we just input the custom value in the email? Why go through the trouble of adding the custom value to a trigger link? Well, two reasons. First and foremost, you can't use, you can't link a custom value. So if we go and try to link a custom value as the URL, we can't, we can only add trigger links. And the second thing is if we go back to the trigger links, we can analyze the data on the trigger links. We can see how many people actually click the trigger link. And not only that, but we can see if we have the trigger link in different automations and different places, we can see where it's being clicked and we can see where it's being clicked the most. And it just, it's really valuable data to be able to see that. So trigger links have a lot more use than just that. So now that we've done that, let's click on my goodness. So let's highlight this and then just click this add link here and then click this. And so now we see the schedule page link and now it populates with that. So we can just do, and we'll just do something simple like click here to schedule exclamation point then action. We can just open up a new window, bam. And just like that, we have a link and that's going to bring them to the schedule page to when, to where they can book their call. So we save. And then after, after we send that email, what happens next? Well, we wait another day. If another day passes and they still don't schedule, they're getting another email, email number three from location name subject. You still haven't booked a call. And then again, we're just following up with them. High contact first name. We notice you still haven't booked a call, yada, yada, yada. Book your call now. Booking link here. Add link. Schedule page link. Book a call right now. Something, something goofy like that. We, we got to get them scheduled. <laughs> cool. After that, we wait another day. If they still haven't booked a call after three days, we send them a final follow-up message. Last chance to book your call. Hey, Elon, this is your final reminder to book your call with us. Yada, yada, yada. Here is the booking link. And again, schedule page link, book here, new window. Bam. And just like that, if they don't end up booking, then we don't bother them anymore. They're obviously not that interested. So that is the entire follow-up automation for any new leads that do not book a call. So let's go to the second automation, which is the confirmation follow-up. Anyone who does book a call. So this one's just a little bit more complex, nothing too crazy. We've already kind of went through this, but I'll break it down piece by piece for you. We have the trigger. So the trigger is based on the appointment status. So, so this automation will trigger based on the appointment status. We've named it appointment status. So it's a normal event, meaning it's not recurring. Now the appointment status is based off of what calendar? So the one-on-one -on -one calendar and what status are we looking for to trigger this automation? Well, we're looking for anything that is confirmed. We want confirmed appointments to trigger this automation. We don't want canceled. We don't want people who've showed up. We don't want no shows. We don't want any invalids. We want confirmed appointments. That's it. So as soon as an appointment is confirmed, it's going to trigger this workflow. So what happens? Well, first and foremost, we want to make sure that we remove them from any other workflows. So if they're in our previous workflow, 
where they opt in, but they don't book a call. Maybe after two days, they're like, oh shoot. Yeah. I forgot to, I forgot to book a call. Let me do that. Boom. Boom. They schedule a call. They schedule an appointment. We don't want them to continue going through that workflow. We don't want to keep following up with them. Hey, book a call, book a call, book a call. So we remove them first from that new lead workflow. Action name, remove from workflow, new lead. And then we tell it what workflow do we want to remove them from. And then it's the not scheduled workflow. Very simple. Similarly, we haven't covered this workflow yet, but it's the no-show workflow for the same purpose as why we remove them from the new lead workflow. This is an entire other email sequence. So once we remove them from either of those, then we create or update an opportunity. We put them in the sales pipeline in the scheduled stage. So after we move them to this pipeline, then we get what is called an internal notification. So we went over this in a previous module. This gets sent to you or your team. So we can choose whether we want a notification in the app, an email or an SMS. We chose email. And so we, who do we want to send this email to? We can, we can send this to all the users, all the, all the employees tied to your sub account. If you have an employee assigned to a contact, it'll go to them. Like if you have a salesman or a hairstylist or a tattoo artist or a technician or anyone who's tied to that contact, you can go to them or you can specify particularly who you want to be tied to. Or you can just add a custom email, which we did in the previous exa example, we just sent it to us or me. And then the subject, new strategy session. And then the message is information based on the calendar form. Now, remember, you can have whatever kind of custom fields on this calendar form, depending on what kind of information you want tied to your client or your lead or whatever. And then all that information will populate these values, which will then be sent to you. So you can see on your email, oh, I have a new appointment. This is their information. So I have an idea of what to expect during the appointment or the call or anything like that. It's extremely powerful. And again, you can use templates, you can add attachments. You can even test emails, which we will, which we will be doing once we set everything up. And then after we get the internal notification, they are going to get a confirmation email. This is just letting them know, hey, Elon, here are the details, date and time, and then the value is the appointment time, and then blah, 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 talk to you soon, best regards, our information. Very simple. And now, what's really cool, it was yesterday when I recorded the module where we actually tested this. So you can see this little, this little icon here, it has, you know, a people silhouette and it has one. This means that there's one person in this step. So if we click on that, we can see Elon Musk, the example that we did. So he is in this step of the workflow. So we can do two things. We can push him to the next step of the workflow, just immediately, just boom, next into the next email, or we can just remove him from this workflow, which I'm going to do because we don't need him in this workflow anymore. So we wait until the day before their scheduled appointment. So it's, it's wait. And then we're waiting for event slash appointment time instead of a time delay, which we've typically used in the previous wait steps, we are waiting for event appointment time. So we're waiting one day before the appointment or the event. So when it's one day before the event, then boom, next step. Email one day before subject, our appointment tomorrow. Hey, Elon, just wanted to remind you of our call tomorrow, marketing strategy session, or you have a massage or tattoo appointment, or you're getting your car detailed, anything. Here's the appointment start time. Join the online meeting here, or here's the address to the location. You get the point. Customize it to your business. So after they get that email, then we have another wait sequence. Now this one is waiting an hour before the appointment time. And then as soon as it is an hour before the appointment time, then they get the one hour before email. So boom, boom, boom. Appointment starts in one hour. Hey, Elon, just want to remind you of our call today. Here's the start time. Here's the location. 
And since we have configured Google Meet to be our meeting location, this will populate with our Google Meet link. But if you have a physical location, however you configured the appointment within your calendar, that will be configured in this custom value there. Then they'll also be getting a text message one hour before. So location name, re appointment reminder, money secrets, appointment reminder. And again, marketing strategy session, doctor's appointment, consultation, whatever you're offering. Here's the start time. Join the meeting here. Here's the location. Very simple, very straightforward, very powerful. So that is the entire confirmation follow-up sequence. As soon as they schedule, and then all the reminders all the way through. Depending on your business, you can add more reminders. You can change anything about this workflow. Out of the box, right out of the gate, this works. And it works well. So we'll save this, and then we'll go on to the next one, which is the follow-up sequence for anyone who no-shows. Now, if we go into this, so the trigger for this workflow is whenever the stage is changed on the pipeline. So what that looks like if we navigate to our opportunities. So if we have a meeting with Elon and he doesn't show up, we're sitting in the call, he doesn't show up, or if we're waiting for him at a physical location, he never shows up, we just go in the app or we go on our computer, just drag him to the no-show, boom. He is automatically added to this workflow because the trigger is when anyone is added to the no-show stage in the sales pipeline. So we move Elon over into the no-show, triggers this workflow, and what does this workflow do? Well, the workflow will update the appointment status tied to his contact information, and so it'll change it to no-show. And then after that, it'll wait one hour. You can change this however you see fit. I have it set to one hour. And so one hour after he no shows, he will get a text message saying, hi, Elon, I waited for you on the call today, but it looks like you missed it. I understand if something else showed up, no worries, tap here to reschedule. And then we have the schedule page there, the custom value from Ty, very simple. And then two hours after he will get an email and it's a total of three hours after he no shows. So he'll get an email basically saying the same thing in the message with the link to reschedule. It'll wait one day if he doesn't schedule, because remember, if he does schedule in the other workflow, it'll remove him from this workflow if he schedules. So if he doesn't schedule, he will get another text message saying, hey, Elon, just making sure you saw my last message, Ty. Very simple follow-up. And then wait another day. So the two days after email asking him to reschedule, here's the link. And then we wait another two days. So this is four days total. Hey, Elon, are you still interested in the call? Book here, link. We wait four days, eight days after we've been no-showed. Subject, not interested. Hey, Elon, you booked a call with me last week, but you never showed up. Are you still interested? If not, please let me know and I'll stop following up. Thanks, money secrets. Then we wait six days. So 14 days total, two weeks after we've been no-showed. Hey, Elon, this will be my final follow-up. You booked a strategy call two weeks ago, but you never showed up. Are you still interested? If yes, schedule a new call here. Link. We have two weeks worth of follow-ups after someone no-shows to try to get them to rebook a call, to rebook a meeting, to rebook an appointment, rebook a service, whatever you want. So we're going to save this. And then let's say he never rebooks, he never does anything completely ghosts us so we can actually just put him in abandoned or lost we can even create a new stage within this pipeline for anyone who ghosts us and then from there we can have a separate campaign to get him interested in booking a call again you can do whatever you want the possibilities are endless and then finally we have the weekly lead nurturing campaign so this workflow is similar to a newsletter and you want to tailor it for anyone who opts in for your services or anything. Once they submit a form, they are submit they are added to this workflow. And yes, they can be in two workflows at once. They can be in this nurture campaign to just be getting updates every single week about new products, new services, news about a particular industry, anything that's somewhat related to your business or your services. However, I wouldn't consider this a newsletter because this is going to be 
somewhat evergreen. And when I when when I say that, I mean that every email is going to be relevant regardless of when it is sent. And you want to keep in mind that you can build this out week by week for as long as you want. And as soon as someone opts in and becomes a lead, they're automatically added to this. So you have to keep in mind that this first email that you create, you could have created it six months ago, and it's going to be the first email that every single lead gets when they opt in. So you have to keep that in mind. Again, you want to make it somewhat evergreen. And of course, you can come in here and update it and change it as time goes on. But as you start building on and on and on and on to having like six months worth of emails, it can be kind of tedious to keep track of. So the more evergreen you can make this, the better. Now, if you are not a good writer or a good, if you are not a good copywriter or just a good writer in general, obviously you can use AI to help you write your emails. So if we open this up, we have just some dummy text here, give you some ideas as to what to write about. Now, most people will tell you to use chat GPT and that isn't a terrible idea, but you don't want to just give chat GPT a prompt. Hey, write me an email about popular tattoo trends in 1996 and somehow tie that into my tattoo shop that's called XYZ based in Brooklyn, New York, who's done this, this, and this. That's just off the top of my head, but that kind of email would be evergreen. But you don't want to just copy and paste that email. So let's, so obviously most people will tell you to just use ChatGPT to write your emails. And however, that's not necessarily a bad idea, especially if you're not a good copywriter or just an overall good writer in general. There are downsides to using AI for your copy. The first off is if you use ChatGPT, you get limited access to the new model, which is GPT 4.0, unless you are paying 20 bucks a month. And ChatGPT 3.5 isn't very good for copy. And I would argue that ChatGPT 4 isn't really the best for copy either. However, you can use it for an outline because the whole point I'm trying to make is you want to use AI to help you write copy. You don't want to use AI to write copy. You don't want to just copy and paste whatever ChatGPT spits out. You want to make it human because even if you're a terrible writer, you don't really have to be a New York Times best-selling writer to create a convincing piece of text. So I'm ranting, but let's just get right into it. So you can use ChatGPT. I will show you an alternative to ChatGPT that's much better at writing copy. But let's go write me an email outline based on popular tattoo trends in the 1990s and then tie it to my tattoo shop that was founded in 1992 that specializes in arm tattoos. Write me an email based on popular tattoo trends in the 1990s and then tie it to my tattoo shop that was founded in 1992 that specializes in arm tattoos. Very particular, just off the top of my head. Let's see what we see what we can get. So something like this is really good to take. You can copy and paste this and then change it up. You don't want to just copy and paste. You don't want to sound like a robot because everybody does that. And it's so easy to tell, especially if you use GPT and GPT-4 as a very particular way that it talks. And you don't have to you don't have to completely dissect it and just complete, you don't have to change it completely, but you can just change it up. I, I encourage you to add some aspect of being human, but for the sake of this example, let's just copy this, paste it here, and then make sure we change the, get rid of the subject in the actual body, and then just add the spaces where necessary to make it easy to read. This isn't a copywriting course, so I'm not gonna go straight into the weeds on this. But like I said, you want to make sure that it's somewhat evergreen. If you're using a special offer, make sure that offer stands for as long as you keep this email sequence active, especially if this is the first email that they're getting as soon as they opt in. And then that was GPT 3.5. So we can save that. And then for the next one, let's take the same prompt, very short, 
you can get very in depth with your prompts. I'm going to be releasing a lot of AI videos. Depending on when you're watching this, I should have plenty of AI videos already out. Some of them going over prompting. There may even be an AI course at this point, depending on when you're watching this, but you can, you can get really elaborate with your prompts. You can be very specific. The more specific, the better. But this, for this example, will work perfectly. So what we're going to do, what I want to show you is Claude, if you've never heard of it. So if you go to Claude.ai, just sign in with your Google account. So Claude is really good at copywriting. Now I'm sure there are better models out there. I don't even, I don't even subscribe to the pro plan to get their latest and greatest models because the Sonnet model does a very good job. But we're going to just paste that same prompt and then we're going to send it. And here's what it came up with. I'm not going to read this whole thing. If you want to read it, go ahead and pause the video so you can read it. But it just sounds a lot more human. But even still, I wouldn't just copy and paste this. I would change it up. I would change it up a little bit. I would make it, I would make it my own. I don't want to just be sending people straight AI generated text. You can if you want. That's, that's my personal take on it. But I'm just going to paste that in here. All right. And then we're just going to make it just going to format it so it's easy to read. Then we're just going to add Claude here for reference. And so using AI as a tool to help you write your copy, the key is help you, not do it for you, but to help you write your copy, you can easily create an insane amount of email campaigns. Again, like I said, you can build these out week by week for months at a time. So you're staying at the top of the customer's mind or the lead's mind, depending on how you set everything up. But this is extremely powerful. And then to extend it, you just click the three dots, you go copy, copy all actions from here, and then just copy here. And then you can do that for the whole thing and then just go in to each email and change it up. Very, very powerful. So now, before you move on to the next module, make sure you go through all of these automations and modify all the emails, modify all the texts, Edit the copy to match up with the business that you have. Because in the next couple modules, we're going to set up the email system and the phone system because we are going to test everything. All right, so that is the breakdown of all the scheduling automations. The point of this module was to show you how each little piece works in this automation so you know all of the intricacies because that's important for you to know. And especially if you're starting or have your own agency, you can build automations for your clients. You can build these out for your clients. And once we start getting into more advanced workflows, you'll just be adding more and more tools to your belt, more weapons in your arsenal, more value you can provide to yourself, your business, your agency, or other people's businesses. So keep that in mind. Go High Level is just a framework to build tools with. Automations are one of the building blocks that make your software 100% unique. I don't want you thinking anyone can just make a high level software and become a millionaire. You have to be innovative. You have to make your software unique, which we are going to do in this course. I'm going to give you a ton of different tools to use to not only systematically make your software unique, but also visually and aesthetically. We'll get into that later. So start thinking about different ways, how you can use this to create your own amazing tools. You don't have to start jumping in and start creating your own automations. Just think of problems that you want to solve and begin trying to connect the dots on how you can do that using automations. And I urge you to brainstorm amongst the Tyrant Empire community, as well as the resources such as the high level Facebook group. Be around like minded people. That is one of the biggest keys to success. So let's review. We covered a lot. So make sure you go through all of the automations that we covered and ensure that all of the custom values populate with the correct information and do your best to populate the copy in the automated email and SMS sequences. If it's too much for you right now, you don't have to worry about the nurture campaign. Just build out the three workflows, the confirmation, the not scheduled, and the no show. Just focus on getting those done if it's relevant for your business. If it's not relevant to your business, you can definitely start to bend it towards your business. We'll go into that later. Be sure to reach out to me, someone in the Tyrant Empire community, or someone in the high level Facebook group, because we'll all help you out. We're all very knowledgeable. Do not be scared to ask questions. 
And as always, if you made it through this module, you are doing fantastic work. Seriously, we are close to having a complete working system. A very basic and simple system, but a very complete working system. Remember, once we have the foundation, you can start building additional tools on top of it to have your own empire, your own digital empire, your own masterpiece. And not only that, but you'll have the skills and the knowledge and the experience to build it for other people. And seriously, with all this technology coming out, we'll have unlimited implications for your software. And having it built to fit into a to any kind of business, and then having all these other technologies that you can put on top of it, my friend, you are going to be in a great spot. So congratulations again on finishing this module. I know these videos are long. I wasn't joking when I said these were packed full of value. So keep the momentum and I will see you in the next one. Welcome back to the high level masterclass. Now what we're going to cover in this module is setting up and activating the LC phone system, which stands for lead connector. Then we will be buying a marketing phone number to connect to the LC phone system, as well as verifying the phone number. So let's go through the phone activating process. It's extremely simple. So in our software, make sure you are in the agency view. Now from here, go to settings, then go to phone integration. So here's the lead connector phone system. Now lead connector is one of high levels brands. It is what they branded a lot of their systems. So the lead connector phone system is through high level themselves. So click on this button here so we can get started with the process. So by using lead connector for our business or our agency, essentially for our software, the lead connector phone system will be used for SMS and calls across all of the sub accounts and all new sub accounts that are created will automatically use the lead connector phone system. So we're going to acknowledge that that is okay and then confirm. If you have a Twilio account, you can also use that. So we are basically done with setting that up. Very, very simple. Now we link this phone to our sub account. So now we go over to the sub account settings. And since we are on the agency pro plan, we are rebilling all cell phone usage to our clients, to all the sub accounts. And obviously we need to connect our Stripe account to do that properly. But if you are on the agency pro plan, you have this functionality. So you are not paying for all of your clients cell phone usage. And so you will see your sub account down here and it is currently disabled. So if we click this button here, all phone usage will now be managed by the lead connector phone system. And then if you click this little pencil, you can see all of the compliance information. Then you can delete the connection if you want. So now that that is all set up, it is time to set up the phone system within our sub account. So let's navigate to our sub account. Then within our sub account, if we scroll down to settings and then go down to phone numbers, if we click into there, we don't have any phone numbers set up. So if you plan on using the phone system, which is highly recommended so you can send text messages via automations, and communicate with your clients and customers and leads all within the app, then you will have to set it up. So let's go to this box here, add number, and then add phone number. Now, depending on your country, you can filter it for whatever country you want based off of what is available on this list here. So I'm based in the United States and I am in Utah. So I personally would want a Utah area code. If I was a local business, I would want a local area code. And being in Utah, we have about three different area codes for our numbers. We have 801, 385, and 435. So again, if I am doing business locally, I would ideally want a local area code. So if you are a local business, search for a local area code. And you can do that by just going to this little search bar. And for example, 801 match to first part of the number and then apply. And here we go. I have some Utah numbers here. And if you don't see a number that you want, new numbers are made available all the time. For a while, I couldn't find any 801 area code numbers. It took some time, but I eventually found one and snagged one. But generally, it's not that hard to find one. So we're going, so I'm just going to go with this one here. And now that I'm actually looking at it, all of these are the same number, which is kind of odd, but going to proceed to buy. It's only a dollar and 15 cents, chump change. So then we buy it. 
So now we own this phone number. This is our number now. You now have a business phone number. Congratulations. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go to these three dots and then just edit configuration. So now through here, you can change the name of your number if you want, or you can just keep it as is so you don't forget what the number is. It's nice to just have it handy. And you can forward the calls to your personal phone. So if you don't want to take calls through the mobile app, you can forward the calls whenever someone calls this phone number. It'll forward the calls to your phone. That way you can still get calls on your personal phone, but you're not necessarily giving out your personal phone number. All right, and you don't need to worry about these two. The enable call connect feature. Now by default, the call connect feature is enabled, which I personally disable. If it is enabled, it does give you more accurate call reporting. But the thing is, whoever's getting the call has to push a button to connect the call. And before they connect the call, they will hear the whisper message. Whisper message, it'll just be blank. So it's not something that I would personally recommend just because it's just one more step that someone has to take. You can leave this on if you want. I'm not gonna do it. And then with call recording, make sure you check with all of the applicable laws in your area, but you can enable call recording. But the thing is when someone answers, they will hear this call will be recorded for quality purposes before the call is connected as well. So if you don't want that to be transmitted to them, you can just input a white space and then it's not gonna, it's not gonna say anything. It'll just be like a brief pause. So then you can set timeouts for inbound and outbound calls and you can connect this number to up to seven other staff members, up to seven other users. So if you have a sales team, you can have them be notified whenever someone is calling this number so more people can answer it. This looks good to me, I'm going to save. Now that we have our number and we have configured the settings on the number, we need to do the A2P 10 DLC registration, which stands for application to person 10 digit long something. This is required if you plan on sending any text messages to a US based phone number. If you do not do this registration, anytime you send a text message to a US based phone number, it'll automatically be blocked. The message will fail instantly. So if you are planning to send any messages to anyone in the US, you need to do this registration. So make sure you go through this process of going through the A2P messaging. It's very easy. It just takes a little bit of time, but it is a necessary step. If you have any issues getting this done, make sure you reach out to high level support via the app up here in this corner or by joining the official high level Facebook group and contacting anyone there. Everyone there is super helpful. But once you get that done, you are in the clear, you are ready to go. If you are not planning on sending anything to the US, then you're already good to go. So then in the usage summary tab, this is how much you've spent on any actions for the phone system, which we've spent a dollar to buy the number. That is nothing. We have any regulatory bundles here. And then in the trust center, Again, this is where you do the A2P messaging verification. And then if you have any brands or SMS campaigns, they'll be visible there. The shaken slash stir is a free feature. You have to be registered business to actually get this, but it is free to apply. And what it does, it gives you a little green check mark next to your phone number. So whenever you call, they will see a little green check mark saying that it's a verified call. It's a great way to build trust and improve your answer rates. And then CNAM, is similar however instead of it showing your number it will show your business name so if if you're calling someone from the marketing number it will show money secrets money secrets AI or whatever your business name is which is good which is good for branding but if you plan on using this number for cold calling it's probably not a good idea but I'll, I'll leave that decision up to you and then voice integrity is not yet out as of recording this so we will have a module on this once it's ready so other than that, that is basically it. Just make sure you register your number and you'll be good to go. So again, with A2P registration, it stands for application to person. It is required for any number sending to US-based customers. If you send a message to a US-based phone number and you don't have A2P registration linked to your number, your message will be blocked automatically. It costs anywhere from $4 to $20 to register your number, but it is only a one-time fee. And again, for more information, refer to the documents here, which will be included below, as well as consult with the high level support team, whether you talk to them through the app or if you join the Facebook group. And to review the shake and stir, it's a free feature that allows your number to have a green check mark next to it. 
It creates trust in the trust in the number and can be very important if you plan on cold calling using the marketing phone number. It is not required by any means and is only necessary if you plan on making cold calls from the app. And then the CNAM, which is the caller name, shows your business name instead of the phone number when you call customers. It's a good way for you to get your business name visible on your caller ID instead of the marketing number itself. This is another way to increase brand trust and authority when making calls. And it really isn't something that I would recommend, especially if you are making cold calls. And again, you need a valid business registration ID to be able to even apply for it. So ensure your LC phone system is set up correctly. We will be sending a few test messages to your personal phone in the next couple modules. Get the A2P registration done before you move on to the next couple modules. It takes some time to do, so you can do it now and then do the next module, which is the email setup. But after that, you will need to have your marketing number ready and working. Because if you are sending or plan on sending messages to a US-based phone number, ensure that your A2P registration is done or else your messages will be automatically blocked. I sound like a broken record, don't I? And again, if you need any support during this process, High Level has 24-7 support and will be your best friend as well as your fastest path to a solution if you have any questions. So do not hesitate to ask anybody for help. And that goes for me, the Tyrant Empire community, as well as the high level community via the Facebook group. All right, now we are one step closer to having the foundation set. In the next module, we are going to be setting up the email system, which is one of the final components to our foundation. So another huge congratulations for you because you have your very own business marketing number. Now let's go to the next module to set up the LC email system. I will see you there. Welcome back to the High Level Masterclass. In this module, we are going to set up the Lead Connector email system, which consists of setting up a dedicated sending domain. It's very easy, very straightforward, but the Go High Level support team will be your best friend if you have any issues at all or any questions. So jumping into the Lead Connector email system, we need to set up a dedicated sending domain because a sending domain improves the likelihood of our emails not going to spam. What good are emails and email campaigns if they just go straight to the spam box and never be seen? So we are going to create a do not reply sending domain for our agency in the agency view and then create a replies sending domain for our sub account. Now, some of you are probably very confused at what that even means and why we're doing it. So let me show you in our software in the agency view. Let's go to settings and then go to email services. So it's going to ask us to create a dedicated sending domain, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and create a sending domain. And as a reminder, the whole reason we are setting this up, we want to make sure that our emails get delivered so they're not going to spam. And then this sending domain is going to process all of the emails for the entire software. And emails cost about 60 cents for every thousand emails. And so if you're on the pro plan, the 497 plan, you don't have to pay for any of the sub accounts attached to your software. So if you're an agency and you onboard a bunch of clients, get their email systems going, not only are they going to pay for their email usage, but you can also set the price for each email that is sent. So in essence, you can turn email usage into another revenue source. You can make money every time one of your clients or any sub account under your software sends an email. And we'll cover this in the second bonus module when we go over the SaaS mode. So with that said, we are going to create two different domains. The first one is going to be for the agency side or the software side, however you wanna look at it. And this domain we want to be do not reply dot your domain. And then we add and verify. All right, and then it's going to open the domain wizard. So we're just going to click this and just let it do its magic. Then we just authorize. It's going to open up a little Cloudflare window with all of the DNS records that it's going to create. And we're just going to authorize that so we don't have to manually do it. All right, and here it's giving us a little error. This is fine. This just kind of happens for some reason. It takes some time for everything to verify. So we just keep verifying until all of these are verified. So you're gonna have to do it a few times. Just wait a little bit each time you do it. 
and it even says right there, DNS records may take around 60 seconds to propagate. So we're just going to wait a little bit. All right, it's been a few minutes. Let's go ahead and verify, see if we have any updates. Almost there. Maybe now. SSL packets are pending. It's very close. All right, now let's see. Let's see if we're good to go now. Verify. SSL has been issued. We are good to go. So hopefully you see this too. It took about six minutes for me. Okay. Now that we have our do not reply domain, now we need our replies domain for our sub accounts. So let's go ahead, add another domain. And this one's going to be replies.moneysecrets or your domain.ai. And then add and verify. And we're just going to go through the whole process again. Just continue. Let the wizard set everything up. Authorize and confirm. So now we just wait again. All right. This one took like 10 minutes this time. I don't know why, but it took a lot longer, but we're all good. It's verified. So now we can move on. So a dedicated IP is only really necessary if you're sending an absolute ton of emails every single month, because if you're sending a lot of emails, it's much easier for you to get flagged as spam. So a dedicated IP will prevent you from running into any issues like that once you're sending an insane volume of emails. But you do not have to worry about this unless you're sending over 100,000 emails a month. So if you already have a giant email list and you don't want to worry about your deliverability being affected, you can reach out to the high level team and they can get you a warmed up dedicated IP for you. So there's that. And then the notification section. So we are going to need one of these. The setup is going to be exactly the same as what we just went through up there. So we're just going to add a domain and then just notifications, notifications dot your domain and then add and verify. So we just go through all of this one last time. Verify, wait, verify, wait. This is as hard as it gets, I promise. So I've been waiting for quite a while and I've looked at the DNS records and some of them didn't populate. So there's a bit of a bug, which I'm glad happened because now I can show you how to add DNS records manually if you need to. All right, so I have both my Cloudflare and my high level. Let me make this a little more readable. There we go. So now I'm going to show you how to add these manually because you can't verify something that doesn't exist. So that's the error that I've run into here. So we are going to add a record and this is going to be a TXT record. So we're going to find a TXT record right there. The host name, which is that right there. Copy and then paste it here. Boom. And then the value is going to be this long string right there. Then paste that in there. And then we will save it and then we add the next one which is also a txt record this is notifications then the content then add save that and now we're going to add the cname add record this is going to be a C name to populate it with this. And then the value is mailgun.org. So we'll just slap that bad boy there. Then we'll just turn off the proxy status. Then we will save it. So then we're going to go with an MX record. Add record. Type. MX. Name. Notifications, values to be entered, which is which is the mail server. Then priority is 10. So we'll do that. Then we will save that. Then the next one is, is another MX record. So we're going to add this one. MX record, notifications, mail server. Boom, priority 10. Boom, bang, bam. Now, lastly is another TXT record. So add record. So this is going to be a TXT record. Then we're going to paste that name there. Then the value or the content is going to be this right there. Perfect. And then save. So now we should be good to go. And if you don't know how to get here, it's just Cloudflare. 
go to your websites, click into your domain, and then go here to DNS, and then it's all your DNS records. So hopefully, so this should work now, or at least it should start verifying. Okay, yeah, so it's, it's verifying now. Before it wasn't doing anything, and I tried for like an hour. All right, they're all verified. Okay, and then they're all verified by the look of it. Cool, so that worked. So that is how you manually enter them if you need to. Typically, you don't need to, but the more you know, the better. Because if you're an agency and you run into anything like that with your clients, now you know how to solve it. Knowledge is power. So now that we have the do not reply domain, the replies domain, and now the notifications domain, that is everything. It's important to know that this do not reply domain is what you want for your agency, for your software, because this is the domain that's going to send any system emails. So if anyone changes a password or anything pertaining to the software that requires them to get an email from the software, it's going to be separate from the replies sending domain. And the reason why you want this is because if you link this to your sub account and for some reason you send a million too many emails and essentially burn this domain, it's going to be flagged as a spam domain. So you're not going to get any deliverability. Your emails are not going to be sent, which is an easy fix. You just add a new domain, but having a designated domain for your sub accounts separate from your system domain, your agency domain, or your business domain, your software domain, whatever you want to call it is important for that reason. I hope that makes sense. So if you're an agency, another service you can provide for your, for your clients is to create a designated sending domain for them. So now make sure you have the do not reply domain selected under your agency tab. Go back to SMTP service, go over to location settings, then go to your sub account for your agency or your business. Click this little pencil, make sure lead connectors selected and then domain. And for this, we're going to use the replies domain and then we're going to save it. All right. And then once you connect this domain to your sub account, for your business, you have successfully created the email system for your software and your business. So now let's just review this module. So make sure you have created three total domains, replies, do not reply, and notifications. And then make sure you have connected them to their corresponding sections. Do not reply should be connected to the agency account and only the agency account. All sub accounts should be linked to the replies domain. And as you start onboarding more clients, you can create dedicated sending domains specifically for them. So you don't have to worry about them burning any of your domains if they send a ridiculous amount of emails. And then obviously notifications domain should be connected to the notification section. And you do not need to worry about having a dedicated IP address unless you are sending over 100,000 emails a month. If you do need a dedicated IP address because you plan on sending over 100,000 emails a month, reach out to the Go High Level support team via the app or in the Facebook group, and they can get you set up with that, as well as help you with any issues that you may face or answer any questions that you may have. Just like that, we are one step closer to having everything done. In the next module, we're going to integrate Stripe so we can start taking and processing payments. And then after that, we're going to dive in to the final module of this section, which is the completion and testing phase. So hang in there. By the end of the section, you will have a working machine that you can use as is for your business, or you can use as a foundation to build something magnificent and completely unique to whatever you want. So I will see you guys in the next module. Welcome back to the high level masterclass. Now in this module, we are going to cover setting up and connecting your Stripe account to go high level so you can start collecting payments. This is a very important step if you plan on making any money. So Stripe, if you don't know, Stripe is a payment services provider that lets merchants accept credit and debit card payments. If you've never heard of Stripe before, I am actually very surprised. It is the number one payment processor in the world. So first, if you don't have an account already, go to stripe.com and sign up for a free account. So here we are, stripe.com. We are going to start now. This here, Tyrin Barney. Then we're just going to use this. There we go. And then create account. 
So then we have to verify our, our email. After we verify our email by just clicking the link in the email that is sent to us, we have to complete our profile. So we just click this and now we just add in our information here. All right, and then after, after you set up your account, after you put in all your information, verify that you're an actual human being, you will be brought to this page. And now, don't mind this. I already have a Stripe account that I use for my business, so I'm not going to create another one. I don't need to just yet. I'm doing this for your guys' sake, just so I can walk you through the process. But once you have it created, we can navigate back to our high-level account, go down to the Payments tab, then go to integrations. So now this is where we manage our payment integrations. So obviously we are using Stripe. If you have PayPal, you can connect your PayPal to your high level account as well as a few others. So for Stripe, we're going to connect, connect with Stripe. Make sure the email address that you use to sign up with your Stripe account is showing. If not, make sure you switch to that correct account. And then you need to set up two factor authentication, whether you want to use Google Authenticator Microsoft Authenticator or any other Authenticator app, you just scan this QR code, or you can use text messages or a security key instead. So once you've authenticated, you need to connect to Lead Connector. So connect, and that's it. You have now successfully connected Stripe. So now we can start accepting payments from Stripe. We can start creating products within our high-level account that will create products on Stripe. And then if you're on the agency pro plan, which you should be, we can now set up the rebilling for SMS and email messages within our account to then charge anyone using our software if they have a sub account for each message that they send. If you do not have the pro plan, you will be paying on behalf of your sub accounts. So if you are an agency or if you plan on reselling your software, make sure you have the agency pro account. Now, lastly, I'm going to use my software, Rise Rebel, as an example. So if you go to company billing, if you do not have a billing set up for your sub account, it will default for whatever you have set in your agency account. So for every sub account you create that isn't for you or your agency or your business or your software, you will add the client's payment account here. So if you click that, you can send them a link. So you'll essentially copy this link and convert them to a SaaS client, which we will cover in bonus module two in this section. When we go over the entirety of the SaaS mode, we can request it via email and then just add their email. We can request it via phone number, or if we already have them as a customer in our Stripe account, we can just search them up in the Stripe database. Now, again, you only want to do this if you do not own this sub account. That way you are not being charged for the usage within the sub account. You're not gonna be charged for the emails. You're not gonna be charged for the text messages. You're not, gonna be te you're not gonna be charged for the phone calls. You're not gonna be charged for any of the AI generations. So make sure you do this if you resell your software or if you manage a client's sub account. And do not worry, we will go into the entirety of the SaaS mode in the second bonus module in this section. So that's really all there is to it. Make sure you create a Stripe account and make sure all the information on it is correct. And then all you need to do is connect that Stripe account to high level. And then from there, make sure it's connected to your sub account connected to your agency. Now, if Stripe for whatever reason is not available in your country, you can use an alternate payment processor such as PayPal. But high level is constantly adding more options for payment processing. So if neither of those work, you will find an option. And if you need more assistance, reach out to the high level team. They're available 24 seven, they're extremely helpful, they're extremely knowledgeable, they're extremely helpful, and they're extremely knowledgeable. Now that is the last module before we polish everything up and get to testing everything. So get ready, in the next module, we're going to put everything together, polish everything off, make sure everything works, and by the end of it, you will have a complete working system. So get ready, let's go to the next module, and I will see you there. Welcome back to the high level masterclass. This is the first bonus module. We're going to cover the logo and the brand guide. This module will help you create the logo for your business if you don't already have one. We briefly covered in a previous module how to quickly create a very simple logo 
using Canva. In addition to that method, I will also be showing you the best ways to create a logo, and these will include free versions as well as paid versions, in addition to various ways to do it yourself and to get it done for you. In addition to creating the logo, we are also going to create what is called a brand guide. This brand guide will contain all of your brand colors and any fonts that you have that you want to use for your brand. This way you can stay consistent and organized across your entire business. So not only will this help you create a website and all the pages associated with it, but if you plan on making any documents, any videos, any slideshows like this, you can make the colors and the fonts consistent throughout. So everything is cohesive and professional. And this will save you a lot of time as you build things out. Like I mentioned, if you're building all these different aspects for your business. You want them to be branded for your business and having this brand guide easily accessible will save you a lot of time from having to go back, see exactly what colors you use, what the hex code is, what the font is called. This will help you out a ton. So let's create a logo. So there are a few ways to create a logo with and without AI. The easiest way to get a logo created with the best possible quality is to get it created for you. Whether it's someone you know, or if you just want to find someone quick online using Fiverr and Upwork. I have a link to Fiverr that you can use down below. Now, arguably the quickest way to get a logo created is by using AI, specifically Dolly 3 and Firefly. And the cheapest way to get it done is by doing it yourself using Canva and or Adobe Express. There are free ways to use Dolly and Firefly, but with generative AI, you usually have to take some time to get the right piece of art. And both Dolly 3 and Firefly have a limited usage if you're using the free versions. Just keep that in mind. The logo for my company, Eternium, I actually used Firefly to create the concept for me. And then I took that concept, put it into Photoshop, and got a very simple, clean version and then messed with the coloring and got me this end result. I absolutely love this logo. It looks like a logo for a billion dollar company, which is suitable for Eternium. So that is proof alone that AI is a tool, not a replacement. Before Eternium, my agency was called Rise Rebel, and this was the logo that I used. It was just a copy and paste with very few edits in Photoshop of a Dolly 3 image that I got within ChatGPT. And though at the time I really liked the logo, it wasn't clean enough, it was too busy, the proportions were kind of weird, and it just looked very AI generated. It was a very lazy logo. So you want to keep your logo very simple and very clean. So let's go into method one. It goes without saying that you should probably have at least a very general idea of what you want your logo to look like in your mind before you actually go on to design it. If not, it's all right. You can probably get away with doing something super simple. But with this first method, we're just going to use Canva. So go to canva.com. You can just go to logo right here, it's going to open up a new document. And so right away, we have a few different templates that we can use. So you can pick a template and modify it, or you can go over to the elements and search for something that closely resembles what you're looking for. But honestly, if you were just getting started, using a text style logo will be one of the better options. So if we go back to design, even something simple like this, just do example, kind of move this over. Even, even something simple and kind of stupid like this, that is not bad. And there are a ton of different templates you can use. This one's like this. This one's pretty cool. This font's actually pretty nice. There are a ton of different ways you can go about doing this. A textile logo is the easiest way to go about it. And you can even go generic too. Scrap that and then just start from scratch. Go example. Then just change the font. So even something like that. Example.com. Example.ai. If you're going with a textile logo, obviously the font is going to be the most important aspect. So definitely take some time, find a font that you like and that actually speaks to the brand name. And then you can get a little fancy with it. You can play with the coloring, do something, something like that. In fact, I probably go the opposite. So even something like that kind of gives like a GameStop feel. You can even play with the effects. You can hollow it out, play with the thickness, do an outline, add a shadow. Don't overthink it. Just make it, just make it clean, make it simple, and then just make it cohesive to your brand. And do not worry, you can always change it down the road. It's not the end of the world. 
So the next method is by using AI. You can use ChatGPT. If you have a ChatGPT subscription, you can generate images with Chat B with ChatGPT. There are actually a few pre-trained GPTs that you, that you can use that are specifically trained on creating logos. I've used those in the past. They're pretty decent, but for me, I just I'm an Adobe fanboy. I love Adobe, and Firefly is definitely better in my opinion when it comes to image generation. It's a lot more versatile. So let's start with a prompt. The prompt is going to be the most important aspect. So do something along the lines of simple logo design, white background. So something like simple logo design, white background, and then whatever it is that you have in your mind. So for me, for this example, let's do the letter Y, letter Y with an E above it. Let's generate that and these are nowhere near what I have in my mind which is very typical for the first generation and when it comes to generative AI art. another thing though too if you have any images that you want to reference or mimic the style of you can add those in here so the structure will take the basic structure of the image so if you draw something out like a rough sketch you can feed that in the structure and then it will use that to create different versions of it and you can play with the strength to dictate how much that reference image affects the generations then the styles is just that you can give it an image to mimic the style then you can use the gallery to browse different styles if you don't want to upload your own but for me i'm just going to keep generating see what we get now this is kind of nice a cool trick too is by clicking this little pencil you can use this as a structure reference or even a style reference. So if there's something that's kind of close to what you're looking for, you can feed that back to it to get different versions that are similar and then just keep doing that. And that will bring you closer and closer to what you have in mind. So I've added this as the style reference. Then we can play with the visual intensity and the strength. I'm just going to leave it as is and just keep generating. All right. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to assume this is exactly what I want because this actually doesn't look too bad. So what you want to do is obviously you want to download it. And then depending on how much you like it, if this is exactly what you were looking for in your mind and you just want to use it, you can just use it as is. But let's say you don't like the colors and you don't like these lines. So we can actually modify those. If you don't have Photoshop, you can use Photopia or photo P, whatever it's called. I call it Photopia, photopia.com. And then it's literally Photoshop without a lot of the fancy stuff like the AI generation, at least as far as I'm concerned at the moment. So if we can just drag that file in here, so you can use Photopia instead of Photoshop. It's completely free. You don't have to buy anything to use it. But for me, I'm going to use Photoshop because I have Photoshop, I pay for Photoshop. And it's quicker because I can just select subject and then it's going to select this. So just select the subject, select the actual meat of your logo, and then I'm going to cut this and then paste it and then just get rid of the background here. Bam. So now we have the logo itself. There's no background. It's perfect. So what we want to do now. So from here, what we need to do is add an adjustment layer. So make sure we have this selected right down here. Just click that and then go to this little thing here <laughs> this little icon here and then go to hue and saturation so from here you can turn the lightness and darkness all the way up or all the way down so the reason you want to do this is a few reasons it never hurts to have a black and or a white version of your logo but this will help us out if we want to add a slight gradient which we will do so i'm gonna make this completely black just like that but then you'll notice you may have some imperfections in your logo like I do here. So I'm going to clean these up real quick. Just going to use the brush tool. Zoom in a lot. Make sure I get the color. And I'm just going to hold shift, click, and then shift to where I want the point to go. Just like that. Just clean it up. Just like that. And then this right here. This is actually, let's do this. Then we'll just clean that up. Go to the eraser tool. Whoa, that is huge. So we'll scale that down and then just hold shift, click, and then shift right here. Just make sure that's a nice straight line. Doesn't have to be perfect. We have another imperfection up here. Go back to the brush tool. Click and click just like that. 
And then just do that if you have any imperfections. That's really the only tools you need. Eraser, eraser and brush tool. So that is clean. So now what we can do, I'm going to split my logo up in two parts because I want this piece of the logo to be a different color than the other piece. I'm going to select all of this right here. Boom. And then I'm going to cut it. Then I'm just going to repaste it. And then that'll separate the two layers there. All right, and the next thing we're going to do is add a effect. So I'm going to click on this piece here, go to effects, and then we're just going to go to gradient overlay. So now let's double click into the layer that we want to add color to. Then we're going to go to color overlay. Then I'm just going to drag the adjustment layer down. And then I actually want this to be like a gradient yellow. So I'm going to go back into the style, go to gradient overlay. I'm going to turn off the color overlay. Then I have this gradient here. I'm going to use that. So with this gradient, let's change it up a little bit. Let's change this color to blue. And then this color to like a dark blue. Something like that. It looks... This looks terrible in my opinion. But it's what I want. So once I have this, I'm going to export. Quick export as PNG. And then it is saved. Then lastly, too, if you want some text in addition to your logo, you can click the text tool. Click there and then just add your motto, your slogan, or your company name. So I'm going to do why. Because why would you want a logo like this? Change the color. We'll do black. Just like that. That looks terrible, which is exactly what I want. Cool. Then I'll just export this one as well. So that is how you create a high quality logo using AI. And although this method is solid, you still have to be artistic about it, at least somewhat, or else you get something like this compared to this. So now that we have our logo, let's talk about creating the brand guide. The brand guide format looks something like this. This is the one that I used and actually have hanging up on my wall right behind my monitor for Rise Rebel before I rebranded it to Eternium. So you can see here, I have eight different colors in little squares with the correlated hex codes. So as I'm building stuff out, I can just look right here behind my monitor and see all of the colors and their associated hex codes. So I can literally just plug those into whatever I'm working on. In addition to the two fonts that I have and use for this brand. Obviously, this has since changed due to my rebrand but the concept is the same. You want to have the two fonts or three fonts, however many fonts you use for your brand, you can even use just one font like I do for Eternium. But the key is to have everything that you use right here on this guide. So not only if you can use it, but if you have a client or if you have someone doing work for you, if you're going to hire someone to do some work for you for your business, you can send them a copy of this to have everything that they need to implement your branding on whatever it is that they're creating for you. So common practice, you want to have at least two colors for your brand. You want a primary and a secondary color. And then if you have no idea what colors you want, you can use resources like the hex color picker to just kind of find colors that you like. But if you followed along with the logo creation process that we, that we just went through, you should hopefully have colors on your logo which you can look at in the file to see which hex colors those are and use those in your brand guide. Or if not, you can get those hex codes from an existing image. You can just upload your logo to the hex code color picker and get those hex codes directly from your image. I'll have a link to that for you. And then now that we have all of that, all we need to do is create a document in Canva or Adobe Express or even Google Sheets. Just add your hex colors and text using the fonts of your choice. So back in Canva, let's just go to doc, going to open up a document. And then I like to do centered text here, and then sample logo brand guide, just like that. Then we just upload an image. Then we drag that image on here, make it a little smaller. It's like that. Not too bad. All right. So now that we have our logo added, all we need to do is add the colors and the fonts. So I'm going to do the colors first. So we're just going to click this little plus button go over to design and then here we're just going to design the little chart 
thingy. So we'll use a square. You can just search up square right here, then do this. And now we'll go. So I'm I'm gonna do, I think I have four four colors in mine. Before I do that, let's add a little body of text underneath and then just do hex hex code just like that. And then we're just gonna duplicate these. Bam, duplicate, boom, and duplicate, bang. And then center them. So now, now we just grab those hex colors. So I still have my Photoshop open. So I'm gonna go into here. I can't remember. I'm gonna grab these. So the gradient. So this color. So the hex code is right here. Triple F, triple zero. Just copy that. Paste that. And then also go into here. Click this color. Add a color. And then paste that code here. Just like that. And then just repeat that for all the colors of the gradient. So what I'm going to use is for this orange piece. So go there, click that, copy this, go in here, paste that, click this, click that, and then go in here, paste. So just repeat that as many times as you need. Make sure you have all the colors here. And now once you have all the colors there, can rename this X colors or something, whatever you want. We'll save that. Whoa. So now we have our hex colors. Then now we just need our fonts. So font, font one, then font number two. Now Futura is actually one of my favorite fonts next to Monsteret. So let's see if we have Monsteret on here. And there we go. My two favorite fonts. Boom. So we can actually do Futura just in case. So we don't need to know the actual names. Come on, stare it. And just like that, we have an entire brand guide. So across anything we create, we have the colors, we have the fonts. So you can just save this, go to share, go to download, and save it as a PDF, and save it as a PDF. You can print it out. I would definitely recommend you print this out, paste it somewhere where you can look at it, and you will be in very good shape. Thank me later. All right, now it's time to review. Keep the logo clean and simple. Do not overcomplicate it. If you want it done for free, you have to do it yourself. And remember, AI, AI is a tool, not a replacement. Do not make the same mistake myself as well as many others have made in the past by letting AI do all of the heavy lifting without you adding your human element to it, your human touch, or else you'll end up with a shit logo like Rise Rebel. Terrible. And remember, the brand guide is for your convenience. As you build stuff out, you will be referencing it more than you know. You want your brand consistency throughout everything, across all platforms, your websites, your social media posts, your slideshows, your documents, everything. And again, print it out for maximum convenience and paste it on the wall behind your computer or somewhere where you can see it regularly, ideally when you're working, so that'll make the most sense. And that is everything you need to know about creating a logo with AI and creating a brand guide. So hopefully you found this module helpful because now you can create logos for anything. It is just another service you can sell to other people, another tool in your tool belt. So I will see you guys in the next module. Welcome back to the high level masterclass. This is the introduction to the SAS mode. Now, what exactly is SAS? Well, SAS stands for software as a service. It is basically the act of creating a piece of software to solve a specific problem for a user. Now, high level allows you to create a white label version of their software as we've covered in previous modules. You can customize it with your own branding. You can change the UI. Then you can also add your own system and add features to this software. And this allows you to create a piece of tech that is 100% unique to you and your brand and your business. So that way you can then resell this software to your customers on a subscription basis for whatever price you want. As long as it is more than $97 a month per high levels terms of use. You can't sell it for anything less than that. Because $97 a month is their lowest price. So you can't undercut high level. You'll get in trouble. So what are we going to cover in this module? First off, we're going to navigate the entirety of the SaaS configurator. And then we're going to go over creating plans and then the pricing points. 
essentially creating packages for your software. Then we're going to cover how you go about adding the features to your packages in addition to modifying any of the rebuilding. And I'll tell you exactly what that means in just a bit. Then we'll go about customizing your welcome email. And so that by the end of this module, you will have all the knowledge to build, package, and sell your own software to customers. And you also have the know-how to modify the rebuilding of your software packages, which will allow you to make money from the use of the eternal features. I will tell you exactly what rebuilding is and how you can make money from people actually just using the system. Aside from them actually subscribing to it, you make money from them actually using it. And not only that, but you will also have a customized welcome email that will be sent to any new subscribers of your software automatically. It'll send them everything they need to know, including all the login information that they need to sign in to use your software. So before we get started, in order to enable the SaaS mode, you need to have the agent pro plan as I mentioned in previous modules or if you're watching this on YouTube sign up to the 30-day free trial using the link down below or else you can't do this it's a 30-day free trial plenty of time for you to set everything up try everything out 100% risk free and now you also must have stripe connected to your account you cannot create products if you don't have a stripe account so refer back to module 1.10 which is where you integrate stripe if you skip this module if you're watching this on youtube this entire course is 100 percent free the link to this course is down in the description so without further ado let's navigate to the sas configurator all right got my blue light glasses on so i don't burn my eyeballs out so navigate to the sas configurator once you signed up to the agency pro plan again the link to do that is down below so within the agency view go to the sas configurator that should be popping up here I'm using the Eternium Business Hub, so my UI will be a little bit different from yours, but you should see it on the side on the left over here. So just go to SAS Configurator. It'll bring you up to something like this. So by default, you will have about three different packages already set up for you. So you can modify them as is, but to make things easier, I will just I would just go in and delete them. So click the three dots and then delete each plan. Once you do that, we can add your own. So go to this little box here, add your plan. And so to create our plan, obviously we're going to need a name. So I will name mine example plan. And then the description, this is for you. Your clients will not be able to see this. So test plan for YouTube and tyrants. Okay. And then once we have that, go to next. So the category is how you separate your plans. So you can have a bunch of different plans for different kinds of things, but typically you only want one category. So within the category, you will have a hierarchy. So you'll, you can have like a basic plan, a plus plan and a premium plan all in one category. So if someone's at the basic plan, they can upgrade to the plus plan and then the upgrade cost will be all within there. So basically the category is just a hierarchy of the packages, simply put. So I have the default right here. You can see once you select it, you will have the ability to change the hierarchy. So I can have the basic subscription for Eternium Business Hub be the bottom tier. And then the example plan can be, it can be more of a premium package. So for the sake of doing that, we'll just go with this. So obviously this is pretty self-explanatory. The monthly price that you want, I'll just set to $99. And then for the annual price, I'll do, and then for the annual price, I'll just do $999. Common practice is to just multiply the monthly by 10. So people are incentivized to get those two months for free because they're paying for, they're paying for 10 months where they're getting 12 months, but you can change it however you see fit. Then the user limit also self-explanatory it's off by default but if you only want 50 users of your software you can do that add some scarcity to it then you can also add a contact limit so how many contacts can they have within their software i would not enable this but you can do whatever you want and then we're just going to go next so step four features and snapshot this is where you customize the features within your package so we've We've touched on snapshots a bit. If you are in the high level masterclass, if you're watching this from the masterclass, you should have downloaded the masterclass snapshot. The snapshot is effectively a preset system that you create within high level that you can attach to this plan. So you can create custom websites, custom workflows, forms, calendars, basically anything you want that you can include as a part of your software package. 
You can also add and disable any of the built-in features of high level to include in your software as well. So by default, you can't disable any of these eight features here, but you can disable or re-enable anything that you want depending on the package that you're offering. So take some time, think about that, think about your audience, think about your market, think about what they want, and then think of different offers you can do with the different packages. But try to keep it as simple as possible. Do not overcomplicate it and have a bunch of different packages because it's going to be kind of a pain to keep track of what package contains what. Because there are so many different features within high level, if you have a bunch of packages with different little nuances to them, you're going to constantly just be confused yourself. And then if you're confused about your own packages, then your customers and leads are all going to be confused as well. So keep it simple. But once you have that, I'm just going to reselect all of these again. Again, keeping it simple. I only have one package for the Eternium Business Hub. So we'll just go next. And then here, step five, trial and credits. You can activate the trial period. So if you want to give your customers a free trial, you can do that here. You can select the amount of time. You can have up to 30 days. But anywhere from 7 to 14 is pretty, pretty good. But you can do whatever you want as usual. Then you can also give them free credits when they sign up. So the credits will allow them to use the paid services within the Go High Level software. Meaning that if they connect, if they set up a phone system or an email system, remember every time they use it, it'll cost fractions of a cent. So every time they use it, if they have a huge email list and they start sending emails out to that, it's going to start racking up some cost. You want to figure out a fine balance between how much you want to give them for free how much use of these systems that you want to give them for free. So with the Attorney and Business Hub, for reference, I give them $10 every single month of one-time credit. So every month they have up to $10 of use of emails or SMS messaging or content AI or all these other things that cost money that they can burn up for free. But once they pass the $10 threshold, then they're going to start having to pay that for themselves. Which brings us to the next point, if we click next, to the rebilling. So after they surpass the $10 threshold that I have set, so the rebilling is what you're going to charge your customers for each system. And you can set the rebilling for the phone system, for the emails, for the premium triggers and actions, for the email verification, for content AI, workflow AI, conversation AI, WhatsApp conversion, and the reviews AI. So to do that, obviously you'll just click here, the phone system, It'll show you the margin for the markup. So typically I do, I believe 1.2 1 .2 times. So I'm making 20% of the charge as profit. And then you can see as you adjust the slider, what the price is for you and then what is charged to the customer. And then it'll give you a little baseline of what $10 will give your client or your customer. And then it'll also show you how much you'll make for the rebilling. So in this instance, the phone system, so it'll cost you about one, almost one and a half cents per minute when you make a call, less than a cent per minute when you receive a call. So if you have, for the sake of example, a one and a half time markup, when your customer makes a call using your system, it'll charge them about two cents per minute. And then when they receive a call, about 1.2 cents per minute. Then also you have the text messaging here, and it's charged per segment. Now a segment is kind of a pain to explain, so I'll just link the documentation to that below where you can read and hopefully it'll make more sense. But essentially a segment is a certain amount of text. But if you use stuff like emojis, an emoji will kind of skyrocket the amount of segments used for whatever reason, just because it's a lot of data in that. But, but long story short, it's the amount of text in the message. And if you wanna keep costs low, don't use emojis. Then it'll also show you the amount of profit you make. So if you go in here, you can change the price of each setting. So for the emails, you can change all of that. For the premium triggers and actions, email verification, content AI, literally everything. You can change the markup margin to whatever you want, and then you can also disable it if you want, which I would not recommend because you don't want to have to pay for your client's usage of your system. And if you do, like I mentioned, you can give them credits. So that way they're not always paying for their usage. 
You can give them $10, $20, $30 of use per month for using this. So take some time, figure that out, and then adjust everything accordingly. Depending on your market, depending on your target audience, this can be very important. So once you have all of this configured, just go ahead, click finish. And so now you have your plan. You can see that there's no, and don't worry, you can always go into this little pencil icon and you can change all the information for the plan whenever you want. And then if you have Stripe connected too, this will populate as a product in your Stripe account. And then next, if we go over to advanced settings, this is where we can change things like the subscription settings, the welcome emails, and then also add any categories for our packages. By default, you don't really need to mess with these because it'll automatically suspend the sub account when the subscription fails. So it'll disable their account when they're no longer subscribed to the software. That's a no brainer. And then also you can allow the sub account admins to upgrade their subscription. You can turn this on if you want. I have this off because I only have one software package. And then you can also allow sub account administrators to cancel their subscription. Pretty good thing to have enabled so you don't trap your people into being subscribed unless they contact you directly. That's also a no-brainer. Then here in the welcome email, this is where you can modify the email that is sent to your customers once they sign up to your software. So mine, I will show you, if we go to view, this is my email that is sent out. So you can see I have my branding, I have my, our little slogan there. So it just gives them information about what they used to sign up. And then it also has a button for them to log in. And then if I click that, it'll bring them to the login dashboard. That way they can finish their sign up, select their password and start using the platform. And then you can also directly customize your email as well. So you can go in here, drag and drop any of the elements you want, add any custom values you want. We're not gonna really go into this because by now in this course, you should know how to do this but you can copy exactly what I have here. But you can modify the default one. The default one works just w just fine. So you can just kind of modify the default one, add your own branding, and just kind of use mine as a baseline too. But you can do whatever you want. So now that we have all that done, you can go into security. And from here, you can pause new sub accounts. If you have this enabled, you are going to have to manually approve any new user to your software. There are pros and cons to this. The pros are if someone signs up to your account, let's say you have a free trial, you have to manually approve that. So the requests will be in here. That way, if you have like a $10 credit, they will have to wait until you approve their account. So they're not just signing up to all these accounts using a bunch of your systems, sending out any malicious emails or any of these other things that could put your account at risk but I really wouldn't worry about that because people need to sign up with their payment info, but you don't really need to worry about that, but the feature is here if you need it. Then you also can set up two-factor authentication. It's also a safeguard to prevent any malicious activity. And then, as I mentioned before, you can view any of the requests to join here. So now I'm gonna show you how you can quickly add your software to your funnel so you can start selling your software. I'm not gonna go into any of the tiny nuances. If you've been following the high level masterclass course, you already have a funnel you can add this to. If you don't, click on this new funnel button here, add a funnel. So I'm going to go into the SaaS funnels that I have, and then I have a software purchase funnel here. So I'm gonna click into this, and then I can go over to products. So I already have a product added to this funnel. If you go and try to add a product, you won't have a product here. So Let's go to payments, go to products, and then import from Stripe. If you have your Stripe connected, which you should, it'll import all the products from Stripe that we have created. And remember, when we created the software packages, it automatically created a product in Stripe. So if we import from Stripe, so we can select that product from Stripe, make sure it has agency plan in parentheses right there, because this is how you know that it is part of the agency account. This is how you know that it's actually the software. And then from there, you can add up the setup fee. So the setup fee can be any money that you want upfront. So if you want like a $10 trial for a $100 software, the setup fee would be that $10. So other than that, just go ahead, import product and price. And then you can see that it will automatically populate with the data that we have created. So you can add any media, so you can change any of the information here, but this looks good. 
So we're just going to save it. So now if we go back to our funnel, we will have the ability to add that product. So we have our example plan here. So you can go ahead, click that. The price is going to be imported from Stripe and then you can just change all this information as you see fit. And then from there, all you need to do is add a one or two step order form and then the, the item will be linked to the product that you have in the funnel. So you can modify this as you see fit. If you were in the high level masterclass, you will have an order form similar to this. And then once you're ready to go, just hit publish and then you will be good to start accepting payments. People can start buying your software. Then we have the entire automation set up to where they'll get their login information and then they'll be able to begin using your software. And what we'll cover in future modules are complex automations around this kind of stuff within the automation tab. So now let's review. Again, you cannot do this if you do not have the agency pro plan or have your Stripe connected. So if you want to use this, make sure you sign up using my link to high level. You get it. Make sure you sign up to the 30 day free trial of go high level, sign up for the agency pro plan, and then make sure you connect Stripe if you want to do everything that I have covered. And then make sure you go through all of the rebuilding settings and configure them properly. And then lastly, make sure that you have all the packages that you want in addition to the features within each package. And I cannot stress this enough that you need to keep it as simple as possible for your sake and your customer's sake, because it can be very, very hard to keep track of all the features within each package. Do not exceed three packages. Ideally, I would recommend one package, maybe two packages. Do not exceed three packages unless you really want to. Again, you can do whatever you want, but for common practice, three is the max. So that is the end of this module. You are now ready to sell your own software. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, High Level Support, the Tyrant Empire community, or join the official Go High Level community group on Facebook. Any of these resources will help you answer any questions that you have. So with that said, my friend, I will see you in the next module. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe for more and I will see you in the next video. Keep conquering.